everybody, welcome to the second Survive and Thrive Summit. My name is Ramon Ray, your host, your MC for the next five hours and team in the production. If you can hear me okay, just let me know in the private chat so I can make sure that I won't be speaking for five hours and there's dead silence. Let me know, Liz and Jamie. Good. I see that. Thank you so much. So everybody, so happy to be here. And again, my name is Ramon Ray. And again, we're going to be here for five hours together for the Survive and Thrive Summit number two. We first did this in April uh, 20th, I believe it was, just a few short months ago, right after COVID struck and hit all of us. And today we're back again. So really happy to have you all here, excited to have you here. And we have several things that we're going to bring to you today. So this is the first few minutes kind of that we want to just set some uh, uh, ground rules as it were, and then we'll move along. So one, definitely want you to chat, 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 chat. You'll see the chats in the comments. Uh, if you're on Facebook and you're on YouTube, we definitely want you to do that. And I will do my best to try to share some of those live on the live stream. But I think you all can see each other's chat too. My friend, Adrian Miller, she said, Ramon, I I got business even from the last Survive and Thrive Summit. So that's one. We want you to chat. We want you to have fun. We want you to network, engage. Number two, big, 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 mega, 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 mega. Thanks to our amazing sponsors. And that's Oracle NetSuite. You should definitely check out NetSuite.com. Combination of um, uh, sales uh, uh, sales delivery, combination of procurement, combination of HR, combination of e-commerce, which is what NetSuite does so well, and Oracle. So thank you. Big, 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 big mega thanks to Dell Technologies as well. Dell has been a big uh, backer partner for a lot of the things Smart Hustle has done. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Dell, for being about that. And again, I'm going to pause for the comments. Thank you so much, Helena. The Facebook users, you guys are doing it. You have to make sure you authenticate with StreamYard so we can see your names. But thank you, Karen. Thank you, Helena. So let me keep going here. I will be off track. Big thanks to our summit partners. Co is a unit of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, America's ASBDC. And if you're a part of one of these networks, give them a shout out and say hello to them. Score, thank you. Tory Birch Foundation. Wow, what an amazing foundation focused on women entrepreneurs. Tory Birch Foundation is amazing. Thank you, Google Small Business, for being part of this. Dualpreneur. Wow, wow, wow. What an amazing organization helping those who have side hustle. My friend of long time, Adrian Miller of Adrian's Network. Thank you for being part of this experience. Adriansnetwork.com. Definitely check it out. And last but definitely not least, my friends at Small Business Trends, Anita Campbell. Thank you so much for being a part of this as well. So what else is up here? Listen, we have some big, big giveaways that we're doing. Yeah, yeah. We're giving away you know what? I'm going to show this full screen here so you can get the full taste. We're giving away three Dell XPS brand new, not the ones that fell off the back of a truck, notebook computers. So I'm really excited to give those away as well. And uh, how you can get them, you'll find out in a bit. But I think we've had some submissions in Smart Hustle Nation, so I'm really excited about that. And uh, that's going to be a good thing. Um, and I think uh, last but not least, really big Mega thanks to our amazing production team. Listen, I'm the face and brand of Smart Hustle, but this is definitely not alone. One, it's you all, Susan and Thomas and Wealthy and Jason, but the production team, Jamie Freer, thank you for being an awesome executive assistant and project manager. Thank you so much. Liz Caruso, uh, who manages the events for Smart Hustle, also in her own right, Texie Talks. Check that out. John Lim, amazing visual artist and graphic artist. Josh, uh, um, um, and so, so, so Jill, and so many, so many others. I really thank God for the strength to enable me to do this as well, and of course, my family. So with that, I think we're going to go into networking here. And what do we want you to do at networking? Really, we're going to have networking for about, let's see what that script says. It's going to go to about 4.15, so about seven minutes of networking. We're going to have fun. And what does that mean networking entails? That means I want you to light up the chat and get to know each other. Feel free to have a shout out about who you are. Feel free to say, hey, my name is so-and-so. I'm doing this. How can I help you? Feel free to connect with somebody you see on the chat and say hello to them. Feel free to ask, hey, could you tell me what you do? We have here, Program for Entrepreneurs of Colors with 3M Business. We got so many people here. And our speakers are coming in the next few minutes. They're going to be awesome and amazing as well. And it just it's just the chat is lit up. And I encourage right now, here's you should chat, 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 get to know one another. Feel free to put the website address of who you are and what you do. We have here Donna from Johannesburg, South Africa. This is now a global event, a global event. And I am excited. As Liz said, let us know. Where are you watching from? What part of the US? What part of the world are you at? Craig Caruso, my brother from another mother, <coughs> WordPress development, 
CraigLCaruso.com. Check him out. And so many people are here. Martin, again, thanks for being here. Definitely Anita Campbell gets her kudos. Thank you, Thomas, for being here as well. And again, as you're joining in, this is networking. Feel free. We want you. We encourage you to put in there your website address, put in there your link, put in there how you can help people or how people can help you. Let's see, um, Andrea Dresser from Counseling Las Cures, owner of a group practice, 20 employees, Counseling uh, La uh, Cruces.com. We got people here from New Jersey, Orlando. We got uh, Thomas here from Charlotte, North Carolina, marketing consultant, digital marketer, certified partner. Uh, who else we have here? Anna, welcome, Anna. What's up? Personal coach, and I teach tech goals and strategies so many people. This place is lighting up and we love to see this. We're excited to have you here. I'm going to go full screen a bit just to say hi. So we got so many Susans here. Susan, thanks for being here. Susan says, uh, I, I work where you are, yay, technology based in Massachusetts, Bella's operational efficiency for individuals. Susan, welcome. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have another Facebook user. And again, if you want your name to show up, I think you have to do some integration with uh, StreamYard so your name can show up. Um, franchise consultant. So many people. We have uh, Sylvia is here. Hey, Sylvia, thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Randy's here, Workforce Development Group. So many people. And I alluded to earlier, my friend, Adrian Miller, adrianmiller.com. Check her out. She'll be speaking a bit later, but you definitely want to check out Adrian Miller. Wow, it is lighting up in here. Um, thank you, Helena. What a great audience in here. So many great and talented people looking forward to connecting. And all this is brought to you by Dell Technologies and NetSuite. So thank you, Dell Technologies, for making this a success. Really appreciate you. Um, Trisha Tate is here. She's going to be speaking later on. Artofmoneymatters.com. You definitely want to check out um, Art of Money Matters for sure. Um, somebody, let's see, I hope this is a, let's see, we have Angela here. Somebody put a message to me. Um, Joe Rojas, leading this program. Please connect to me as you can. Okay, good. We saw from Joe. Thank you so much. So many people. Justin's here from uh, Klamath Idea, building our entrepreneur ecosystem in our rural community. Rural communities are so important. Shout out to my friend, Becky McCray as well. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Ramon. I'm the founder of Watcher Prosper. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Don't drink too much water. Absolutely. Noted. Point taken. So as you guys are coming in, ladies and gentlemen, this is our networking session. We're going to do this for another uh, about another five minutes, give or take. Dana White's checking in, one of our speakers. She's going to be here live with us in person in a bit of time. Thanks, Dana, for being here. Um, man, thank you, Ramon and Adrian. Thank you so very much. And again, feel free if your name is not showing up there, just put your name in there so we can do that. Klamathidea.org. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate that. Wow. So many people. It's just hard to, let's see. Um, yes, don't forget to go to StreamYard.com slash Facebook to give us access to see your name and photo. Don't forget that. StreamYard.com slash Facebook. So that way Facebook can see your name and photo in Facebook comments. And Liz, feel free to put that up every once in a while and I'll make that live so people can see that. Faith Kinslow, award-winning copywriter brand strategist. Faith is the bomb. Amazing. Faith does amazing copywriting work. You definitely want to check her out at brand 2 sellcom Calm. Hey, all the way from Long Island can only stay a short time, but you know what? Thank you for being here. No matter how long you can be here. Appreciate that. Jeffrey's here, uh, founder of Cash, a Card Cash Rewards in LA. Jeffrey, thanks for being here. Really appreciate you. Um, so listen, keep the comments coming. We got a few more minutes. We want you to promote yourself. Let people know who you are. We got someone here from the Netherlands. I'm Jorn Ekuri, owner of, of a few different companies, Massive Productions Holland. Awesome. Listen, if you're looking for um, uh, actors or actresses, you can see me and my wife and we can do like a marriage play for you or something. So awesome. So many people here. Mary Tan is here. What's up, Mary? New York Women in Business is on Facebook and YWIB.org. Wow, this is lighting up. A Dione from Soul Strivers. Hey, Dione, what's up? Thanks for being here. Appreciate you. Carmen's here giving her website address. This is good. Carmen's a life coach at Trans Transform Me Transform. EdenMovingForward.com. Awesome, awesome. Hey, thanks for being here. We got Suri. Hey, Paloma Bal for today from Suri, UK. Thanks for being here. Thank you for being so engaging in the chats. Really appreciate it. Um, Birmingham, Alabama, wealthy is here. Um, offering my gifts to all women who want to live prosperously. You can see um, her at Wealthy Living, uh, Wealthy Living It on IG. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Dys dyslexia. Indeed. Screening for dyslexia.com. Awesome. Raffi's here. What's up, man? Oh, thanks, man. You are the real. 
Theo 2020 Superman. Uh, Ralphie's at weddingseason.com. Check him out. Listen, this is what Survive and Thrive is all about. And we're going to have people growing, growing, growing as the day goes on. People are going to be coming in and out and enjoying this. And don't forget the people who are watching it after. So you want to promote yourself for sure. Kelly Asbury, uh, I think MO is Montana, Ooh, I think. SBDC, welcome, welcome. You are so welcome uh, for setting this event up. Listen, I'm having a great time. We got a few more minutes and then we're going to uh, press forward. Here are some other things, the keynote of the night. But listen, this is the Survive and Thrive Summit uh, where we do our best to serve you. Brought to you by Oracle NetSuite and Dell Technologies for sure. Donna, extra pair of hands is in the house. Thank you, Donna, for being here. I've missed you too. I appreciate it. Um, uh, household staffing agency in California, that would be Donna, I think, uh, is there as well. Missouri. Beatrice is here. My newly business bees, butter and cream. Look for my launch on Facebook at the end of the month. We will indeed. Business bees, butter and cream. Sounds delicious. Something my wife would like. I'm Terry, co-owner of Bit Beatles LLC, customized technical solutions. Love it, Terry. And Terry, Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of this experience. You've got about one more minute to go, give or take. Um, thank you. Yes, yes, good, good, good. Um, wonderful, wonderful. Things are coming along. Just looking in the private chat, see what my team is telling me. Love it. We have somebody, Pat uh, Barker here, uh, Lake Life Images in Illinois. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Listen, we got about one more minute, give or take, to go. And we're going to dive into the short keynote of the evening for about 15 minutes. But keep the chats going while I'm doing that. And then we're going to dive into what's say, on the agenda we have up next. Mike McCallow, it's Gabrielle Raymond McGee of Tory Burch Foundation. Dana White, founder of Paralee Boyd. This is going to be amazing. And Mike McCallowitz is already in the room. I see him hidden back there. I feel like pulling him on screen now. We'll just start, but I won't do that because maybe he's not dressed or something. I don't know. We'll see. Um, <laughs> so that is that. Um, Don is here. I'm driven to help entrepreneurs and women make their mark. Awesome. Four books, two bestsellers, Branding and Marketing You and Play to Win. Donna, awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. So check out Donna and what she's doing. So it's 4.15. I'm going to dive into today's uh, main keynote, I believe. Not sure, Liz, if there's another slide I need to show on that. There is good. So I will show that solo as it were, as it is, and introduce myself briefly with that there. So listen, I am so honored that you all are being here today. Uh, we got about 15 minutes before our first panel, Mike McCallowitz, Gavin. Gabrielle Wayman McGee of Tory Birch, Dana White, founder of Paralee Boyd. But I wanted to set the stage for what we're doing today and keep the chat going. If you hear something you like, let me know. Here's something you don't like, let me know. We're one big happy family. We have a ton, a ton of people registered for this event. And I'm so honored that you all took the time to be here today with me and with the Smart Hustle team. So let's spend a few minutes talking about what's going on. Um, and again, please keep the chat coming along. No problem at all. Joe is there shouting out. I'm going to give him a little thing here. Uh, my why to nurture shepherd and inspire others so that they can access their inner leader. Awesome. So a few things. It, it's, it's old news now that COVID has hit us and that we are all impacted and affected. Everybody's impacted. Everybody. It hit us like boom. It just hit us. The question is, what are we going to do about it? What have we done about it? What can we do about it? And that's kind of what the Survive and Thrive Summit's all about. About two things, very simple. It's about to inspire you to grow and start your business, live better lives, be better people with your family. To inspire you is one, but we just don't want to inspire. We also want to educate you. Educating so important. And the speakers today are coming up. We got Mike, we got Carol, we got Trisha. So many amazing speakers that are coming up in the next few minutes who are going to educate you. That's what the Survive and Thrive Summit's all about. And again, big, big, big mega thanks to Dell, who was a part of making that happen. Big, big, big thanks to uh, Oracle uh, NetSuite for making that happen. We couldn't have done this without Oracle NetSuite. Thank you for their what they're doing. You're going to be hearing from them. You may get some emails from them. Check them out as you're on your journey to grow your business. Big thanks to Dell Technologies as well for being a big part of the Survive and Thrive Summit. So a few things to touch on. One, I think it's important to understand, look at some notes here, is what I've been saying over the last few uh, weeks. And if you, if you hear something that resonates with what you're saying, if you hear something that resonates, feel free to put in the chat here, say amen, say a tip or whatever it is, shout it out, no problem. So one, I'm encouraging all of us to think bigger. We have to think bigger. A cousin to that 
is we have to think different. Emilio is here. What's up, Emilio? Thanks for being here, man. Capitalist Conversations. We got to think different. And we've always had to do this. As successful companies have, have come and gone, the companies that are built to last have been able to think different, think bigger, have been able to be nimble on their feet. And I, many of you hate the word, but it's an appropriate word, pivot to do new things. So that's what we're talking about today. This is what we're about today at the Survive and Thrive Summit. We've got 12 more minutes to go as we bring in our other speakers. This is what we're about. This is what we're doing. And I think as we go on that aspect of thinking different, thinking bigger, few things come to mind for me. One is fear. How many of you, how many of you felt fear over the last several months? Forget the last few years. If you felt fear over the last few months, right now in the chat, type the word fear. How many of you felt that fear just grip your heart, grip you? And you were like, wow, I'm scared. I'm anxious. I'm not sure. How many of you felt that? I know I felt that. And definitely Helena, Helena says, think big. It's important. So but how many of you felt that fear? I did. I did for sure. The mind believes whatever you tell it. You're right. Yeah. So a lot of people here typing in. Anna George, thanks for being here. Fear has gripped us. Felt or feel. <laughs> Either way, Terry, felt or feel, whichever you like. But I can see that everybody's saying, Emilio, connect with Martin. He's asking for your website. Keep business going here, guys. Connect with each other. No problem. Joe has said that. Sophia said that. Tammy has said that. Everybody's agreeing. But the question I have, what I want to bring out hopefully today, is we all have had fear. That's okay. Donna says it. Yeah, Donna's strong. But what do we do with it? And this is what comes to me to my next point is this is where mindset comes in. We're going to hear from Fergus Connolly in a bit. And uh, big, big shout out to Lee Hayes for helping bring some of these great speakers to the, to the front to us today. Is those who have a mindset that when they get fearful and they want to melt, they want to go into a wall, they want to crawl into a ball, they want to just cry and, and, and not look at it, it's going to be a challenge for you to move on. And I see Jacqueline, you're saying, can't, cannot view the live stream, Jacqueline. We'll help you and take care of that as best we can. The team will be on that. So what do we do? We all have fear. But if you're able to have a mindset that recognizes I have the fear, or as some Facebook user said, anxiety and excitement, I have it. What do I do with it? This will enable you to go forward. I've done quite a bit of research of special forces, not as much as Fergus has, but I do read a lot of read about them. And they often say that we all have the fear. But we just decide to press forward. Now, it's not reckless abandon because hopefully your years of business experience, hopefully the mentors that you have gives you some grounding, gives you some intuition, gives you something that will comfort you a bit as you go. Think about somebody jumping from a plane. Peter Shankman has jumped hundreds and hundreds of times from airplanes, right? And if you have that um, ability that you're doing that, you're able to put away your fear. And this is an important. There's a uh, comment I want to... Let's see, bring out here. Give me one second. Let's see, where are you at? Well, they realized I had your comment up for so long. I want to bring up some others. <laughs> uh, that's okay, it's cool. Here we go, there we go, yeah, cool. So uh, what do you do with it? That's number four, mindset. Number five, the biggest thing I'm learning as well is this aspect of a mindset of positivity. Now, this doesn't mean Pollyanna. This doesn't mean you're going through life saying, oh, everything's fine. Everything's fine. And, and, you know, tiddlywinks. No. But I know there's a lot of people, everything that comes by them, the glass is half empty. Everything that happens, we can't do it. Everything that happens, we're going to fail. Everything that happens, no, we can't. Everything that happens, don't try it. Everything that happens, you're going to fail. You go through life like that, you're going to be jacked up to the core. But if you have a mindset of positivity, that we can go forward, we can do it, you'll find that you'll be able to progress pretty much through anything, even the bad times of life. Let's see what some of you are saying. Thank you, Anna, says a yes in there. You see here, in terms of pitting, I'm editing Zoom videos. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Liz Epson, well, she's helping somebody there. Definitely, we get business done. Adrian Miller, please be in touch for sure. Uh, mindset can overcome anything. And is commenting here about fearless is not the point. Having the courage to face the fears is the bravest thing ever. Absolutely. So I know this resonates with many of you. Justin says here, the hero and the coward both feel exactly the same fear. Only the hero confronts the fear and converts it. Woo! Converts it into fire. Justin, I like that. So don't have the mindset that your glass is half full. 
I would dare say instead have that mindset that your glass is half, don't say half, half, half empty, your, mind, your glass is half full. So this other thing I think is this aspect of positivity, of living in abundance. And am I happy all day long? No. Am I jolly go lucky all day long? Do I get down? Do I have issues? Do I wish I was a better father, a better husband? Yes, yes, and yes. Was my business impacted by COVID? Absolutely. And I like how Joe is saying that. Acknowledge, acknowledge what happens. Then you say, great, how will I conquer that? Powerful, Joe. And thank you so much for bringing that. So important. And again, keep networking with each other. Keep shouting out to each other, banking business with each other. You got some powerful people here. The other point, my sixth point, is the aspect, and Anna, you're exactly right, is the aspect of ideas, innovation, and creativity. Some of you are lacking in creativity. You're lacking in ideas. You're lacking in the ability to pivot and innovate. And I believe some of you, that may stunt. Here's my point. You're going through a river on a raft and the raft gets a leak. You're paralyzed, what do I do? Fix the hole, I don't have any tape. Take the gum out of your mouth and plug the hole with the tape, with the gum. You follow what I'm saying? So this aspect to be able to be creative, this aspect to be able to pivot, this aspect to be able to look at things differently is important. I remember Mike McCall was talking about that in the Verizon a Small Business Webinar Series. He walked us through a principle of that. And I hope you go back and check that out. But this is what it takes to get to the next level. This is what it takes to get ahead. And I know all of you can do it. By the way, while you're listening to this, if this is useful for you, I'd appreciate it. Hit the share button. Tell other people to come and join us. Surviveandthrivesummit.com. Surviveandthrivesummit.com. Have them come sign up and join us here tonight. We got, what, four and a half more hours of great content coming. I'll be here all day long. Look what Tracy says. Feel emotion and run. At, or face everything and rise. Ooh, just posted about this over the weekend. Thank you, Tracy. Feel free to post also your website address. That's powerful. Lauren says here, fear is based on what you don't know. Courage is based on what you do know. So true. Because if you have the unknown, right, Lauren, if you don't know, that's usually why most people are fearful. But I think once we know about it to some degree, that's when we can conquer it. That's when we can conquer it. Don't forget to share, share, share. Let people know you're doing this. And don't forget to keep commenting. Meet each other. You're going to find some A players in this community, in this group. I want you all to meet and do business together. Put your website addresses, your emails. Tell what you do. Say how what you're looking for. Keep chatting, keep chatting. Doesn't bother me a bit. In fact, I encourage it. So this is important. And we got about four more minutes to go. We're going to have our next panel come up just in a bit. Dana, welcome. Thanks for being here. And I see Mike's also in the waiting room as well. Awesome. So about four more minutes. So this, and the last thing I'll say on this point is the power of networking. Networking is so important. And many of you have probably been on more Zoom calls than you ever wanted to be over the last few uh, weeks or months, but networking is so powerful, so powerful. And I encourage you all also to network. Thank you, Dana, Donna, for your kind words. Really appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm trying my best here. Carmen says we can survive and thrive. There's absolutely. Uh, uh, Anna says humans have 80% of negative thoughts. So it is a decision to work on a positivity and take action. Got about four more minutes to go. I think what I'm gonna do with that, I wanna hear a bit from you. What are you excited about? We got our next panel coming up in a bit. We got Mike Nicalloth, author of Fix This Next and a billion other books. Boom, I'm a reader, I'm a fan. Uh, we got Dana White, who's I first met her on the podcast 21 Hats. I think they changed the name to Vanna TV, but she'll tell you who she is, what she does. She's also the owner of a hair salon in Detroit. We also have uh, Gabrielle Raymond McGee, who's the CEO of the Tory Burch Foundation. Had a great time with her and her group. We got a lot more to go, about three more minutes to go, and we're going to have a good time and really get from them their insights, get from them their knowledge so they can help us as we look forward to growing our businesses. And let's see what else. Um, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Amen. I like that. Uh, Joe, again, J Joe, please keep up. Putting in all the looks like it froze for a slight bit there. Oh, I'm with heart attack. So, um, Obstacles are how we grow seeds, grow in dark spaces. So with that, three more minutes to go. I'm going to bring up the splash screen here of our next speakers. We're going to start uh, Mike and Dana in about two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. We'll bring y'all up. We're going to have a good time. And listen, get your questions ready. I have some questions I'm going to ask to Mike, to Dana, and Gabrielle. I'm going to save the toughest questions for Mike for the rest of his life because, um, anyhow, it's a long story of why I'm going to do that. 
<laughs> and I see your smile, Mike, with these good, good people. <laughs> and uh, But we're going to have a good time. And I really <laughs> get your questions ready because, listen, I want to hear from them. But more importantly, if I have time and if I can, I want to get you hurting. What are your needs? What's going on with you? How can Mike help you? How can Dana help you? How can Gabrielle help you? That's what I want to bring out. So in about two more minutes, we'll move on to our next uh, session here. And if you're, please keep chatting, chatting, chatting. I'm looking at the chat. Uh, Evie, where is it streaming on Facebook? You're uh, in Smart Hustle Nation. So uh, you can uh, email Jamie at smarthustle.com to help you with that. Hope Joe has a book out there. Um, so true about Zooms. This is my first Zoom of two tonight. <laughs> Steph of Next Step, what's up? Thanks for being here. Absolutely, Helena, hola. Um, indeed, so listen, we're firing on here at all cylinders. So I think with that, I'm gonna bring on Mike, I'm gonna bring on Dana. Um, Gabrielle's probably pending. Let me go to our private chat and see what's going on there. Um, cool, no problem, no problem. Which Okay, Gabrielle's here, awesome. Oh, that's right, she's in the lower section there. So here we go, so Gabrielle, you're good to go. You're not live yet, but let me see a wave. Good. Let's think Gabrielle's ready. Good, Mike. So here we go. Here we go. I'm so excited. Okay. Uh, let's see. How do I do this? Click the wrong button. Uh, Mike is on. What's up, Mike? Ramon, what's up, my brother? Hey, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Dana is on. And there we go. This is looking good. Hey, so Gabrielle, say a hello so I can make sure I can hear you. Hello, Ramon. It's so good to be here with the Smart Hustle Nation. Thanks for being here with us. Mike McCallowitz, I heard you. Thanks for being here. How are you, Mike? Doing well. I'm prepared for the reciprocal prank that you have to do on me now. <laughs> Not today. Okay, <laughs> okay. This, we're good. Then. Is this like your 10th uh, call today, Mike, or 20th? Something like that. Yeah. Can you see the bags? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dana White, how are you? Thanks for joining I'm us today. I'm well. Thank you, Ramon. Thank you for having me. Awesome. You're so welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. Dana and I have heard her voice so long on the uh, Lauren Feldman is a friend to probably half the audience here. Many people know him. Uh, so I first heard of Dana White on the uh, on the uh, 21 Hats podcast and uh, we got to know each other a bit on a variety of things. And so, of course, Mike and I go way back. Gabrielle and I met through a mutual friend. I shared some things on the Tory Burch Foundation uh, uh, chat and with their community. And thank you, Gabrielle, for being here. So listen, we have uh, about 30 minutes together. Time goes by so fast and I really want to get insight from the audience as well. That's really what I want to do. I want to have them just fire questions and get help. That's what we're here for. Before we do that, Dana, maybe I'll turn to you. I don't know, take two, three, four minutes, set the stage for us, who you are. I know you own a hair salon. You're a speaker. You like on podcasts. So I, tell us who Dana is and, and, and tell us a little bit about your journey. Yeah. So um, as Ramon said, my name is Dana White and I am the proud owner of Paralee Boyd. It is a uh, small chain of walk-in only hair salons in Detroit, Michigan. Anyway, so um, as we were saying, you know, you pivot, you do what you have to do. Nobody asked for COVID. COVID came and we had a choice. Yeah. So Dana made several choices. Um, Dana chose to be afraid. Dana chose to be still. But at the end of it, Dana chose to get up and found that opportunity. I saw that opportunity came my way and it came in the form of, Dana, could you talk more about this? Dana, can you consult with me on this? Dana, as a business owner, I have questions about this. And I'm like, why are you asking me? I'm, I'm in freeze mode right now. But, um, you know, when you have good people around you, good people say, you know what, you should probably look into this. And so now this is my second speaking event today. I find myself doing a lot of speaking because Paralee Boyd is up and running. So that's how you pivot. I love it. I appreciate that. Dana, can't wait to hear Thank more from you. you again. As you guys are, ladies and gentlemen, as you're in the chat here, feel free to ask questions, specific questions. Hey, Dana, this, hey, Mike, or General, we're here to help you. Mike, I'll turn to you next. Mike, listen, we go way back. People are commenting on your books. They're commenting on your bookshelf. Maybe they're commenting on your hair, your t-shirt. I don't know. But Mike, drop some Radco, signs. Radco, man. <laughs> Radco. For the few who don't know a little bit about you, Mike, uh, uh, give us a summary of who you are and maybe just unpack your, whichever book you want to unpack, the latest one, What's what nuggets in there. Go for it. Sure, sure. So I'm an author for small businesses, uh, but my background is entrepreneurship. I've been an entrepreneur my entire life. The obligatory, and it is obligatory, comment is uh, I, I built and sold a couple companies at a private equity exit, at a Fortune 500 exit. But I think the important part of that story is um, after selling businesses, I became chock full of myself. Uh, arrogance and ignorance is a deadly combination. I started to become an angel investor. I started all these businesses and uh, blew money on just ridiculous thoughts and decisions and thinking I was so smart. Uh, and the turning moment for me, kind of the, the wake up to what entrepreneurship really is about was when I evaporated all our wealth. I lost everything, my house, cars, possessions. I didn't lose my family. And my daughter uh, at nine years old at the time 
ran to her bedroom to grab her piggy bank. And she came back to me. She goes, daddy, since you can't provide for us, I will. Mm. And uh, so I think about it, I got emotional. It, uh, it was a shameful moment, but it was also a moment that turned my life. I'm, I'm now on a mission to eradicate entrepreneurial poverty. You'll see it's on my wall right there. Eradicate entrepreneurial poverty. There is this gap that we experience, this vision we have as entrepreneurs of what it'll be like, um, financial freedom, uh, independence, being able to do what you want, when you want, and the reality, working our butts off, no money. Right. I'm on a mission to close that gap. And I do through my books. Um, and they're all simple strategies to do that. One of my most popular books is called Profit First, a way mm -hmm. to stop putting profit last and to use the pay yourself first principle in your business yep. so you assure profit permanently. I love that, Mike. And uh, amazing, amazing, amazing. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you for being here. People are already asking me, how can I reach this person? How can I reach that? Don't worry. Afterward, all of you will get an email, how to reach people. No, I will not send emails to all these people, all that. But Mike, is, you can just Google Mike, Mike Michalowicz, uh, Gabrielle, uh, Raymond McGee. Definitely check her out the Tory Burch Foundation. Easy to find, but we'll send links. Big community, which you should all join. Dana White uh, inspires. Hey. <laughs> Check her out there. Gabrielle, uh, tell us what inspires you a bit about yourself, but I know for you what's more important is the Tory Burch Foundation. So feel free to touch on yourself, but talk to us about your community, what you guys are building. And I've been there with you. You have some powerful, powerful women, few men in there too, but amazing people there. So feel free to unpack as the others did about yourself and your mission and, and TBF in particular, why it's so important to those listening today. Great. Well, thanks, Ramon. And you're certainly one of, one of those special men in our community. So Indeed. thanks for all your support. Um, so my background is I, I've spent my whole career trying to help big brands do good. Uh, before Tory, I worked in sports. So I worked in golf. I worked for Major League Baseball. I worked in hockey and always believed in the power that sports could bring people together. Uh, Tori recruited me about seven years ago to help lead her foundation. And she, from the start of her company, she always knew she wanted to have a foundation. And when she was fundraising, people told her, stop talking about corporate social responsibility when you're fundraising, we're not interested. Fast forward today, that is critical to any business. And what I love about Tori is she's always had a very clear vision, which is to empower women and specifically small business owners. Can't think of a more important time than now to do that. Um, if you look at the stats, women were undercapitalized before COVID and it's even worse now. And so we're trying to change that. Um, Ramon, you were a part of our webinar series. What we realized in the midst of this crisis is there's so much information out there, but what's credible and what's easy to follow. Yeah. Uh, so the foundation, we have a, a Tory Burch Foundation webinar series that we rolled out right at the start of COVID still in ex existence. You can uh, check out all of our webinar series on the YouTube channel for Tory Burch Foundation. And we cover everything you can think of. So how to navigate PPP in an easy to follow way, which is very difficult. Um, how to communicate to your customers through this crisis and how to be clear in where you are today with your customers. Mm -hmm. And that webinar series will start again on September 16th. So be sure to check it out. And then we've also released a ton of toolkits on our site that are all free. Um, we've partnered with some of the best experts on everything from finance to SEO to cybersecurity. So our goal is really to provide the very best resources for women, small business owners, and to make it all free. That's powerful. I like those two words, best resources free. You don't hear that too many places. Um, except in my house on Saturday mornings, I make the best pancakes. Well, actually, they're not for free. I have to pay for them. So, but and anyway. burnt bacon, right? Yeah. If I remember correctly, okay. you know exactly. So, let's dive into it. Uh, we have several questions here, but I want a few more for the panel. Mike, I'll turn to you first. And I think, Mike, listen, uh, you and I have been together on a few uh, calls, videos, etc. I heard you're great when you did with Melinda and John Jantz yesterday. That was yes. amazing. Um, unpack it, Mike. What are two or three of the best things that you're hearing, or problems you're hearing, and more importantly, can you just tell this smart hustle audience? What are the two or three nuggets of advice that you find yourself repeating over and over and over again that you're saying, Ramon, this is kind of the, what's bubbling to the top of everything that you're going through? Yeah, the big one is go to Ramon Ray's house on Saturday for pancakes, apparently. <laughs> That's pretty big. Um, I'll take that. I think we got to relabel what's going on. You know, 2008 was the Great Recession. 2020 is the grand reinvention we as entrepreneurs need to adjust. And it's not we who need to change, it's we who need change to customer changing demand. 
the customer is now expecting something new. We're, we're expecting new environments in restaurants and so many of these former areas we used to gather, uh, sporting events um, and, and other things like that. You do that by asking. So the number one action you can do right now is reach out to your past clients or patrons and say, how can we serve you now? And they'll give you insights on what they need. Mm -hmm. I'm in a little town here in Boot, New Jersey, actually not too far away from you, Ramon. Mm -hmm. There was a restaurant who did exactly that. Some restaurants sadly folded. They didn't respond at all. Other ones started doing takeout, which is an obvious solution. One restaurant out of 25 in our area here reached out to customers and said, how can we serve you now? They said, we need hot meals, but we don't want to wait for delivery for an hour. And we don't have the time to come to your place. And we feel at risk. They teamed up with a food truck. A mm -hmm. food truck is going into neighborhoods with hot meals and delivering 60 to 80 meals a, uh, a, a, within an hour. Right. That wow. is radically different. So how can this be a grand reinvention for you? This is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. The second thing is to start moving in small steps. You know, we got to start testing out our new stuff. If you have a new idea, a new way to service, don't go all in on it and, and burn up the last dollars you have. Put little tests out there, little betas. And the ultimate beta test is this. Ask for people's money before you deliver your product or service in that test format. Because people speak the truth, not through their words, we're socially polite to each other, we speak the truth through our wallets. So if you tell your customers, hey, I'm, we're thinking about rolling out the food truck, would you be interested? Most will say yes, because they want to support your enthusiasm. But when it comes to the buying time, they may not. So instead say, hey, we're going to introduce a, a food truck. Would you be willing to do a pre-order on our first delivery? If no one's buying, they're not buying. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. speak the truth through their wallets. That's the biggest tips I can give you right now. Yeah, no, you're right. They speak the truth and they vote with their wallets. That's for sure. I know, Dana, you've talked about a lot of that with Lauren Feldman, who's coming up whenever he's coming up in this uh, thing. And I've learned a lot from you hearing that. Dana, what are you seeing? Again, uh, you have a business. Uh, we all, all of us here are in business, but I'm going to use you as the person mm -hmm. who's owning that kind of retail business, uh, hit mm -hmm. hard, you've reinvented. What are the things you've learned? What are the things that you're saying, Ramon, man, a few months ago, we were doing like this. I'd mm -hmm. like to hear that. What it was like last year, but more importantly, what have you learned mm -hmm. in the past several months that maybe we can learn from and we can help that we can learn from you? Yes, think about who the past is gone, what's done is done, and the business and the vision you had for your business, business the vision you had for your business is tied to a different path. Mm -hmm. Think about who your who and what your business is going to be in the future, right? So for yeah. Paralee Boyd, that was no longer generating revenue simply by having butts and seats, right? We need to meet our customers where they are. So that getting a line of hair care products that is in line with our business model and, and who we are staying right. committed to healthy hair care. And that's also putting a series of videos up again, not assuming that just because you have bought our products that you know what to do. If we're mm -hmm. committed to healthy hair care, then let's stay committed and empower our guests to work in what the new normal is and work at home. Wow, that is powerful. And and do you find it hard, uh, Dana, for people to let go of the past? And again, we've all new normal. We keep talking about it, but do you find that people just aren't getting it? Some, some people are hoping that I can't wait in a in a year or uh, or whatever whatever things happen, election or not election, just not political. My point is though, people are waiting for something and thinking it's going to go back the way it was. Do you find that people you're talking to are some people are hanging on absolutely, still. Absolutely, absolutely. And so that's been part of my pivot. I've had the privilege of speaking at Goldman Sachs. I'm on the podcast. And so when people hear me, they say, hey, can we talk? And I, and I talk and have found myself coaching a lot of people. And one of the biggest hurdles that they have to get over is trying to change their perspective and alter their vision for what is coming up next based on who you're going to be, not based on who you were. That is the hardest thing because as business owners, we've been so focused and so driven based on growing this company based on this. That foundation has been rattled and shook and it's coming back together, but it will not be the same. So I'm telling entrepreneurs, get ready for the business to come in the new normal. Add a layer of revenue if you can and take all that you've learned, right? As I've said to other people, are you shooting for the stars? Or are you shooting for the street lamp? right? The street lamp is only going to get you so far, right? And that's fine, right? But if you're shooting for the stars and you're going to cover a wider area. So it's just getting their perspective to change on where we were versus where we are and where we're going to go. And Danny, you know that Gabrielle's eyeing you. She's like, uh, Ramon, what's her cell number? We're going to have her in front of thousands and thousands of people at Tory Burch Foundation. So I'm just letting you know. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Mike and I are just, you know, we'll, we'll just bring them water or something like that. <laughs> Um, Gabrielle, what are you seeing? What I like about Tory Burch Foundation, and, and I'm guessing kind of why I envision where you are, Gabrielle, you're seeing all this. You're you and your team, thousands and tens of thousands of, of those who are just starting out, those who are struggling, those who are rocking it, and many of these are female founders. What can we learn from Tory Burch Foundation? What you're seeing day to day? What are you hearing, Gabrielle, that we need to know uh to, to go on and to survive and thrive today? Well, first of all, it's so clear from from this crisis that small business owners are truly the lifeblood of our country. And so for us on the foundation team, we are continuously amazed by by our entrepreneurs resiliency, by their focus, by their ability to get off the floor, dust themselves off and find a new plan. And I think when I think about key lessons, I think so many of us are planners, right? I'm certainly a planner. And you've kind of had to throw out those polished plans and adapt. Um, I, I think of it as improv. So, so many of our Tory Birch fellows are acting like improv actors where they're just really focused on listening to their customer. Um, one of my favorite stories uh, that comes to mind is Sharice Jones, who Everybody. owns the company uh, Sassy Jones, which is an accessory company. Everybody check that out. Sharice Jones, Sassy Jones. Yes. Check it out. Buy thousands of dollars worth of stuff. Mike, you can buy a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff. So, and you too, Dana. So go ahead. Do so. I actually just ordered earrings and a necklace from her today. Her okay. jewelry line is beautiful. Um, but she had to get really clear on what was working and what wasn't. And she had a retail store and she realized only 2% of her sales were coming from this retail store. And obviously it's great to have a brick and mortar store with your name on it, that people can come in and you feel good about yourself. Um, but she had to be so disciplined in saying, this is not working. So she shut that store. She was just named to Inc's 5,000 list on number, wow. she's listed as number 75 um, for businesses that are doing even better in the midst of COVID. Um, so I think the key lessons that I'm certainly seeing from our fellows are get clear on what's working, what's not. Be okay with being an improv actor and like listening to your environment. And we've had so many entrepreneurs pivot, um, focus more on virtual, of course, and the creativity inspires me. Yeah, no, for sure. I always yeah. like to acknowledge, thank you, Gabriel. I always like to acknowledge those who have not done so well. It's just something in my heart, acknowledging that even though the four of us are here, we're blessed and doing okay, I guess, in some degree, and those mm -hmm. on the chat. But you know, for those of you who are listening, and I'm going to turn to you, Dana, maybe to, to uh, pick up on this. For those of you who are listening and your business is closed, you back to your mother or father's house, uh, you're in a mound of debt, you know, you just signed the lease, and then boom, I don't know what to tell you, but I just want to say I feel you as well. Everything's not rosy. We know that. So I just if that's, if that's uh, anything. But Dana, what do you have to say for those people uh, that are just like the, the carpet got ripped? They're right now mm -hmm. as they're, they're in pain. Any any thoughts? Right. To say to them. Remember, it is so easy to forget who you are, where you are, and what brought you to this point. Remember before you take your next step. Hmm. Once when you started your business there was something in you and there were things that you needed to have in order to get to the point you were. Remember what those are and figure out how can I use that going forward. It may not be in car it, may, it may not be in a brick and mortar, right? That's what I had to do. I was ready to close Paralee Boyd March 20th. Mm. And I was sitting down and my mother said to me, I said, mom, am I whining? She said, no, you're forgetting, forgetting it. Remember everything you need to get you to this position right now. Now, if you decide, hey, it's not Paralee Boyd, then so be it. But you need to remember. And it sounds easy. It's like, oh, just sit there and remember. I know you're on your couch. But that people will say, oh, just start all over. But how do you start? You start by being gentle with yourself. Mm. having a seat and remembering and then pulling those tools together to take you to your next step, whatever that may be. Yeah, yeah no, that's powerful. So, so it's okay to, so Dan, I'm hearing you say it's okay to cry a bit. It's okay to go in a corner and just rock and moan for a bit, but you got to move on. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> cry, well, you know, eat, eat a vat of ice cream, whatever you need to do, but then you get up. Yes. You get up and get prepared to jump and you build your wings on the way down. 
Yeah. Don't wait to build your wings before you go. You need to jump, then build your wings on the way down. For sure. Mike, I'd like you to rip into, if you don't mind, just one or two minutes to give us take us through some of the things that are in Fix This Next. Before you do that, um, listen, I want to ask questions. We have about, uh, I'm bad at math, 48, 12 more minutes to go. Um, I really am, Gabby. I'm serious. <laughs> um, 12 more minutes. We're probably going to end in about 10 minutes because I want to leave time for questions of some, some other things we want to do. But um, ask your questions. So I'm going to try to look at the chat as Mike's diving in to Fix This Next. I want to hear what some of the tips are in there. And I encourage you all to check it out for sure. And definitely check out Tory Birch Foundation. Love it. You will love what it is. And definitely all the people, I want to contact Dana. I want to contact Dana. Well, <laughs> right here in the uh, lower third. But Mike, unpack Fix This Fix this next. What are the two or three things in there that we need to know about? And again, everybody, ask those questions. I'm going to see it here. Ask the questions and I'll ask them as well. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, well, it does start with mindset. So building on what Dana said, you know, we are not our circumstances. We are we. And uh, your circumstances are simply what we must navigate. But don't forget the essence of who you are. Fix it next is the realization that when we move our business forward, it's now going to mean sequential steps. Don't expect to fix everything at once. But the fundamental mistake that many businesses are making, as I did this research, is believing that sales cures everything. That is a lie. Sales are necessary, don't get me wrong, but they're not sufficient. You need to extract profit from it. So what I found is there's different sequences or different stages we go through. First is you must have some sales. Right now in your business, if you have any degree of sales, the next question is, are we extracting profit from it? Sales, ultimately, the vanity metric. I don't care if you're doing 100,000 or $100 million or more, it doesn't matter. What I do care about is how sustainable your business is and how well it's serving you to your expectations. Truly, actually I had a friend that had a $250 million business that went bankrupt because they didn't manage the profit. I have friends that have a $100,000 business and they're living their life of comfort. Who's the winner here? I suggest sales are necessary, uh, but profit is just as necessary. Once that's achieved, we start focusing on order and efficiency. I, look, this is so important. An entrepreneur's job is not to hustle and grind. Our job is not to do the work. The number one job of entrepreneurs is to provide jobs. 7% of the, the global population will ever be business owners or entrepreneurs. 93% are people who want to work for stable businesses. We mm -hmm. entrepreneurs are the providers of jobs. So if you're hustle and grinding, think about it this way. You're stealing a job from someone else. The responsibility is to have a clear vision, to choreograph resources, technology, and people to make that vision a reality. So start providing jobs. Now, I know if you're that small business right now and you, you move back to your mom's house and you're eating Ramon's pancakes, that you're probably not in the position to hire some full-time people. But what you can do is maybe have someone help you out an hour or two a week. Maybe it's mom at home or maybe it's a virtual assistant. But start peeling that work away from you. Not only are you starting to provide work for someone else, but more importantly, you're starting to learn the discipline of how to assign work to others, to assign outcomes to others. Once that's done, the next stage is impact. Many businesses try to jump to an impact stage without getting the sales, profit, and efficiencies built in, but you need those first. It's putting your oxygen mask on so you can breathe before you help other people breathe. Impact is where we start being of service to our community. That's where the great vision comes true. This is where our services are not transactional, but transformational. And the final stage of the Fix This Next process is legacy. Legacy is not necessarily the generational passing of your business, but it's the realization the day will come that you realize you've never been a business owner. You've always been a business steward, meaning you've had a responsibility to bring this organization to life, at the continuance of this organization and in of service to generations of patrons. That's the mm -hmm. process you go through. It, yeah. Start, start in the beginning and see how you're doing and move along. Don't stay stuck in sales. Don't stay stuck in profit. Get adequate at each level and then recap from the beginning. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. That was powerful. Listen, somebody asked you a question. They addressed it to Mike. Indeed, they're just a Mike. But I'm going to turn it first to Gabrielle and Dana. Gabrielle, I'll turn to you first. The question is, Gabrielle, about starting from zero. There's a number of people here in the Smart Hustle community, I'm guessing, because I've been involved a bit. I see that, you know, uh, the, 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 the community, the Tory Burch Foundation could be similar. There's those who are starting, those who are already growing a bit. But the question person asked, Gabrielle, any tips, advice for somebody who's starting from ground zero? Some people, Gabrielle and Dane and Mike, as you know, they've recently let go of their jobs. They got fired from the jobs. They're like, you know what? I want to I do what Mike's doing, what Ramon's doing, what Gabby, what Dana's doing. So any one or two tips, Gabrielle, for those who are starting from zero, then I'll turn to you, Dana, and then Mike, and we'll see how much time uh, we have left. Sure. So um, first of all, I'm so encouraged to hear that people are starting now. And we mm. see that over and over again in our community, brand new entrepreneurs. And I think 
Um, this crisis has forced us all to get really clear on what actually matters to us. And so I'm really optimistic that the best businesses are gonna come from this crisis because we're clear on what actually matters. Um, mm -hmm. How to get started, first of all, there are so many resources out there. And what I see over and over again in our community are entrepreneurs who are trying to do everything by themselves. And mm -hmm. that does not work. And Mike alluded to that. Um, we had Seth Gooden come and speak to our Tory Birch fellows. And he said, do you wanna be a freelancer? Or an entrepreneur and i thought that was so powerful and like i can't wait to read mike's book because it sounds like there are a lot of interesting lessons there which is don't do it by yourself visit toribirchfoundation.org visit our website we have a business plan builder that you can just type in your ideas and it generates to become custom to your business plan builder so you don't have to have to just hustle 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 and not go anywhere you need to be really clear on what matters to you and what resources are around you. And there are plenty. Powerful question. I'm gonna change the script a bit, Mike and Dana. Thank you, Gabrielle, for that. And definitely check out Tori Burke Foundation. <clears throat> and remember our next speaker is coming up, Carol Carol Roth, founder of Future File, I see here uh, pending there from CNBC. Uh, Trisha Tate, The Art of Money Matters, The Money Queen, Lady King, Princess, however you wanna call it. So I'm excited to have these two awesome uh, entrepreneurs and ladies, Carol and Trisha, coming up next. Uh, what I would, because another question came in, Mike and Dana, so I'm gonna ask that one. First, I'll turn to you, Dana. Mm -hmm. uh, aspect mm -hmm. of cutting that's the bottom line is that covid's already hit us we're already trying to cut and people are alluding to what mike said about profit 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 but dana how do i cut when i've already cut and i know dana it's a general question may not be so fair but any ideas things you've done through to think either cut or i gotta make more money any thoughts so right. a question kind of on money is the question it's 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 cut to make more money cut and make more money Parley boyd is already a lean manufacturer salon so we we operate in in cutting in cutting. What we had to do was decide how do we operate in this new normal, understanding that our guests are still very much afraid to come and get their hair done, but still keep people employed. Um, and so cutting is, it's not cutting or in a situation, it's cutting and. If I had retained all 19 people on expecting the volume that we used to have, Paralee Boyd would have been hurt, right? Mm. So what we have to do is cut to make more money. And so for people, I would recommend, um, this is a lean time. Let it go, cut it off, throw it, get rid of it. Don't get rid of it and put it, you know, put it away for, for if it ever does come back. But, um, you know, right now you need to be streamlined, focus on the service you provide or the product you provide and just bare minimum. What do I need to get this in the hands or to provide this to the services of the people who need it? That's it. Awesome. Love it. Mike, you're the king of, uh, you know, profit, profit, profit. That's what you talk about. Sometimes Mike, it annoys me. I'm like, I'm a billion dollar company. Mike is like, I don't care. Because right. I'm, so, I'm like, yeah, it, it, it's and actually that, that points to what I wanted to share. You know, red, top line is such a vanity metric. So when I hear millions or billions, I, I don't care. What I do care about mm -hmm. is the health of an organization, the continuance organization, and that's defined by profitability. Cut the vanity stuff. So the, the office space, if you still have it, does it really benefit your clients or is it really benefiting how you feel? The, the assistant you have, are they really serving you move your organization forward or is the fact that you can direct someone around? The cars, cut the vanity metrics or the vanity elements mm -hmm. and amplify what gives you a return. But the biggest opportunity is in margin. It's all about the positioning of something. How can you make what you currently offer more palatable, more, more mm -hmm. desirable to your client? Mm -hmm. And often, it's interesting, many small businesses, the biggest pushback they get on pricing is not from their customers, it's from the business owner's own mind. I can't charge that, what are people gonna say? I will tell you this, the first measurement of quality is price. Ramon, right now, if I dropped, dropped a diamond on the desk and said, oh, that's worth $5, you would know instantly it's a gimmick, it's it's a Kubrick zirconia, it's costume jewelry. If I put that down and say, that's $5,000, then you'll say, oh, uh, let's be careful with this. You'll pick it up with tweezers, you'll put it in a safe. Okay. Nothing changed. It could be the exact same piece, but the dollar figure forces us to interpret value. Therefore, mm -hmm. margin's your biggest opportunity. And sometimes, sometimes, just by increasing price, people start seeing more value in you. Yeah, that is powerful. Listen, Gabriel mm -hmm. Ramey, Tory Birch Foundation. You can just Google it, the organization, her, him, whichever pronoun the, the organization is. I'll go with her for right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so definitely, definitely, Gabrielle Raymond McGee, Tory Birch Foundation. Check out all their amazing programs. And as Gabrielle said, I think 457 times, 
it's free. So right. check it out for sure. Uh, and you don't even have to be dressed fashionably uh, to be a member of the Tory Burch Foundation. They, they even work with people like me, so not much love. So uh, Dana White, <laughs> Dana White, owner of Amazing Hair Salon in Detroit area. Um, and check her out because she's a speaker, podcast, yeah. influencer, and more. Mike, Dana's going to be gunning for our jobs, uh, Mike. So we're going to bring her into the fold. That's um, awesome. DanaWhiteInspires.com. Check out Dana. Those of you asking, how do I find out who, where Dana is? Check her out. It's now, it's now live. It, we had some technical difficulty, but DanaWhiteInspires.com is up. Love it. Congratulations. And Mike McCallowitz, author of so many books. You can see some of them back there. My personal favorite, Profit First, which has helped my business. So Mike, thank you. Dana, thank you. Gabrielle. Thank you, Ramon. Thank you. Thanks, Ramon. Good luck, great. guys. Keep going, guys. Keep going. Indeed. Thank you all so much. Bye-bye. So next up is uh, uh, Carol Roth and Trisha Tate, uh, two friends of mine. I've known Carol for a long time. Uh, and uh, Trisha and I have got to know each other online. We have about one more minute. We're going to bring them up. Listen, let me ask a question. Did you like the previous session? Did you learn something? If you learned something, can you say yes? Can you say what you learned? Can you just say something to me? Love it. Donna says, and Donna's from South uh, Africa, I believe. How can you add more value on increasing costs? Love it. Um, we all, oh, so many things. My products will be organic, body butters, creams, and lip balms. Should I offer samples first? Good question. We'll see. Hope maybe Trisha or Carol can answer that. We'll see what happens if I get a chance to ask them that question. Thank you, Emilio, my brother from another mother. Great session. Uh, Ramon, appreciate that. Ernst Craig, thank you. Good. You learned, you learned, you learned. Good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I'm having a great time. And those of you who are stalking me online, you can count. I'm going to do it now. One sip of water. The time is now five. That's hour number one. <laughs> and I'll be here. Carol has like a jug or something in her hair there. So uh, listen, we're going to bring them on in about 30 seconds. Carol and Trish, I see you guys in the green room. There it is. Uh, but this is great. And listen, big, big thanks to Dell Technologies, Oracle NetSuite for uh, making this possible. I'm excited to work to bring the knowledge that we're bringing today. Mike was off the chain. Uh, uh, Gabrielle is off the chain, Tory Burch Foundation, and uh, definitely Dana White, who I've got to know from actually Carol and I's mutual friend, Lauren Feldman, as well. So uh, let's get to it. Let me check the private chat and see if anything I'm supposed to know. Good. I think we're good. So uh, Trisha, here we go. And Carol, here we go. Um, it's nice about StreamYard because something's wrong. You can see like people like, no, not yet. <laughs> you can see smiles. Thank you, Keith, bringing up golden content and loved it. Learning. This is good. Good. Lots of pivoting. Love it. Love it. Um, operating lean is critical. So here we go. Bringing on Trisha, bringing on Carol. And let's see here. How do we do this? Get off back on the other screen. What's up? All right. Hi. We are on. Amazing! The power of technology. This is the shortest uh, trip I've ever taken for a speaking engagement before. Isn't it? Right. Isn't it? <laughs> Thank you for being here, Carol. Really appreciate it. How's your day going so far? Um, it's been a day. How about yours? <laughs> okay, you. It's been a day as well. Trisha Tate, what about you? How's your day been? What's going on in your world? It's been wonderful. It's beautiful. I live close to the beach. I could walk to the beach, but you know, we're in pandemic times and I take it day by day. How are you? I feel good. Listen, I mean, the, the the water joke, as you all can imagine, you have this is my second time doing it. Well, Carol's done this two-year work. So she sat in a chair. I'm not sure if it's been five hours, but when I'm done, I'm on. I didn't see you any water. I took a small sip. We're all human, so I can't drink too many gulps or there'll be issues. So <laughs> let's move on. Carol Roth, you can find her on Twitter at Carol J.S. Roth. Uh, Google her, find her, all the amazing stuff she's doing, and hopefully she'll unpack and share that with us uh, in a minute here. Uh, Trisha Tate, definitely want to check her out at Art of Money Matters, and Trisha has a few things to share with us as well, things that are coming up, Trisha, which we'll dive into in a bit. Uh, but Carol, can you just give us a brief uh, background, who you are, what you do? You're an entrepreneur, you're a thought leader, you're an author, uh, you got your own like TV, radio, satellite, the moon. Tell us who you are, Carol. All right. It's very confusing, Ramon. So we'll go with the short version is that I am an entrepreneur, a best selling author, recovering investment banker, and I play myself on television. And I do, in fact, have my own action figure that you can see over one of my shoulders over there. So I see it. Awesome. Carol, thanks for being here today. Really appreciate that. Trisha, tell us about who you are, what you do, how you serve entrepreneurs and small business owners. Hey everyone, I'm Trisha Tate. Um, I am a self-proclaimed math nerd. I am a recovering Wall Street corporate finance uh, professional. 
turned virtual CFO for small and mid-sized businesses. I particularly focus on women entrepreneurs, helping them move from being messy to bringing a level of confidence and control around their financials. And that's what I do. I love it. And this session, as Carol knows to a degree, Trisha, I think you may get to know a little, little bit because we talk, is one of the most intimidating panels for me. I am not the money guy. I can spell. I definitely can't add. I don't even know how to spell money. So I said I have to do it, though. I have to humble myself, as it were, and, and you know, get into something that I know nothing about. So that's that. Uh, Carol, I'll turn, I'll turn first to you, Carol, and it's a general question, but I'm curious from your perspective as one who speaks to business owners, hear some business owners, you read the news of the day, you see it. What's going on, one, general question, and two, <laughs> top level advice that the smart hustle community here can, can know from Carol Roth, what's her best advice that she's been giving to business owners that she's been talking about on TV and radio? Drop some size on us, Carol. Carol, what's going on? Yeah, so trying to break down what's going on is, is trying to put uh, you know crazy into a bottle. I'm not sure that we can exactly do it. It's interesting because I feel like there are a tale of multiple economies going on. You've got the very biggest companies um, in the stock market hitting all time highs. Small business owners, on the other hand, are completely bifurcated. In our mm -hmm. own community, we have folks who are just absolutely killing it. They're appropriately positioned. They're providing services that are in need. Um, some of them that are more virtually oriented than focused on bricks and mortars, and they are just taking the opportunity to connect with customers and kill it. Mm -hmm. And then there are certainly more service-oriented types of businesses, especially personal services, who are really struggling. They've been shut down in some cases. They've had um, you know, other issues to contend with. They're having a hard time getting employees back to work, um, not seeing the same kind of foot traffic, having to deal with COVID protocols. So it really is um, very much like small business always, as we like to lump it into one category, very dependent on what industry you're in, what size of business and all sorts of other factors. I would say the one piece of business advice that I would give right now to small business owners, particularly ones who may be hesitant to invest in their business, is actually not my own advice, it's Warren Buffett's, but if, you know, if I'm to steal advice, might as well be from the best investor of all time. And that is that you want to be investing when everybody else is scared, right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna be greedy when people are scared, and then you should be scared when people are being greedy. <laughs> and that's the best advice that I can give you. Everyone likes to get it backwards when everything's going well and we're into about to head into a recession. That's when everyone feels the confidence um, to get going. And when things go poorly, that's when they retreat. And looking at the way business cycles happen, you're doing it exactly backwards. So now is a really good time. And small business owners are very uniquely positioned to take advantage of that because of the ability to connect with and form those bonds and relationships with customers, which I'm sure we'll talk more about. Yeah, no, I think that is powerful. I love it. Tricia, what are you hearing? What are you seeing? What are you telling your clients? Uh, what are you getting into? Help us understand, you know, pack in uh, your months and months that you've been seeing and reading the market and talking to clients and probably talking to scared people, worried people. What is that thing we need to know from you? Oh, so I usually see businesses are, you know, grow through five stages, right? They grow from startup survival mode where the whole focus is on cash flow. And then they move into the stability mode where they're focused on sales and a bit of profit. So Mike talked about profits a lot. Mm -hmm. And then they get into the space where they're they're focused on maturity and expansion. So they're focused on, on mitigating risk and protecting the entire business. Right. What the pandemic has done and what the recession did in 2008 and 2009 is refocus everybody back to cash flow. It's mm -hmm. all about managing your cash. And I don't believe that business owners should just look at their bank account or even rule with their gut feelings. I, I really encourage people to get intimate, even if you feel uncomfortable, don't put it at arm's length, don't run to your CPA for everything, because by the way, CPAs were overloaded. Besides tax time, all of their, all of their clients were coming to them uh, with all kinds of financial questions about the PPP, EIDL loans. When there, when there is a crisis, uh, people tend to look at their numbers. When there isn't a crisis, they don't they don't look at it at all mm -hmm. many times. And that's what I mean. I meet $10 million businesses that are a mess with regards to their financials. Wow. So I encourage people to really lean in to their numbers, get intimate with it. Um, 
find opportunities to, to lower costs as they were talking about, but in a strategic way. So for example, like if you have, if you have a, a lot of balances on your, on your credit card, you find some zero or some lower interest credit cards, maybe you pay the minimum. I am not always for that camp. I like to pay off my credit cards because I don't want to owe anybody. And a lot of women business owners say the same, same thing. I don't want to owe, I don't want to owe anyone. However, maybe you just pay the minimum this time, save the rest to invest later. And so that focus on cash is a big one. That's one that I've been doing a couple of webinars on. And I have one uh, next Wednesday, August 26th at around 12 p.m. where I really talk about strategies to manage your cash and to invest it wisely in the pivot, in the refresh, in the rebrand. So we could talk about that all day. Yeah, and I can actually add on to that because I think it's that such wise counsel, Trisha. And I think that uh, it brings up one of my favorite activities that I tell small business owners to practice, which is cash flow yoga. And that mm -hmm. is you take the cash in very quickly and you put it out slowly. Let's all do this together. Take the cash in quickly and put it out slowly. And so that means looking at your customers and saying, is there some other way that I can bring more cash into the business? Maybe it's you know selling gift cards or gift certificates or selling bundles or future services or some sort of a retainer, some way that you can get more cash into your business today. And like you said, putting it out uh, a lot more slowly. So is it putting off, um, like you said, the credit cards? Is it talking to your different vendors and maybe renegotiating? I mean, now's a really good time. A lot of people understand that people are struggling. Uh, a lot of people who connect with small businesses are just happy that you are in business and right. they understand the benefit of you being in business over the long time. So you may be able to negotiate better terms, um, a longer payment cycle, or even a better deal, or maybe a discount for paying up front. And so you shouldn't be fearful of having those discussions. It costs you absolutely nothing other than a few minutes of your time to ask. And the worst thing that could happen is that they say no. And Trisha, since this is uh, one of the areas you focus in, I'm sure you have many other tips uh, for letting the cash go out slowly. But that cash flow yoga is a good reminder as you're doing your daily exercise to do that exercise in your small business as well. I love it. People are affirming that. Uh, 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 Pam Perry says, yes, she loves it as well. So this is great. Um, Trisha, I'll turn to you first and Carol, I'll turn to you. And again, as you have specific questions for Carol and Trisha, ask, ask, ask. Affirm what they're saying. Great. Or if you have specific questions about your business, these are the money ladies, the financial ladies. So I can't help you once they're gone. We're going to go back to like PR branding. Well, and they have... They have my uh, my website there. If anybody wants to contact me or reach out after this, I'm, I'm here for you. I'm here to support. Absolutely. And I think that we put a bit.ly link there, uh, five financial tips when hiring. So definitely check that out as well. Thank you, Liz, for putting that up as well. Thank you very much for that. So I'm curious, um, what are some ways, somebody asked that, I think I lost it there, but some ways that we can save in our business. I think that was what uh, someone asked. Yes, no, sorry, yeah, save in our business. Anything that comes to mind for you, Trish, as you're thinking of, there's so many uh, expenses. COVID has hit all of us. It seems like we're trying to save, but then, Carolyn, you were saying to invest in your business. It seems like a a whirlwind, but are there some things that you're telling clients, here's how to conserve cash? Uh, or if you want to give another bit of advice on where you should put your cash, I don't know. Yeah, so so a couple of things. So Carol hit on a number of things and the last panel hit on a number of ways to manage the cash. I really think that everything is negotiable at this point, unfortunately, <laughs> even rent. Right. So I would negotiate away everything and just know your power. If you've had a long relationship with a vendor or with a landlord or with a credit card company, let them know, listen, I could go somewhere else unless you give me a better deal. So that's that's the main thing. But I also want to focus the conversation on ways that you can bring money in. That, okay, is, always, that. that is always the conversation. And so I was on this uh, this call with a uh, professor at my business school at Duke University at People's School of Business. And she was talking about four different ways to think about alternative revenue streams. Okay. Either you can appease to a new customer with a new product or a new customer with the same product. So if I know of like interior designers, they want to do, they want to make your place beautiful. They want to organize your place. They can't get into your place, but they mm. can probably do it virtually and open up like another revenue stream where they're helping people with DIY pro projects, for example. So I love what you said about, you know, thinking bigger, thinking differently, being creative. Uh, I really want to help people focus on bringing money into the business. The other thing I wanted to touch on is there are various forms of funding. For the past six months, we have been focused on PPP and EIDL loans. 
There is also factoring. There's also equipment financing. If you have AV equipment, if you have a warehouse full of equipment that you've never used before, leverage your assets. Um, there are many different ways of, of uh, getting financing and getting cash flow in the door. So I know that was kind of what you, kind of what you were uh, no, referring good. to, but I, I also wanted to plug that in. And then in terms of just investments really quickly, I know a lot of people had to unfortunately lay off their best talent yep. and they want to get them back as quickly as possible. But you want to make that decision uh, very smartly and strategically. And so I think what Liz dropped in there is, is just a little template, a little checklist of like five things to think about from a financial perspective before you hire your person back or before you hire someone better. Got it. Love it. Love it. Thank you for that, Trisha. And don't forget to look at Trisha's handles right there, artofmoneymatters.com. I'm assuming all things Trisha you can find there, connect with her, things she's doing. Carol, uh, yes. question for you, Carolyn, please. By the way, Carol, please talk about future file, if you don't mind. Is that, that, that cool? Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, listen, it, 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 it falls into the preparation thing. And when you asked me when I started, um, I'm having a day because we had a death in the extended family. Mm. And of course, you know, that's when the planning and preparation comes into play. Did you do all of those things to make sure that you have preserved your legacy? And so whether you are a small business owner or there's a small business owner in your family, uh, I've created a legacy and wishes planning system that has all of your relevant information and wishes together and provides a roadmap for your loved ones to follow so that when something happens like happened in our extended family today, there is a step-by-step -step set of directions on what to do. And you know, it really just falls into the category of all of this preparation. You never want to be in that emergency situation like so many of us are and have not prepared. And so I think this is a big wake up call, whether it's dealing with the pandemic or dealing with future file, um, you know, that, that you make sure you do the preparation up front. So nobody's ever said, gee, I'm so upset that I was over prepared for this situation. So that's over at futurefile.com. Um, but I did want to go back to sort of your, your initial question Please. and talking about you know, looking at your financials. And I think this ties into what Tricia was talking about is that as you're going through your financials and your business, I think you have to look at all of your expenditures and find out which one of them are really expenses and which one of them are investments. Mm. And are you getting what I call ROI, which is return on investment, or are you getting ROE, which I call return on ego? And there are a lot of things that small business owners do, and especially with social media, where you're spending a lot of time and you're getting a lot of attention and clicks and things that make you feel good. And that doesn't pay the rent. And we haven't figured that that uh, formula out yet. So you have to really look in each of your activities and say, is there a way that I can make this better or more efficient? Because I think that framing it that way it takes away the temptation to take out expenses for just taking out expenses purposes. Yes. Sometimes you need to make those expenses in order to grow your business or to make it run. So you really have to have a sense of some of these key financial metrics, something like CAC, customer acquisition cost. How much does it cost you to get a customer? And so if I put out this much money, I know that I can expect to get the customer back what their lifetime value is and if it's going to be worth it in testing these things out. And these are things small business owners today can do on a low cost basis, whether it's with a Facebook ad or a Google ad or a small event or content marketing and A-B testing. You can test things out without putting out a lot of money. See if you're getting that return on investment Amp up the places where you're getting a big return and dial down the places that you don't. And this you know, works across the board from a hard number standpoint and just more of a anecdotal soft standpoint. Yeah. You know, your marketing, a lot of people say, where, where do I get new customers? Well, where did you get the customers before? How right. what's working? Do more of that. And it, sometimes people are like, oh, yeah, I guess I never thought of that. I, I thought I had to go to all these new avenues. And it's like, no, if it's working in this particular area, do more of that. So spend a lot of time focusing on that ROI and that return on investment and replicating the things that work in your business. No, that is I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw another acronym in there before really quickly. Before you do that, I, hold on that thought one second. Don't forget <laughs> that. 
I just want to confess something to both you, Trisha, and you, Carol. I want to confess something, but you can't tell anybody. Carol, can you keep it a secret? Yeah, we'll, we'll keep it a secret between us and all yeah. the, like, you know, thousands of people watching this. Yes. So, <laughs> ROE, I had spent money on a PR firm because, Carol, you know that feeling when Inc. says something, put your name or Forbes, you know, or any of these media, right? It feels so good. And Trisha, you know what I'm talking about. I had spent some good money on a PR firm, and the results came in. But I was looking... Oh, my name, it says Ramon Ray is. I was like, yeah. And then I look at the bill and I, I was if just to your point, I'm just, it's silly, but I know the feeling and I'm telling my audience this. I know that feeling. It feels good when you get written here or there. And we, you can do it yourself, of course, but you pay a PR firm and that's their job. They get some good press. But then you're like, I spent $5,000 on this. Or three thousand dollars. So, to Carol's point, uh, why so you, are we? So we're going to follow this along the, the logical train of thought. So, you made this ridiculous expense because you wanted to see your name up in lights, or you wanted to be on TV, or whatever it is, and now you have it. So, did you do anything with that, Ramon? Did you put the link to that in the signature of your email? Did you send out a blast email that said, "Hey, I was featured in Ink on this. Now get a X dollar offer with an X dollar discount." Did you leverage that and make it an investment, or did you leave it as an expense and just go, "Oh my God, I feel so good." No, I did leverage it for sure. Okay. That I did, but I yes, correct. And so, if you leverage it, I guess it's so. Carol, the uh, the confessioner is saying, "Ramon, it's okay a little bit." That, that 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 brings me to that this is perfect Go this is like so juicy it goes right into the thing that i was about to talk about uh -huh. what brings you return on advantage i heard this recently mm -hmm. and i was like i wrote hey i'm a technical person so i know return on assets like that's what i know <laughs> but what gives you return on advantage if that little interview got you like a spotlight in front of Dell, Oracle, maybe some other uh, sponsors or things like that, then it, then it was a beautiful investment and it keeps giving. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Okay, so I'm forgiven. I'll just take it I'll just take it as that and do it. Now, do you remember also, were you gonna add something else, Trisha? I, don't, I knew I threw you off track a bit. Were you gonna add? No, that was it. That was it. We are, we are in alignment. Yeah, we got like a whole we're little in thing. Alignment. We got about 10 more minutes to go, everybody. And if you have specific questions, I saw some of them come in. And as you ask those questions, if you could just give me a bit more context. I saw the person who asked, should I give samples first? Just give me a bit more context on that one. It's a bit tough to ask that one. But a uh, question I have is, I'll turn first to you, uh, Trisha, then back to Carol. How do people learn about finances? I know this is the big question, and I know Carol, uh, Trisha, you have a number of resources. Art of Money Matters, Carol, you have a number of resources. But overall, and I know Score is great, ASBDC. But are there any big tips you'd give for people like me? We're, we're smart people, you know. We've been there, done that. But I find, for some reason, even as I say it, I feel like crying. I don't know why. Maybe I think of school where I was teased a lot. I don't know. But oh boy, it's okay to cry. But I just, for those who find numbers hard, I find it very difficult. Looking at a QuickBooks or a fresh books or whatever report, you know, just makes me go, huh? And you know, so I'm just wondering, oh, uh, and, and you know, what, what, what to do? Trisha, I'll turn to you. I think I've asked a question already. You get what I'm asking. How do we, do we have to change our mind? Should we just hire somebody? Should we maybe go to a class? There's a thousand different answers I know, but what are your top two or three ways to be more financially literate is the question. Yeah, I think that uh, this is a perfect time for people to look at the areas of their business where they don't feel so strong and financials is usually one of them. So get as educated as you can on all the different systems. That doesn't necessarily mean you can become an accountant overnight. You can't YouTube your way into certain accounting and financial um, uh, concepts. And it, and it just might not be your forte. You should spend time on the things that bring you joy that you that you love to do and spend time on focusing on uh, being in the business. You mentioned SCORE. That is a, I know Mary Tan is on here, so she'd be happy that I mentioned her and the organization. They have a lot of wonderful workshops. Um, I'm part of a number of different networks. I'm treasurer of the board of NABO, National Association of Women Business Owners, NYC. We have professional development workshops. I'm part of Luminary. They have wonderful workshops for women elevate. Yeah. Um, and I think I, I want to speak directly to something you mentioned that fear and that angst that like yes. the of your tummy when you're talking about numbers. If you can't stand that, then find someone reliable who you trust, who you feel another competent adult to walk you through it. A lot of times when I work with, with business owners, at the very end of it, they're like, I feel like I can breathe now. I don't feel like an idiot. I feel mm. like you didn't even judge me. And because you're CEO, give yourself a break. It doesn't mean you have to know everything just because you're the owner of the business. So if you find somebody that you can trust, I know there's a lot of consultants in here. 
lean on them, help them walk you through and help them empower you in the areas where you're not so strong. That is powerful. Carol, what about for you? I'm going to plug Trisha. You call Trisha up and you get her to teach you the basics. And I'm gonna, but disagree just a little. I do think you can YouTube or do an online class to get basic financial accounting. You are never going to be as savvy as your accountant or as Trisha or as other people who are focused Carol. on this. But <laughs> as a small business owner, it is incumbent upon you to know the difference between revenue and profit, to know the difference right. between an income statement, a balance sheet and a cash flow statement and to have the basics. And I think the reason it sounds scary is because you don't have the experience and the repetitions. Everything that we have never done before is scary when you have never done it before. But the reality is, the good news is, all of this stuff is just basic math. It's addition and maybe some multiplication and division. Every woman I've ever talked to, if you walk into Nordstrom and there's a 30% off sale on shoes, can tell you how much those shoes are gonna cost. If you can figure that out, you can figure out your basic financials. Because if you don't have that base understanding, you can't analyze your business. You don't have enough detail to be able to make the choices on where you are going to spend money. And this is not something that you can hand off to somebody else. You cannot abdicate the responsibility. You can offload some of it, but you still have to check up. And I can tell you, even with professional accountants that work for the biggest firms in the entire world, they make mistakes, which yeah. is why you have to go over that information. So I do think it's important to get a base level of education, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, YouTube, attend a class and, and know the just the basics. You don't have to be an expert, but the basics, you all have the tools. As long as you know that you know one plus one equals two, you have enough of the tools to figure that out. And Carol, you have a fan in Finesse Houston. Uh, they're like amening you. Uh, you know, <laughs> so uh, that is so true. The <laughs> person. Um, listen, we got about three or four more minutes. And listen, if, if you've appreciated Trisha being here today, let me see like love Trisha, yay Trisha, something like that. Carsonymatter.com. Check <laughs> everything she's doing out. Uh, if you've appreciated what Carol has done today, you need to check her out. She has a podcast. She has books out. She does stuff, cool PR stuff. You need to get on her list. And uh, an action figure. Yeah, and the action figure as well. But Trisha, before we come to an end, let me just leave you with some final thoughts. Anything else that you can share with us, Trisha, to give us hope? Survive and Thrive Summit really is about two things. Inspiration. That's just what I'm about. Even if I don't know what I'm talking about, I can inspire you. That's for sure. Um, and then education, which is what you all are there for. So Trisha, final words. You can see, wow, Trisha has a like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Carol's getting up. Yeah, yeah. So Trisha, final two or three points that we can learn from. And then I'll turn to you, Carol. We have our next session with uh, amazing, amazing speaker, which I'm excited about, Ranga Bodla, who's the head of uh, industry marketing for NetSuite. And that's going to be an amazing session. Uh, so, but Trisha, I'll turn to you first and then Carol to close us out. Trisha. So as a reminder, um, the last panel talked about it, you know, self-care is so critical for every business owner, especially when you, if you're dealing with an area of your business that you don't feel comfortable with. So focus on the things, at least start in the morning with the things that give you joy. Uh, she was just talking about yoga. I do yoga every day. Uh, my professional hobby is dance. I get in a dance class and a Zoom. So start with self-care. I would also say stay educated, stay curious, and stay informed. Keep up people around you who can give you information, especially on the things that you don't know a lot about. And in terms of money, in terms of managing your financials, uh, remember that revenue is vanity, profit is sanity, and cash flow is reality. Mm. I preach that to everyone out there. Focus on your cash flow. And if you have any questions, I'm here. You have my website on Instagram, Art of Money Matters. Absolutely. Okay. I do suggest people go to it. I love that. Thank you, Trisha. Carol, what do you have to tell us to inspire us, educate us, give us hope? I know you do so much. You've served so many people. And I'm just grateful for your time, Carol, and your time, Trisha. Carol, take us home. Well, I'm grateful for the platform and grateful to be on this tremendous panel. This is absolutely amazing. And what I would say is that if you think about a successful football team, most of what is done is the blocking and tackling. Every once in a while, there's a crazy Hail Mary pass. 
but the way that football teams win over and over again is just by doing the basics and doing them well. And I would say the same thing for small business owners. There is so much new information and new platforms and new you know, shiny things to get distracted with. But at the end of the day, it's all about having a great relationship with your customer. If you have customers that love you and want to do business with you, you can sell them anything. Your product and service is sort of ancillary to that. So focus as much attention as you can on serving your existing customers, because those are the people who you can sell more to, uh, you can sell more frequently, who will advocate for you. And I don't think that small business owners spend enough time harvesting what's in front of them and doing that basic blocking and, and tackling and they get so focused out on what's next and finding more and all this stuff so go back to your customers especially at a time like this they're stakeholders they want you to be in business talk to them what more do they need how can they be helpful how can they get invested in your business and you will build those long relationships because at the end of the day loyalty is not transactional that is powerful. Loyalty is not transactional. That's like a tweet. That's like a tweet or a t-shirt company. Maybe we should all do a t-shirt company with my face on it. Oh no, that's ROE. Sorry. Um, no. But Trisha, stay focused, Ramon. You didn't take anything away from what I just said. Stay focused. Trisha J, artofmoneymatters.com, artofmoneymatters.com. Check out her and Trisha. When is your event? It's next to what? Next Wednesday, August 26th, a free webinar. Power Lunch, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Ramon, you are amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank yes. you for the fact. Thank, thank you, Carol. Thank you for sure. And don't forget to check out Carol. I would say, Carol, the best place for you is your Twitter handle if you want to say something else, but that's <laughs> always on fire. Futurefile.com, carolroth.com, or Twitter if you have a warped sense of humor. Fair warning. Awesome. And, and indeed, it is pretty funny. Carol and Trisha, thank you, ladies, so much. Blessings to you. I appreciate your time. Thank you for joining appreciate us. I appreciate you all, small business owners. You're the backbone of this country, so keep it going. Indeed. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Have a good night, ladies. Thank you all so much. Thank folks. Listen, our next speaker's coming up, uh, and they're representing NetSuite. I am so, so massively deliriously excited uh, to have them with us today. And I just want to give a resource that NetSuite has. Amazing. You should check that out. Business Now, it's a resource guide, netsuite.com slash portal slash company, businessnow.shtml. And we'll probably have that in the chat somewhere as well. We'll put it in the Facebook and the YouTube so you can check that out. But it's an amazing resource. I'll reference that again later on in the program as well. Uh, and Lynn Liz, you can bring up the other one as well. But have you guys? a good time? Have you all learned? This has been our second session. I think I've taken one sip of water. I see Ranga in the green, green room, as it were. He's raring to go, so I'm going to bring him up in a second. But have you all had a good time? Have you learned something? Has it been useful for you? Listen, we have over a 1,000 people registered for the Survive and Thrive Summit. I'm so excited to have you all who are here, who are live with us right now. And I know more are coming in, coming out, watching it here, watching it there, and we're watching it afterwards. So if you've enjoyed it, Ginger King. Thank you, Ginger. You all need to check out Ginger King, who's an amazing, amazing person making all kind of health and beauty products as well. Ginger King, thanks for being here with us. We got uh, Lauren says, Trisha Tate, revenue is vanity. So many things there. Susan says, uh, so informative. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Somebody says, revenue is vanity. Profit is sanity. Again, awesome. Uh, Tia, thank you for your kind words. Uh, Trisha is an amazing dancer. Good, 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 good. Uh, Sophie says, oh my God, this is it. No, we're not done yet. We got a lot more to go and on and on and on. But again, my name is Ramon Ray, founder of Smart Hustle Media. So glad you are here. Uh, this whole uh, session is brought to you by, this whole experience brought to you by uh, Oracle NetSuite. Amazing, amazing company. We're going to hear from Ranga in a few minutes and Dell Technology. So really uh, check them out. Check the resource I showed you. Uh, and with that, we are going to move on. Listen, uh, Ranga Bodla uh, is an amazing executive at NetSuite Oracle. And I want to give him time to talk a little about what they do and how it can support your business. And we're going to have a conversation. I want you to ask him questions, ask him for help. He's an executive that has years of experience helping companies grow. And this guy definitely knows what it is. And he dresses very fashionably as well. So Ranga, welcome to the, uh, here we go. Smart hey, hey, Ramon, how are you today? Oh, fantastic, man. Thanks for being here. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. It's been, uh, you know, I've been listening in. Uh, while I've been uh, waiting and yeah. uh, definitely already have learned some things myself. I loved the uh, ROE and ROI. I, 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 I'm definitely gonna have to use the ROE one uh, with uh, uh, you know some of my uh, some of my colleagues. That one is definitely one I uh, 
I think we've we've all made that mistake in the past. So you, you know, imagine whispering to that. saying, uh, you know, George, for example, let me talk to you for a minute. Was that an ROE expense or that R O I expense? <laughs> I did it myself. Exactly. No, it's a it's a great it was a great analogy. And uh, you know, it's funny because like, oh wait, are we? You know, and I, I had one thing I was thinking about, and then nope, of course, was uh, was corrected, and that was great. It was great to to get that perspective. So for sure. But Rango, we're really happy to have you with us today. Thank you so much. Why don't you unpack a bit about who you are, your experience, what you've done, uh, and then let's touch into a bit what NetSuite is. So powerful. I mean, to me, I think of the founding of it. It's it's an entrepreneurial company in its DNA seems to be built for entrepreneurs, for those who are starting small, but especially for those who want to grow and be the next whatever you want it to be, the next whatever. That's when I think of NetSuite as a whole suite of tools and solutions to power an enterprise uh, for for entrepreneurs. But uh, please take it away and help us unpack a little bit about yourself and then touch on NetSuite and why it's so important to you. Sure. That'd be, that'd be great, Ramon. And uh, so just a little bit about myself. So I've been uh, I've been with NetSuite for for almost ten years now. Uh, actually, it'll be it'll be ten years next month. So a full uh, a full decade. Uh, it's the longest company I've ever been at, and you know I'll tell you why. It's because um, I, I actually love what I do. I mm. love the the opportunity to talk with customers across different uh, industries, across different market segments. I mean, it's really been a great. Um, uh, been a great experience for me. I joined the company. Uh, we were, you know, we were roughly 900 people, okay. and uh, you know, we grew the company. Uh, you know, we got acquired by Oracle in 2016, and uh, you know, we still operate independently um, as a as a business unit of Oracle. And so, um, you know, and the and what I do specifically is uh, I run industry and field marketing. And okay. so, what that means uh, is I get to talk to people. From software companies, from nonprofits, from uh, health and beauty companies, from apparel companies, from manufacturers, distributors, I get this opportunity to speak to companies of every size, mm. uh, of every type, uh, and every industry. And you know, it, when, and you you talked about it. You know, we we were founded as an entrepreneurial company. Uh, in fact, uh, our founder Evan Goldberg yeah. he founded the company in 1998, and you know when he founded the company, and he's still with the company, by the way. He is, fact, he is the he's uh, you know he's he's not my direct boss. He's my right. boss's boss, but you know he um, That's close enough. That's close enough. <laughs> close enough. It, it's good enough. Um, so he'll say hi to him in the elevator. How about that? Right. Uh, but uh, he um, you know he founded the company on the premise that you know a small company should have the same resources that a large company should mm-hmm. have. And how does he how did he democratize the power of what? Um, he was offering and make sure that um, all companies could experience that. And so, you know, we, we, a lot of companies talk about, oh, our target's the Fortune 500. Um, you know, the thing about the Fortune 500, Ramon, is uh, there's 500 of them. Um, what, <laughs> what Evan talks about is going after the Fortune 5 million. And, uh, and, and really that has a, been, been my experience. We get to work with companies that are, are very small and very large. And um, you, you asked me to talk a little bit about what NetSuite itself does. Please, please. But, and, um, and so we've, we've been in business, you know, we were founded in 1998 on the premise of, of a, 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 an application, a suite of tools that could run an entire business, um, all access through, through the browser. And that was the founding of it. And, you know, now 22,000 customers around the world trust NetSuite to run their business day in and day out. And the great thing, and I think this is the thing I always love about my 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 job. And I I was at IBM before. I was at SAP. I was been a number number of different companies, and all of those companies all run that same software. And so whether you're talking about a software company or you're talking about a nonprofit, they all run that same software to run their business day in and day out. And you you talked a little bit about in your intro, I think earlier on, which is um, financials, uh, CRM technology, customer relationship technology, e-commerce. All of these things that are critical to run a business are all part of what NetSuite offers. And, and, you know, many of our customers talk about how they can access it, whether it's on their browser, it's on their tablet, on their phone um, to run their business. And um, especially now, um, especially now, Ramon, the ability for a a, a owner, an executive, um, for really anybody in the business to be able to access um, the, the what's going on in their business. From the from the palm of their hand um, is very relevant because you know frankly we're not none of us are going into the office some of us right. are right. Um, 
but to the extent that that you know we can they can maintain that and uh, and have that same set of truth that they can use to run the business, uh, it's critical. It's a critical part of what they're what they're doing. No, you're right for sure. And I want to talk about get into some of the customers that you have, the lessons we can learn and advice for small businesses or the businesses that we have here in Smart Hustle. But I'm curious, uh, Aranga, as well, just to, I was in the, and let me, if I'm wrong, feel free to, I always, as I say, I love to put my foot in my mouth. So you can say, Ramon, you're dead wrong. I disagree with you. Um, but I was at my local coffee shop today and they had a little device for, um, you know, customer loyalty. But then they gave me a clip card and I'm saying, are these together? And it may not be exactly what you're saying, but one problem I'm saying, I'm like, why aren't these like on a common back end? So when I do X function, they know me here. When I do Y function, they know me here in some degree. Is that kind of also what's important is that especially it's always, but today that it's about the customer and you want everything about them, no matter where they touch. Is that a fair? What I'm oh, talking about? It's, it's a hundred percent accurate, Ramon. I mean, and, and the thing is it goes across uh, businesses uh, that are large and small, which is, and I think this was one of the things that's interesting too. Is you know you've seen so many more small businesses out there that are able to uh, you know drive a very very powerful business. But the thing is the importance of understanding how your customers interact with you, whether they're interacting with you on the phone or in person or you know on um, you know online, you know all of those things. It's really important. So it is exactly as you said, uh, Ramon. All those pieces are are relevant and a big part of uh, of what we're you know what's important. For sure. When you look at your customers, uh, Ranga, I'm curious, uh, can you just unpack, I don't know, any of them that come to mind, you don't have to mention a name per se, but my, my overall question is, what makes them successful? I've benefited, I think you and I have met recently, but our common colleague, and shout out to Danera, thank you for everything you've done in the back end there. Um, her and her team have introduced me to so many of your customers. When you think about them, is there any common thread you're seeing, Ranga, that makes them a success? And maybe it's not a fair question, I know it's a very broad question, but you talk to customers, you look at successful businesses. Any thread that we can learn from today, those who are on the smart hustle, we've had so many people register, so many watching us now, that we can learn from any nugget that Ramon, this is, I'm seeing this common path of success all the time. Anything comes to mind? Yeah, there's a couple things um, that, I'll, that I'll give to you, uh, Ramon, about that. One, uh, one in particular is we often talk about the fact that, uh, and this is, this is part of our mission statement, is we're all about empowering people to realize their vision. Mm. We, you know, if, if somebody, somebody has a, a, doesn't have a great mission, uh, sure. a great product, you know, they don't have a great, um, uh, you know, the, the, we're not just putting in NetSuite's not going to help them. <laughs> you know, if it was destined to fail, it was destined to fail. There's, the, there's nothing, there's nothing to do on that. What we do. And I think what we've seen across the companies that we've seen successful. And by the way, we've seen companies that have, have bought NetSuite when they were two people. Mm. We've seen people have bought it when they are seven people and then wow. from seven people to going public, just to give you perspective of, of the scale that we've seen with our customer base. And because um, I just want to say, and because I guess they knew where they were going. Meaning, we don't know how life takes us, but these were two guys, two girls, whatever it is, that were saying, you know what? We know we need this. These are the core steps. So we need a tool, we need a solution, and to work with great people that can help us reach that goal. Is what I'm hearing. We want it. We they want it. You know, these are companies that wanted to to focus on what they were good at and mm. not focus on the obstacles. Um, you know, one of my favorite companies, and uh, and I, and I love this company because they've done so much, and you you know they've got fun products. But um, if you ever get a chance to check out Corksicle, and okay. uh, you know the the thing I love about Corksicle, and this is the story I'll have to share, Ramon, is the I asked the guys, you know, like how did they come up with this? And they said, well, our founder, you know, we used to refer to him as a as a lazy drunk. And so what the product actually is, it was, you know, the first product was this, this, it was like a, it's, it's like an icicle that you freeze and you put it into a wine bottle. So when you're outside drinking wine, you know, your, your wine bottle stays cold. Right. So you don't have to go back inside if you, if you want to fill up your drink. And, uh, and so the idea came to him, um, you know, that was, that was sort of the joke with sure. him and a bunch of his founders. And, you know, one of the things that they, they brought in NetSuite very early on, I think there were four people. And, uh, you know, as they continued to add and expand and do all these things, I mean, they were doing sourcing from, from, you know, they were doing sourcing from China, they were doing design, they were doing all these different things that every business needs. And they've grown, expanded quite a bit. You can find Cork's Glow almost anywhere these days. And, um, and, you know, I think the thing that they did was they focused on really what they know best Yes. and left kind of the, the IT, the, the financial stuff, they left all of that, um, to, to us, all that stuff that we could take care of. And then they focused on the business. Now, you know, I know there was some conversation in the previous session 
you know, all about, you know, owners digging in and understanding the numbers. And that's, that is critical. That is, I'm not saying that, that okay. we take that away. That is not what we do provide though. And I think this is one thing that we see and we hear consistently from our customers is visibility, Ramon. Like I, I think we hear over and over again. And and in right now in particular, the being able to understand how things are going in your business and being able to take action as a result of that is really critical. Um, I can't remember if it was in your which session it was in the first session or the second session, but but there's a conversation about PPP loans. Yes. And uh, you know, and the you know, obviously there's lots of different things. But you know what what happened with the first tranche of those is companies had to move really quickly right. whether they wanted to take advantage of that. And mm -hmm. you know, frankly, a lot of people were scared, like, hey, if I take this now, am I gonna be on the hook? Like I, I don't know if I can but the thing is, if you you know it, the the ability to have um, knowledge into how the business is performing, have that visibility um, to be able to make those decisions and be able to make them quickly, really critical. And uh, and so that's one of the things that we hear kind of as a consistent thread across our customers um, is that need for that visibility into the business um, and kind of a shared set of right. metrics that everybody in the business is using to understand how that you know they're performing and how they're doing. And people who don't have that, Ranga, what happens? I'm curious. I mean, we don't don't mention names, but people who don't have that, uh, you know, what are they going through? What are some of the dangers when you find that companies, as they grow, especially, you know, I think when you're smaller, you can have some things on a 3M sticky note. You can have some things in Excel. You can have some things over there. But what are you seeing that happens? Uh, companies that that, ha that don't have this, that, that are not unified, especially as they're growing. What are some dangers? What are some things that, that you're seeing happen? Well, you know, you particularly talked about it with growth. And, uh, you know, uh, a, a lot of times what happens with these companies is, you know, you're, you're on a, a, on a steady path of growth and then you, and then you oftentimes will something happens and you can, you can, uh, you can pivot, you can, you can hockey stick and you don't know when that's going to happen. Right. And when you, and so part of it is not having that, that set of metrics, not having that consistency, uh, to be able to make decisions. Um, it's, it's, you know, you make bad decisions. Sometimes you make them. Uh, based on your gut and your gut might, might what you may, your gut, maybe you think your gut may be telling you something, but in fact, it's just telling you you're hungry. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and so that, uh, you know, I think one of the other parts of it is when you don't have that information, that it's a shared set of, of a shared foundation, I'll put yes. it, um, that everyone's using to make decisions. Um, it's, it's hard to make decisions, particularly now. And, uh, you know, there was a discussion about, uh, I think in the previous session about, hey, you know, maybe this month we're going to put the minimum payment so that we can save money, so right. that we can invest. And uh, and you know, I, that doesn't that's not just applicable to small companies. That's applicable to, you know, a company that's that's five people. That's applicable to a company that's fifty people. That's applicable to a company that's fifty thousand people. Um, and that notion of knowing when to, uh, how much. Can I invest and deinvest, and where do I deinvest? And those are really, really critical elements. And if you don't have that shared set of, of metrics that you're using to make decisions, um, how do you how do you make those decisions? And um, how do you share those decisions? I mm. think that's another part of this. Sharing, yeah. If you don't having them in a silo doesn't work. That that's important as well. Um, I'm curious, Ron, guys. You also look at NetSuite uh, customers across the board. Uh, when you talk, when you look at the uh, the human aspect, uh, the leadership aspect, anything you're seeing there, because you know technology changed from from Corksicle to somebody selling masks to I don't know doggy daycare company to I think you had a fun company. I interviewed them. Some fun, not clown, but they do something with fun. Oh, they do masks. Oh. Um, I know I'm gonna. I, I it'll come to you with your a great name. Oh, it's gonna kill me now. I can't think yeah, of them. They have, um, uh, they have a great name, and I, I um, it'll come to me. So I'm hopefully it'll come before we, we we wrap up. Absolutely. But the point being is that you know what do you talk? What what is what are you seeing? What are you seeing as a leader? What do you tell your team? What have you learned from Evan? Leadership, the human dimension. Because as you said, technology can change, product can change. The market can change, but I, I find, uh, Ranga, that it's that leader, that individual that's so important. What are you finding and what can we learn how to be better leaders? So, you know, communication, I think, is is one big, huge thing, Ramon. I, I, I think communication is critical. Um, communicating why you're making decisions, I think, is really, really important. You know, I think it's, uh, you know, it's important to communicate what's going on and why you're making decisions. You know, I, you may be making cuts while at the same time you're investing. Um, because you're you're making cuts 
that you, when you look at it, don't make sense anymore and you need to invest to, to set yourself up for the for, for right now and for the future. So that's one piece. The other part is, um, and I, you know, I had this conversation, in fact, last week with uh, one of my trusted colleagues mm. and, um, and, you know, the conversation was uh, vulnerability. Oh, wow. Well, yes. I think it's important that, you know, executives show that, you know what, we're, we're also vulnerable. Um, we're, you know, many of us are, we've got families, we've got, we're raising kids, we're trying to homeschool, you know, we're trying to, um, ah, that's it. Hello. <laughs> Everybody's laughing on planet earth. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Um, that's, that's exactly right. Um, um, yeah, that is a fun company. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, that vulnerability is another part of it too, because you know what, um, you got it. I mean, look, we're all human. Yes. You know, um, uh, you know, and, and you have to acknowledge that everybody else is, is, you know, you, your customers are not alone in this. Right. Your employees are not alone in this. Your partners are not alone in this. Um, I think it's really important to acknowledge that. And, uh, and so I think that, that vulnerability is part of that as well. And, uh, you know, what I've seen from, from some of the companies we've talked to is, you know, they've, they've been very transparent. You know, we've got some hard decisions we've had to make mm -hmm. and, um, and then, you know, they, they communicate why that we're, we're setting ourselves up for, uh, for the future. We're having to make some decisions that we're going to invest in things that we, we thought we could wait for a few years. Now we need to make those decisions now in order to set ourselves up, um, for, for future success or for, for, for survival. Um, right. all of those things I think are really, really important. Yeah. And it can be hard though, I guess also Rongo that to, to, to know that judgment of when, you know, do I let go of these 10 people to, to save the hundred people? Do I try to keep going and going and going? Any thoughts on that about measuring risk? And again, there's no right answer here. So, you know, you, there's no example, but what have you gone through and you learned as you're looking, you know, at your own customers, you're leading them, your own team measuring risk, I guess, how do you know, kind of let's keep soldiering on or let's cut our losses right now. Anything that you've seen in that, any guidance uh, for us? Um, well, I mean, some of that comes back to that shared set of, of metrics, like I mentioned, so that you're constantly tracking the business um, and, and in real time, um, you know, it's it's really important. This isn't a, you know, and and, and I think this happens a lot with, um, you know, small and large organizations yeah. where you don't, you know, you're, you got data over here and you got data over here and data over here and data, over, you know, if you don't have that shared place and then when you want to pull it together each time to make decisions, if you got to do that every time to make a decision mm -hmm. rather than having it in one place, you know, and I, I have that visibility and how the business is performing. It's it's difficult to make those decisions. So it, it's difficult to say, well, do I continue soldiering on, or do I do I cut my losses? Yeah. Um, you know, and some of it also is just I think um, there's also this need to be constantly planning. Um, I think the and, and I think it's it's overused, so I won't say it exactly. But I think that the the one thing um, we're continually seeing is um, unfortunately this this pandemic continues to surprise us. Yes. And it continues to cause us to make changes um, in how we operate and how we're, you know, what we thought was a two week, you know, to, uh, you know, it was going to be two weeks ended up being, you know, three months and, you know, or six months or whatever it is. And I think it's, you know, it's forcing changes into not just how we operate, but how we communicate, how we, uh, how we talk to our customers, how we talk to our employees. And, uh, and I think that it's that, that notion of flexibility um, is a, is a really important part of the, of, of this. Cause you have to be, you have to constantly plan, yeah. um, but your best laid plans can, can easily go out the window. And okay. so you have to be flexible in that you set a plan and then you're going to execute on it, but then you got to change it again. And I think being comfortable with being, change. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Ramon. Being comfortable with change. I was just saying being comfortable with change. You have, yeah. You have to be, you have to be comfortable with change. You have to be comfortable being uncomfortable, but you also have to, um, you you have to make sure that um, you are um, you sorry you you have to be comfortable <laughs> with that uncomfortability, but right. you have to be your planning cycle has to has to shrink. Hmm. You know you 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 know and, I, and you can't just you know plan um, you know for the next year. Right. You can't just you know you you have to plan for the next year, for the next six months, for the next three months, one month. You know, and, and think about that because, you know, how old, you know, you're, you, you could plan for the next quarter, right. but, you know, if things change, that could impact your cash flow and, you know, you may have to make decisions accordingly. And so you kind of have to think about that, that constant scenario planning 
as another important part of this, um, which I think is really critical to the uh, um, to success. Yeah, yeah. Which is scary. I mean, it change everything changes when you look at what Netsuite is doing. You look at your set of customers. Uh, it's just a, kind of a political question, but I think I know your answer. <laughs> are you hopeful, Ranga, about the future of which? When you look at the base of Netsuite customers, are you sensing strength and saying, you know what? We're going to plow through this, or do you sit home at night and call Evan and and just cry and you moan and you know no? <laughs> which which one do you do? You can tell us. <laughs> no, I know I I am I am definitely feeling optimistic. You know, when I get to talk to our customers, and I get I get a chance to talk to them. Um, you know, I did a uh, I had a great opportunity to sit in on a we did a panel discussion, and it was with three Netsuite customers. Okay, um, one was called Bedford, uh, another was Danby, another was uh, was Compaq, and and Danby. Um, you know, Danby makes wine fridges, uh, um, uh, Bedford, Bedford actually pivoted their entire business to make, um, PPE, you know, okay. so they were, they were in a different kind of business altogether. And then, uh, you know, compact makes a number of different consumer products and, you know, each one of them, you know, they told me stories about how they changed their business and not just change their business, but change their expectations. Um, I remember the guy from, um, the guy from, uh, from Bedford, you know, he was, uh, he was commenting like, you know, he, he was like, I, I was used to having ever, I was always a, everybody in the office kind of guy. He's like, now, I don't know, you know, maybe, you know, maybe we're going to, the accounting staff is going to be virtual and we'll, we'll fly them in every now and then, you know? And he said, he said, cause what he wanted to do, what he's done in his business is he's changed up his model so that he could protect the people that had to be in the office. Yes. You know, manufacturing people, the the warehouse workers, and and focused on making sure they are safe, so that his business can operate and that he could deliver product. And uh, and I think that was a great lesson. You know, that's a great perspective, and and you know, it makes me optimistic. And when I hear from from our customers, what they're telling us is, you know, there, there's definitely pain. They're they're hurting. Um, that's not to say that everything is 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 great, but at the same time, they're optimistic about their opportunities. They're optimistic that they put in place. Um, they've been putting in place things over the over the last few years that are now enabling them um, to operate. And, and you know, we talk to people. We're now talking to people that we talked to a year ago. Mm. Or, you know, didn't buy a year ago, and um, and now they're saying, you know what, we we made a mistake. We we should have we should have listened to you a year ago, and put put you in. If we had put your system in place a year ago we would have, um, we'd be in a better spot now. Now, I, again, it's a nice point not being, you put in NetSuite, everything's great. Like I, I've, I, you know, I think it's important, which is when you have a great entrepreneur, when you have a great owner that knows how to, how to operate and they, and they focus on what makes the business great, not focusing on, uh, on really, frankly, the boring stuff. Yeah. Um, they, they uh, th that, those are companies that are able to, you know, build on on their success, and you know, take advantage of of the infrastructure and the foundation we provide to them, and grow on that. And um, and that's you know, those that's that's what I hear from our customers, and you know, the the opportunities that makes me optimistic. No, I think so for sure. Listen, NetSuite has so many things wrong as we come uh, to the downward slant of this, what I think has been awesome discussion. I know one is an amazing resource here, uh, uh, Business Now Resource Guide. Um, what can people unpack in that? I was there myself, Ronga. You guys have a lot of things in there, a verticalization for industries, et cetera. Maybe just talk to that a bit if you, if you can. And then two, but more importantly, as our businesses here, as they're looking to grow and as they're looking to start a relationship with NetSuite, where should they start? What do you think they can find? What's that experience like, especially for those who are like, Ramon, yeah, I have an idea. Ramon, we're going to grow. We're no longer going to be just two girls in a garage. We're going to have 25, 50 people. We're going to grow, whether it's in person or virtually, and they want to start working with you. What's one or two things they should know? Uh, unpack that for us, however you wish, either about the guide or working with NetSuite. Uh, what's that like? Yeah, well, I mean, I think actually the guide is a great place to start. Um, you know, one of the things, um, you know, so it's it's labeled business now, and um, you know, you know, one of the things that that we we started business now, or we put this in place, uh, I want to say roughly in the April timeframe. Okay. You know, right in the middle of of uh, of when lockdown started, and the reason we put it in place was a one stop shop for all the questions and all the content and all of the events that we were pulling out to really talk about um, what's going on. So there's a whole series called Open for Business. That was one of the, in fact, the uh, 
um, the, 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 the webinar I mentioned where I had this conversation with these three manufacturing executives, that was um, part of Open for Business. Um, you know, there was uh, and there's a number of these different ones where we talked to business leaders about what's going on in their business and, and you know, how they're operating. Uh, there's another series in there, Fast Forward, which has a number of different folks uh, nice. talking about, you know, thought leadership and different things. We had Stephen Dubner on there from Freakonomics. Mm -hmm. uh, very interesting things from uh, from him. But, um, you know, I mean, th those are the types of things that are in the guide. Um, I will tell you the other thing is, you know, with within NetSuite, it's easy to come to NetSuite and go and get a uh, and get a free product tour. You can go to the website. And, you know, there's a it's usually in the top right hand corner. Click on that free product tour. You can get um, get get connected with somebody and uh, and get a tour. And I think probably the biggest thing I will say, and I think a lot of people will say, was well, NetSuite. You know, is NetSuite too big for me? You know, they're yeah. Oracle. You know, that's a that's a big company. That's sure. And, and I think that's, you know, like I mentioned, we got companies that started with us, you know, when there are two people, four people, you know, 10 people, you know, we see companies in, in all varying stages of growth and investment. And, um, and, you know, they, they, they grow with us. And that's been, you know, a big part of, of, uh, of what I've seen over the years that I've been at NetSuite, you know, these companies, um, you know, that, that, you know, constantly stay with us and are, are part of it. And uh, it's been, you know, it's been a great, uh, uh, great, been a great journey. It's part of the reason, like I mentioned at the beginning, why yeah. I've been at NetSuite for for ten years um, is uh, is is the customers I get to work with. And uh, my wife always teases me because she's like, she's like, oh, you know, because I I always will. Oh, that's a NetSuite customer. Oh, that's a NetSuite customer. <laughs> uh, you know, like the hat I'm wearing, NetSuite customer. You know, and uh, and 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 so my colleagues will will joke as well because uh, I'm usually wearing either uh, you know a NetSuite hat, a NetSuite yeah. shirt. You know, or or, uh, or or sorry, NetSuite customers. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're close. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love it. This is wrong. This has been powerful, man. And I know time is so precious. I'm just grateful to you. I'm grateful for the NetSuite team. Uh, grateful for are you seeing it worthwhile to share the time with us uh, here at Smart Hustle? And we have the people who are watching this live. We have the people we're going to be pushing this out to in the next few days who weren't able to maybe be here live, but are going to be watching this afterwards as we push uh, your words out to the Smart Hustle community. So really big thanks from me. Uh, thank you for being here today. Appreciate your time. And I may I may style with a hat too. You never know our next conversation, how Ramon will show up. I, you know, I, you know, I, I, I say particularly right now when all of us are on, on camera most of the time, that's it's, it's zoom. Yeah. The hat, I, you know, I got to say, cause you know, I, no one's looking at my shoes anymore. So, you know, my, so the shoe game doesn't really matter. So I got to focus on the hat. So that's what I'm doing. And you know what? I, you know, I've, I've been getting, I, I feel like I've been getting some compliments on that. So I'm going to stick with it and, uh, and go with that. So. I love it. No, that's amazing. Listen, uh, Ranga Badla, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Uh, Head of Industry Marketing for NetSuite. Really appreciate your time. Thanks for being here. And I can't wait to work with you further. And again, we'll put that resource up a bit later on uh, from NetSuite. But we're so glad you took the time to share with us today. So thank you so much for being here. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, Ramon. Thank you for what you're doing. I really appreciate the time and uh, enjoyed being on. Indeed. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day. Thanks, man. So everybody, listen, it's been great to be here. Again, Ramon Ray, founder of Smart Hustle Media. We have so many things coming up. I'm going to introduce you to some giveaways and other things like that. We got at 6.05, uh, Jennifer S. Tucker, who's with the ASBDC, and she's on deck. I already see her in the green room. Um, hello, you can't see me, but I can see you. Hi. <laughs> Uh, so Jennifer Ness is here. We're going to talk to her in about five minutes, give or take. We have another panel coming up with Kayla, with Lauren, with Vikram, and we're going to go on and on and on. Lisa says, thanks for more great insights. And we have the Dell giveaway. We're giving away a Dell computer right now. A Dell computer, we're giving it away right now. Lisa, thank you so much. Jacqueline, love the hat. Thanks for your advice. You're welcome. Ramon Ray, you got to go. No problem. I know it's late where you are in Sweden, I believe it is. Thanks so much. Uh, Tatia says, Ranga, love the hat. Tia is saying, great info. Donna is saying, thank you. Love the hat game as well. This is compelling. Great insights and tools for small businesses. Thank you all so much for being here. We got a lot more to go. Vanessa, Vanessa says, Ooh, and uh, going on there. So listen, we have a lot to go here. Jacqueline says, love the hat. I think I put that already. So are you all ready to see who wins the uh, Dell computer? I'm getting my notes here because I have it written down who won. And how people won is, is um, they gave their input into the uh, Smart Hustle Nation community. Uh, Susan says, I'll take it, could really use it. So uh, we have uh, three 
brand new Dell XPS notebook computers that we are giving away, brought to you by Tell Dell Technologies. And again, big props to uh, Oracle as well for being a part of this. Uh, so I'm so excited uh, to make that reveal. So again, we have one of many computers here. Um, I don't know, maybe I should just give it to uh, Jennifer Ness because she's going to rock the house talking about all her amazing Now She's like, yeah, give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is so good. So Finesse says, they're a winner. Robin said, this is great. Somebody telling me I need a hat. Jason won one last time. You should check out Jason's company. Jason, if you want to put that in the chat, what you do again, no problem at all. If you want to do that, uh, let's see. There's so many amazing insights coming along here. Uh, this is great. Thank you all so much. Awesome giveaway. We try, we try, we try. Tia says that. So listen, don't forget, we have about three more hours of amazing content coming along. Um, and we're going to do that giveaway in about 10 seconds. Uh, but get ready, get ready, get ready. We're going to ship that to you. If you are in the continent of the United States, if you're not in the United States, I'll send you a book from Mike McCallowitz. Um, but uh, but we're going <laughs> to... Sorry, I see facial expressions. So we're going to do that. So let's go. We don't need a drum roll because... I got all the applications, the submissions for who needs a Dell computer and why. And Gozi, thanks for being here with us today. Um, Lisa says, what? How did I miss the Dell computer entry? <laughs> um, Bernadette says, we all need technology. I'm still using Windows 7. I hear you. Well, you can talk to Jennifer Ness about that. She can hook you up with ASBDC. She's like, no, Ramon, I don't think we give away computers. We give knowledge. So, or you can see uh, Kayla or anybody else. So uh, let's see here. Want to be part of the giveaway? Yeah, uh, thank you. We'll, but next time, Mahogany says, uh, uh, smiley face. So here we go, Dell Computer Giveaway. Um, and up next, again, we have uh, Jennifer S. Tucker, who's with Washington's SBDC, talking about resiliency and more. We have our next panel coming up at 620. Kayla, Lauren, and Vikram talking about amazing things about surviving and day tip from warrior entrepreneurs. We have Michaela Ulmer from Dell who's coming up. She has a new book out, Me and the Bees Lemonade. I have some right there. In fact, I'm going to have a sip in a minute. We got another break coming up. Then we're going to close with Fergus Connolly, a high performance coach. We got Rob Price, School of Rock, Helena, Jeanette, so many. And Darnielle's going to uh, uh, take us home. So we got a lot going on here. Don't forget, it's not too late to tell people. Hit the share button and say, join Ramon live. Hit the share button. Put some comments out. Tell your Facebook friends, friends. Tell your YouTube friends to join us. We're having a good time. So um, uh, <laughs> Beatrice says, oh, this is too much. She says, uh, Beatrice says, I use Windows 7. Don't feel bad. See, now you're pulling at my heartstrings. Now you're pulling at my heartstrings. Martin says, I remember winning a printer back in the day. Oh, yeah, those are the days for sure. So with that, here we go. Um, so many, so many interests we had. Uh, and uh, who we've, I got to I got to get new glasses. And let's see, Emilio says, uh, great. So the winner is, the winner is, the first winner is Carmen Serena. I don't know if Carmen Serena is listening, but Carmen Serena, if you are listening, Carmen Serena is a life coach. And the team, uh, what she said was, I want to remain, can help them and help others grow their businesses, help people grow in their careers, relationships, and et cetera. So that is Carmen Serena. So team, can you uh, help me? All my glasses are from the dollar store. <laughs> So, Carmen Serena, you are the winner of a brand new Dell XPS computer. Woo! Congratulations! So, Carmen, uh, thank you so much. And Jason, indeed, congratulations. And this is real. Jason can tell you. He has a video up of him opening the brand new Dell computer. So, uh, maybe uh, Liz and Jamie in the back end there, help me remember it was Carmen. I'm going to put a big circle around her name so I know it was Carmen. Thank you, Ngozi. Thank you, Mahogany. Maybe y'all know Carmen. Maybe you don't. Uh, but Carmen, uh, you have won a brand new Dell computer. So let's move on. It is 6.05. Our next speaker uh, is here in the house in the green room ready. And uh, that's Jennifer Nees Taylor. Uh, Jennifer Nees Tucker, excuse me. And I'm so glad to have her here. Let me pull up my notes before I make some mistakes here and call her another name that's not her. So Jennifer Ness, are you ready to go? She's ready to go. Here we go. Bring her in right now. <laughs> hey, Jenna Vanessa, how are you? Thanks for being here. How are things in your world? I am excellent. I had to go put on my hat. I know, right? <laughs> he talked about the shoe game being so important back in the day, and now you're on Zoom all day, so you got to put a hat on. Like, that is right. You know, that is right. <laughs> I'm but... <laughs> good. I like, I like your hair there, too, and I like what you have in the back. Let your faith be bigger than your fear. Yes. That's that the message. 
that's the message today because we are living in uncertainty, right? And folks are really, really, really spooked, right? There's so much going on. There's so much uncertainty. It's changing every day. And it's like, I don't, people are just out here not knowing what to do. So that's my message every day, all day. This right here I, in my house. <laughs> I love Why don't you give us a brief overview of who you are, Jennifer S. And then yes. tell us a bit about ASBDC, why it's so important. Before you do that, I want to tell you something. This is just yes. a secret now. The Florida ASBDC told me two years ago that they were the best. They said I was oh. at a big event that they had, and they said to let all the other ASBDCs know they are the best. Is that correct, or would it be Washington? I'm just curious. What you, you know what? You know what? Florida's the best. Okay. Washington is the best. I have a cousin. We have like a million cousins, right? So every time she see one of us, she say, you're my favorite. <laughs> so like we that. are the best. So I am in no competition with no uh, SBDC. I think we are all the best. S SBDC has been around for over 40 years. Wow. I worked at the Connecticut Small Business Development Center uh, for a few years. Um, I lived in Ohio and I worked with the um, Columbus SBDC for a couple of years. And now I've been here out here in Washington working for the Washington Small Business Development <clears throat> Center. I love as an entrepreneur, as a business advisor, as a community resource partner, I constantly send people to the SBDC. So I want to take this hat off because I want y'all to see my pretty face. But the SBDC, what we do, we provide no cost business advising to small business owners. We help them start up. We help them grow their business, thrive, sell a business. So any aspect or any phase of business we can help with. We have certified business advisors. What that means is we've gone through certification and actually pass that certification to become business advisors. We have expertise in going global, you know, turning your technology into an actual product and getting money from it, you know, like Carol and Trisha was talking about, <laughs> that revenue, right? Oh, um, yeah, so we have real strategic plans that can help folks go from, you know what, I have a good idea, I don't know if this can really be monetized to, you know what, I've had my, I've done well in this business and I'm ready to sell or I need access to capital. So we yeah, help any phase of business. And I apologize because I am at home and my partner is on the phone. <laughs> hey, that's okay. It's all good. No problem at all. This is, we're rolling, right? This is how we hustle and how we do it. So the background, is how we for all I know, you can we make a NBC oh. or ABC studio. <laughs> right, right. So one of the things so, I want to say for the Washington Small Business Center, we helped over um, over 2,100 small businesses last year in 2019. Now those numbers are going to be astronomical this year, of course, with COVID-19. But we helped them gain more than $110 million in access to capital. Wow. And that's the hugest piece and the hugest thing that I think we do. We also have market research. Like the SBDC is amazing. All of them. Anyone, uh, Every yes. single one of them. I love <laughs> and there's it, I love thousands it. of them. Thousands of them. We got about nine, 10 more minutes to go. Um, so listen, yeah. Jason said, this is live TV and you're getting a lot of shout out. SBC made a huge business in my difference. Shout out to Arizona SBDC, New Jersey SBDC. The whole family's out here rooting for Jennifer Ness. So um, yeah. talk, I know business resiliency is a big, important part of what you do, what you talk about SBDC and probably you personally. Feel free yeah. to take two or three minutes, unpack that. What is business resiliency? Why Absolutely. is it important? Probably more importantly, can you give us two or three tips how we do it? What's it all about? Yeah, absolutely. So resiliency is the difference between uh, Ferrelli Pizza and Studio Pie. So we have Ferrelli Pizza, who's in downtown Tacoma, and we have Studio Pie that was in um, in downtown Seattle. Mm. Studio Pie is no longer right. Mm. So when COVID hit, you know, we had these government mandates, right? Everything was closed down. You know, people forward, forward, customer facing businesses, they had to just kind of figure it out. And so many folks didn't have a resiliency plan. They didn't have a plan that helped them to understand, okay, when things hit, whether it's COVID-19, whether it's weather related or whatever those things are, whatever the risks are. So a resiliency plan is, is just that difference in helping your business survive when things do happen. So resiliency planning, is the development and execution of an actual plan. And with the America's SBDC, anybody, again, I heard somebody say, these resources are amazing. We yes. have some more resources. So we have a resiliency planning guide that's available wow. for free. You can go to americasbdc.org forward slash protect 
um, slash my or protect your business. Um, we'll that in. You'll make sure they get those resources. But that's what we do. We help folks to have a plan so that when things happen, whether it's a disruption in your business because of man-made stuff or you know non-man-made stuff, helping your business throw, grow and thrive when things happen. So. Wow, that is powerful. And then let me ask, what is the difference then, uh, Jennifer Ness, of the things that you're seeing of those who are planning and those who don't plan? Take a look at my business. I own the pizza company, let's say. I don't want to mm -hmm. be out of business. I'm not stupid. I'm a smart guy. But mm -hmm. when disaster comes, I don't recover as fast as others. Is there a mindset difference? Is it just the roll of the dice humans? Are you, any commonalities that you can see? So as we're thinking like, oh boy, I want, I want to be on the right side of, yeah. of something when problems happen. What do we do? Thank you for asking that. And that's a really good question because I, I talk to business owners every day, all day, probably, probably more so now. And one of the things that I'll say the commonality is they have a drive and a wheel because, mm -hmm. you know, all of us have business acumen. Not all of us. Let me take that back. Yeah. A lot of us have business acumen. Right. But that's not enough. It's not enough in times like this. you got to be able to pivot. you got to be able to like swivel on your toes. Like when things are happening, because I remember when COVID first hit, we were getting information as the SBDC straight from the SBA. That stuff was changing by the minute. So if you're not connected like to the resources, to the folks that are giving you information and also being willing and able to switch it up. Like I had business saying, I don't want to do that. What do you mean you don't want to do that? You got to do it. <laughs> yes, um, yes. Being able to pivot quickly, like on the drop of a dime as things are changing is super duper important. I think that's the skill that some businesses that are failing don't have. Right. So, and also staying connected to the resource. Right. So if there are resources out there to help you, you've you've given us so many today. Right. But if there are resources out here, folks, stay connected to those resources as information is changing. You got to be communicating and making sure that all your critical functions are being maintained. Yes. So that's yeah. one thing I would say. No, that is important. I love that. It's so important. Another thing for you, when I look over here, I'm just looking, I got so many questions for you, Jennifer Ness, and people are <laughs> putting, putting kudos to uh, SVDC all over there. I'm curious, is it too late, uh, Jennifer Ness? I'm curious, you know, for many of us, uh, COVID, and I guess like 9-11, like other big moments in time, we're never going to forget middle of March, mm -hmm. a particular date, give or take. Is it too late for Jenny? has her nail salon? Is it too late for Alberto who has a copy? You know, if he hasn't, if he wasn't ready, are there things they can do now, even though they're struggling with PPP, EDL, as in the EIDL, all these things we're navigating and going through. And again, up next, I'm so excited for our three panelists who are coming up. We got Kayla, we got Lauren, we got uh, Vikram. It's going to be amazing. So stay tuned for that. But is it too late? Jennifer it's asked. never too late. Okay. And that's what I'm telling folks too. They're like, wait, my I only receiving 20% of my revenue for the last four months. Okay. Let's see what we need to do to switch it up to make sure that you're getting additional revenues. Let's look at different markets. Let's look at ways that you can market differently. I had a client, and I could just give you a zillion success stories. Please. I just got off the phone with one of them today. She, this is an older lady. She's like 68 or 69. Yeah. So she was not technologically savvy. She has an amazing yeah. vegan restaurant. Yeah. Like locally, everybody knows about this spot. She didn't have social media. She didn't have a way to order. You had to go in. You couldn't call. And she was kind of hesitant to change it up, to switch it up. Well, now she's making more money now having her restaurant closed just by people coming in and ordering online. She's like, I never knew. I'm like, just think, you know. But I think um, the biggest thing is to understand this too shall pass. Just like 9-11, just like 2008, you know, this will pass. We will get to a place where it's a new normal and we can do things differently and better. Just have that faith, right? Have yeah. that faith that we can get there and it's never too late. That is, You're right. That's true. And I think to those who have... Uh, uh, move back to their parents' home, to those who've had to close the business completely, I I would even say, and correct me if I'm wrong, that it's not too late for you because, again, it's sad what happened. As we talked in previous panels, cry, hold yourself, rock in the in the closet for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. You got to move forward. Re you got to move forward. Brand new. Or you live and you learn. You, they didn't lose. Go, guess what? You're saving money by moving back to your parents' house. <laughs> 
<laughs> you learned the lesson and now that's going to help you move forward, period. Yeah. So just use that information and keep moving. That's what I got to say. Yeah. No, that is powerful. That is powerful. As you've talked to clients, uh, we got about two or three more minutes, uh, Jennifer S. Uh, Tucker. And again, I am so grateful. Thanks for being here. Certified Thank business you. consultant from the Washington SBDC. Uh, you can see the link to America's SBDC there. And again, find Jennifer Ness all over online. But I'm curious, what's the one or two things that you've learned? I'm curious, you know, in the last several months, you can talk about your years of experience if you want them too. But mm -hmm. anything comes to mind like Ramon, here's what I've yeah. always heard. Here's a recurring theme. Anything yeah. that repeats that we can learn from that nugget in the next uh, one or two minute we have together? So um, let me tell you a little bit about me. I am a reservist for FEMA, mm. for the Department of Homeland Security. So I've been doing that as a private sector specialist since 2011. So I've been on major disasters, maybe 17 over the course of my career. <laughs> and as a private sector specialist and a certified business advisor. So I speak with business owners every day, all day. The biggest thing that I've learned, um, because I hear people say, well, I didn't know, or I didn't have access, or I was never exposed to this or that. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Mm. I am telling you, I seek out information every everywhere. I, I take three mile walks every morning. And this Ooh. morning, I was reading an economic report. I want to know what's going on. Which industries are they saying are going to survive? Which industries are hurting the worst? You know, so communicate, ask questions. If you don't know, I heard them talking earlier about, I don't want to learn, you know, all this finance and accounting. So what? You don't have to learn it all, but ask questions so that you at least have an understanding. And that's what smart people do. Smart people ask questions. So communicate, communicate, communicate. I think that's the biggest thing. I People come and they say, well, I didn't know about this or that. What did you ask? Mm -hmm. If you didn't ask, <laughs> then you can't blame anybody but yourself. So ask questions. Get in contact with America's SBDC. There are over a thousand SBDCs around this country. Everywhere you are, there's an SBDC. So look out for an SBDC advisor. We are knowledgeable and that's what we do. We help entrepreneurs and businesses grow and thrive. Knowledgeable and tough. I love it. Got you. I wish you have some, I wish next time we're gonna have some, you know, walk out music or something. But listen. <laughs> Thank you. I, I believe I know time is so precious and I'm grateful yeah. to you, to other panelists who've been here, who are coming thank on. You. Thank you for your time. And you represent ASBDC so, so well. Oh, thank so, you. I appreciate thank that. You. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day. Thanks for sharing. And we'll, I'll quote that. Let your faith be bigger than your fear. Definitely on that. Thanks, You're Jennifer. Welcome. Take You're care. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye. That was an amazing session, everybody. Wasn't that powerful? That was powerful. We got a lot of comments coming on here. Oh, that's right. Jennifer Ness, Donna Morris is an amazing person in the DC area. You need to connect as well. Donna, reach out to me and I will make that happen for you as well. Listen, our next panel is coming up in about one or two minutes. I see them in the proverbial green room. Kayla's like a bottle of rocket ship, ready to go. I see my long, long time friend, Brickram, amazing company, uh, phoneblogger.net, videosocials.net. I can't wait till you hear about it and check it out. Lauren Feldman and I go way back. We go way back before there were small business. Lauren Feldman and I were there. Well, Vic was probably there too. Um, but point is, uh, we go way back and I know we're going to have a great, great session on this session here. Uh, we gave away a brand new Dell computer uh, to Carmen, I believe it was. So definitely reach out. I'm serious about this. I'm giving these computers away. I have it so much. Thank you, Jason. Jason's telling me to stretch and sip. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, I need to sip a bit. We got how many more hours? About three and a half more hours to go, but I'm so excited. You all bring the excitement. Really, you all do. So our next panel is coming up in a second here. Bring up their slide here at the screen. There we go. So listen, we got friends of mine and others who I've worked with to know, and I'm just so excited to have them here. Kayla's amazing. They'll introduce themselves. Lauren Feldman, amazing. Introduce himself. Amazing podcast he's working on with Advantage TV. Got Vikram. You can if, check out what Vikram's do right now. Videosocials.net, amazing platform, video blogging. You'll hear about that. But more importantly, why I brought them here together is because they're insights on small business. This session is going to go from about 622, 649, give or take. We end right on time and try to keep the ship moving. So with that, Kayla, you ready to go? I can see you're okay, good. I can see it. Lauren, you ready to go? <laughs> good, good, good. Vic, you ready to go? Awesome, awesome. So here we go. Uh, let's see. Click and remove that. Bring up Kayla, Lauren, and Vic. Hey, everybody. Kayla, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm fantastically well. Thanks for being with us. Lauren, how are things in your world? I'm doing great. Great to see you, Ramon. Hope you're hanging in there. I don't I'm know how you do it. 
<laughs> and I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Vic, thanks for being with us, man. How are you? And how's your family? I'm good. I'm good. Hopefully the kids don't barge in, but I'm great. If they do, we roll with it. It's all good. You have small ones. I have adults in my house. So it'll be funny. You'll have the small one probably act like an adult and the adult one in my house act like a kid. So we'll yeah. see. I got dogs that bark, so... Oh, that's all good. We'll roll with it. But um, but with that as well, as we're as we're getting ready to warm up here, remember in the chat, ask questions to Lauren, ask questions to Vic, ask questions to Kayla, affirm, give comments, things you like, talk about it. We'll pull it up on the screen. There's no distraction. I don't get distracted. Well, I do, but we're it's all a big, big oasis. So with that, I'll start with you, Kayla. Why don't you give us a bit, uh, help us understand a bit who you are, what you do, uh, and uh, what we can... Um, what we can learn from what you're doing. Take take one or two minutes and unpack a little bit about yourself. Okay, okay. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. You're so freaking awesome. Like, I could not say no to this opportunity, so thank you. Um, you know, I'm Keela Taylor. I'm down in Atlanta, Georgia, doing my thing. I uh, own and operate multiple businesses. Universal Salon Suites being my latest and largest venture. We um, provide workspace to beauty entrepreneurs. I have a 10,020 square foot facility, so I'm super excited about that. Yeah, <laughs> and that's just one, one of my companies. I'm I also an insurance broker, okay. property and uh, casualty okay. license, and then Marquee Enterprises, which you see behind me is the, the big boy to all the companies. <laughs> you know, we uh, do some small business development and government procurement, all that good stuff. I love it. When we first met and I got your email, not about this, but we worked, you know, weeks ago, I was just like, wow, I wish I could just take a bottle of, of, of Kayla and, and do something with so Thanks for being here. Uh, Lauren Feldman, uh, give us a, a bit of uh, who you are, where you've been, where you're at, and feel free to take one or two minutes to unpack Advantage TV podcast or whatever's important to you. But I know when I hear your voice, man, it's amazing. I got it on my phone. I listen to it all the time. Uh, and I love your daily email and all that. So really, thank you for being here. But help us understand who you are and your years of experience in, in loving small business and entrepreneurship. Well, first you, first of all, Ramon, thank you. Thank you for doing what you do and thank you for having me here. Um, I'll try to be quick. I've been covering entrepreneurship and business ownership for about 20 years. I was at Inc. Magazine for five or six. I did the same thing at the New York Times. I did the same thing at Forbes uh, a couple years ago. I tried to take what I'd learned at those three great companies and uh, partner with someone to create what we thought would be the uh, the definitive community for business owners in America. Unfortunately, we ran into this COVID crisis and it's not working out exactly the way we thought it would. Uh, we started something called 21 Hats, 21hats.com. We, as you said, we had a daily newsletter. We have a podcast. We designed this beautiful platform that's a combination of content and community that it's possible no one's ever going to see because uh, <laughs> we're kind of stuck right now and we're pivoting. And um, the podcast is now called the businessadvantagetv.com podcast. Um, but the podcast has really been a lot of fun and I, I love to talk about it. We started last fall. It's me and a group of six business owner regulars. We have a weekly conversation. And initially we talked about you know, whatever was going on in their businesses. And then of course the crisis hit and things got interesting. And, you know, it became kind of, they were all fighting for survival. And every week we would check in to see how they were doing and learn from what they were trying, what was working, what wasn't working. And we had some really impassioned conversations, really difficult conversations. You know, one, one week somebody walked in and just said, you know, I just, I just came from the meeting where I laid off 40% of my payroll. Uh, you know, it, it, it was really intense. So it, I, I liked it. the idea with the podcast is that there are a lot of business owners who feel isolated, don't know, really know who to talk to about what they're experiencing. It's probably not appropriate to talk to employees, may not be appropriate to talk to your spouse or a significant other because they may want to know what's going on. Maybe they don't want to know what's going on. You may have friends who don't really understand what it's like to run a business. This is this podcast is for people like that. So just to show that you know everybody's going through it. Whatever your challenge is, whatever you're experiencing, there's someone else who's dealing with it. Yeah, Hope so true. I must say I love it. I love the variety of it, Lauren. As you know, I email you from time to time, and it's I won't go into the detail. You just check it out. The 21 Hats podcast it is awesome. You learn so much. The best sure. thing about you, Ramon, is that you tell me what you like, but you also tell me what you don't like, and that's yes. so helpful. 
<laughs> I do indeed. You're welcome. Uh, Vic, listen, man, thanks for being here. You and I go way back. Thanks for being here. Uh, listen, give us a, a open up a bit about what you've done, who you are, the two companies or more that you're running. And you know my favorite, sorry, videosocials.net. It is cool. Uh, so tell us about that. But also, more importantly, what you've learned. Take one or two minutes to introduce yourself. Tell us about the company, but also what you learned in building it and building it and what you're hearing. Because I've been on some of the calls and you have, you know, what, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 people weekly, several times a week where you're hearing their insights, you're hearing their pitches. So take some time and help us understand who you are and what it's all about. You know, I, I totally understand what Kayla's going through in terms of running multiple things, let alone uh, Lauren talking about not everything works out all the, all the way you expect it to. Um, and, and so there's a, a shift happening right now uh, with us and, and then even in the social media world. So phoneblogger.net, which a lot of people know uh, about, is our way of pulling content out of our type of clients. Our clients are your everyday lawyers, accountants, maybe even coaches, consultants who get their business through word of mouth referrals. And so they need to stay top of mind with anyone that can bring them business, current clients, past clients, other peers, and you know, content is king and you gotta stay top of mind and if you're out of sight, you're out of mind. And traditionally it used to be written blog posts and, and that would be pushed out by email and then posted of course on, on these social media channels like LinkedIn and, and, and Facebook and, and the other social media channels that make sense for our type of clients. And, uh, but a dramatic shift happened, I mean now, when you scroll Facebook, when you scroll LinkedIn, it's like every other post is video. And our clients are starting to fall behind. And, and literally these algorithms changed a, into prioritizing video. So we started telling our clients, hey, you gotta go out there, talk to these videographers, get the videos onto YouTube, and then we could run, it, uh, run with it as a content marketing firm. Um, and Ramon, like none of our clients did it. And with the time it takes, the budget it takes, you know, because you've got like a paparazzi crew following you. So you know what it is. Um, our, our clients are not like that. They're your well-seasoned, you know, very well-experienced professionals. And so we said, well, what if we could just invite them onto a conference call, like a Zoom call, uh, where we conduct a round table and each person can present a two to three minute nugget of knowledge. And that's turned into a video blogging community. As you mentioned, we host two or three of these video blogging clubs every day now. A part two of video socials is a social media marketing automation app. And that's the videos out there. So we have partnerships with YouTube and Facebook Live and LinkedIn. It's really cool. And then our members start liking and sharing each other's videos. So what we've really seen is that belonging that people need is kind of doubling uh, down on what Lauren mentioned. So really, this is a time for us all to come together. Either we can learn well, what's working and what's great and really celebrate each other's success but sometimes we need to circle the wagons, really give each other a virtual hug yeah. and really find that sense of belonging and higher purpose in helping one another and helping each other. And the more people we can help, the more we'll get help ourselves. And so at the basic level, we're just a platform for someone to record a video and post it on LinkedIn. It's pretty mundane. But in a greater way, it's a, a way of us coming together and video blogging together, fun and done. I love it. I love it. I know it's a powerful platform. I've been there myself and seen that as well. Um, I'm just going to, I think, a little bit of echo there. And uh, Lauren, I want to turn the first question to you, then I'll get to you, Kayla, and Vic. Lauren, I'm curious, when I listen to your podcast, one thing I find interesting is there seems to be, but correct me if I'm wrong, I don't mind putting my foot in my mouth, there seems to be no one right way to build a business. When I hear Dana, you know, my favorite, when I hear Jay, my other favorite, especially those two going back and forth, I'm kind of teasing it a bit here, and you're like in the middle there, I'm like, Maybe both are right or maybe both are wrong. Can you unpack what I'm trying to say is that to those listening, is there one right way or Jay, do you, I mean, Lauren, do you find that there's a few different ways that could be done? And then Kayla and Vic, I want you to add on to that. There are lots of different ways and you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, what our newest member is a guy named Paul Downs. He has a, a company, he makes high-end uh, custom conference tables. He sells them primarily to business owners. Right. Uh, right now, his phone has stopped ringing. <laughs> you may have heard a lot of people are working from home. Uh, commercial space is not what it used to be. He's facing uh, a collapse of his sales and he's getting the same advice from everybody. Everybody says, well, you know, you got to pivot. That's what everybody's doing. Pivot, pivot. Uh, for example, uh, you know, make desks for people who are working at home now and need a desk. And 
we we spent a lot of time talking about this. He's pretty much come to the conclusion that that would be a mistake. Mm. You know, everybody talks about pivoting. He's probably not going to do it. And his answer is, you know what? There are a lot of people who are already selling four hundred dollar desks for people to use at home. They do it really well. They've got the si supply chain set up. They've got the delivery, so you can have it tomorrow. They they're all set. He makes conference tables that can cost thirty or forty thousand dollars. He's not equipped to start turning out four hundred dollar desks and make a profit off it. So. He's probably not going to pivot. His answer is he's going to hunker down. He is going to, you know, if he has to lay people off, he's going to try to reduce salaries across the board. He hasn't been paying himself for months. He's trying to do whatever it takes to survive, to get to the other end of this, as, as you guys said, to, you know, we are going to get through this. Uh, there will be another side of it. He wants to make it there and he's going to do what it takes to, to get there. But that probably doesn't include pivoting. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, Lorna, then, Kayla, I want you to comment on this, is that uh, who knows who's right? It's easy. What, what I, not that I hate those people in a serious way, but, you know, the year later, you know, or afterwards, that was a dumb idea. See, I knew this company would fail. You didn't know, Jack. But, Kayla, what would you tell a company like Paul, you know, using it meta metaphorically, how do you know what to do, Kayla? That you, do you go forward? Do you hold back? Any guidance that you're telling your clients you work with of, of how to know what to do or what are you going through? I'm curious. What, what decisions have you made and what have you based them on? Maybe that's a good question to ask. Lauren, first of all, you're absolutely right. Like there is no right or wrong. Um, there's no, I've literally navigated through, through, throughout this whole pandemic just from experience. So every day, like I'm constantly implementing something new, whether it's a, a new COVID compliance, something that I've, you know, gained from SBDC or, you know, a new policy and procedural something or, you know, revising my lease for, for the salon suites tenants. Just go with the flow. Do the work and do it to you and your business. Yeah, no, that go with the flow. I like it. Uh, Vic, what, what, do you, what do you respond to Kayla? Are you seeing that with the people who you're working with at videosocials.net? Are you seeing something different, contrarian? What are you seeing how, what they're doing, how they're navigating? Because we've all been punched in the chest, punched in the gut. Uh, what are you seeing? You know, because so many of our members are, you know, about 99.9% .9 of our members are in the professional services, maybe even 100%, you know, they're able to adapt if they want to. You know, where they're able to be more virtual, they can use technologies like Zoom and other type of remote technologies. They're able to have um, situations where they can uh, telecommute and remote and have de uh, uh, portals for, for clients to upload things. I think they're having to realize that it's not necessarily just a local market that because everyone can be more mobile and virtual, that they can go into a more national market. Now, sometimes they're not allowed to if they're licensed or barred in specific states or uh, in specific areas of practice. That has to be careful uh, in terms of how they do that. But I think this concept of pivoting um, doesn't necessarily mean abandoning uh, what they're doing, but it can be extending or springboarding from what they're used to into something that is relatively new. Um, you know, for a lot of our members, it's looking at what they're doing in terms of content, not just as marketing, but can it be productized? Can it can they be like an infopreneur? And these are concepts and ideas that um, are nothing new for, for a lot of people as internet marketers, but for your everyday professional attorney and accountant, it is relatively new. And so we are one of these first forays for them to get into the world of content marketing and packaging themselves and productizing. So from that aspect, it, it, it can be exciting to brainstorm and help them see a greater vision than something that maybe they foresaw uh, just six months ago, but maybe you know necessity is the mother of invention and innovation. Yeah. No, you're right. And I'm curious about uh, the aspect of uh, video. Any tips on that? I mean, I know that you're you're a video guy, uh, you know. So just curious, share with us marketing in general, video. What can we learn from what you've done personally? You know, marketing. What you're seeing on videosocial.net. Give us a, one or two words of advice for video and/or marketing in general. Yeah, look, I'm not a video guy, right? Like, you know, I, I'm not a videographer. I don't know anything about cameras. Uh, I have to be here in a bedroom. Um, like, you know, and, and I, I defer a lot of the videography stuff to to videographers, people who actually are experts in the profession. And, you know, a lot of it is common sense stuff. I remember last year, literally last year this time, I, my co-founder, Mark Bullock, uh, he'd get annoyed because people would come onto video socials 
and they never knew what Zoom was, and they would never, they didn't know if they even had a webcam on their desktop computer, and, and they didn't. Like, if you don't know you have one, you don't have one. And so they would log in, they would come on, they would, it would just be a hot mess. Um, and then I started saying, hey, use your laptop because laptops 99% you know, have a webcam. And that even was like ridiculous. Now we're like all sick and tired of being on Zoom. Um, and the irony is like, hey, look, you know, we don't have to make it a video call. We could just do a phone call. You know, it's like there's nothing wrong with it. We used to do phone calls all the time, DC, before COVID. In terms of what are we doing with video, keep it short and simple. I think people are overthinking it. You know, with video socials, you know, we're giving each presenter two to three minutes, up to three minutes. We say two minutes is ideal. Instagram cuts you off after a minute. So that might be a rule of thumb. You know, a, a great pop song, a Beatles song is less than three minutes on the radio. That's an attention span uh, to think of. So keep it short and simple. And yes, we have complex topics. We can have a series, uh, uh, you know, part one, part two, part three, and keep it short and simple. Something like this summit or anything longer than five or 10 minutes is more appointment viewing. Now, you might have those people who are kind of distraction oriented, but if you're going to do a Facebook Live that's, let's say, longer than five minutes, do it on a regular basis. You know how that is, Ramon, right? Do it like Sundays, 8 p.m. Maybe not literally. Do you still do your Sunday, 8 p.m.? You, 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 sir, right? I'm going to go back and do it. Rick, on that point, what happened was I just – Facebook, it was so hard to bring people in. This morning I did a Facebook Live. You may have seen it. Man, I had two or three people random. I was just clicking and seeing if they would accept my join, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, do that on a regular basis. I mean, and it's really – and I think that's a good good comp point that you made, Ramon, that this isn't like for the rest of our lives. Like this concept like where we have to now, like Lauren is mentioning, you don't have to have a podcast for the rest of your life. Like, okay, you can start a podcast and stop it. You can have a video blog for a little bit and stop it. It's okay. Like there's nothing wrong. And it's not about failure or it not work. It's about phases and making sure that we're doing what feels right for us and making sure that it's not just about the trend or the hype, but also what feels authentic for us. Now, sometimes we have to kind of go a little outside of our comfort zone. Yes. And so for a lot of our members, it is like they know they got to do this video thing and they're like, you know, summing up their, their courage. But really, honestly, at the end of the day, it, I think a lot of a lot of people overthink it. And when they come onto video socials, they just realize that you're just hanging out with colleagues and friends and video blogging together, fun and done. Absolutely. No, <laughs> conversation to touch on uh, mindset a minute here. Uh, there's a little bit of echo. So if anybody has a like an external speaker, maybe turn yours down if anybody does. But uh, mindset here, I want to touch on that a bit. And I'll turn to you first, Lauren. Um, just curious, um, over your years of covering small business, any tips, guidance you can give us on resiliency? And I ask that because I find that when times are tough, and again, we have our personal times, a death in the family, a divorce, a child gets sick, it, but you know, but not all the time do we have a global or national thing. Now we're having that moment. Have you seen anything, uh, Lauren, what separates entrepreneurs who succeed versus those who don't? Uh, any tips, guidance, insights, and especially you're dealing with a panel of four different people, you know, four different characters. What are you seeing? And then, Kayla, I'd love for you to answer that. And then, Vic, Lauren? You know, it's it's a really interesting question. I, one of the things I've always puzzled over with entrepreneurs is that to to start a business and have any success at all, you have to kind of be willing to ignore the advice you get from everybody else because mm. it's easy to find people who are going to say to you, "That's not going to work." <laughs> yeah. what, what are you? Somebody's already doing that, or you know, there are a million reasons not to start a business, and yet the people who do it keep going anyway. Um, and they, they keep surmounting hurdles. Yes. You know, if you get anywhere, you have to, you have to fight, you have to fight, you have to keep going and you, you learn to trust yourself. You learn to trust your own judgment, but then you get to a certain point where, you know, maybe you've reached the limits of your experience and you've got to start listening to other people and you, you need to take in that advice. So this, this is one of those one of those moments, I mm. think, where it, it, it's hard. You have to balance your inner strength, you know, your certainty that you're going to figure out a way to get through with the advice you're hearing from other people. And as we've been saying all along here, you know, it's, there's, one size does not fit all. There's no right answer for everybody. There are some people it, it, who should stop. You know, it, it, the answer isn't keep going no matter what. There, there are times when, you know, especially a moment like this, if you run a restaurant, I mean, what could be, 
what could be harder than running a restaurant right now? The, the, the right answer might be to, you know, preserve whatever powder you have left <laughs> and fight another day. Yes. Um, the answer is not always to keep going. So, you know, I think that where do you find if if you don't have resilience, you, you're not in this business. You're not doing this. Sometimes the answer is when you, the question you need to answer is when do you stop? And I think yeah. that's worth thinking about. No, that's true as well. And I appreciate that for sure. Kayla, what are you seeing uh, regarding that? And I think it's so important is that, you know, as Dana said, uh, who would have thought selling books online? And one more thing I'll add about uh, the naysayers is that I think part of its execution as well. You can have two different people, me and Kayla. We both start a, you know, I don't know, a pen company. Everybody tells us it's a bad idea. It probably is a bad idea. But we start a pen company <laughs> and Kayla rocks it. It becomes the next $3 million, $5 million company in me. It fizzles out, so part of the execution. But Kayla, what do you think about mindset? How do you how do you have good mindset? How do you strengthen yourself and stay positive? What tricks do you do? Not tricks, but tactics. Well, I love the fact that they earlier mentioned infopreneurship. Um, that was one of the components that I, you know, tapped into. That was one of my pivotal, you know, components that I added to my business. So I started writing a small business curriculum. And part of the preface, it's mental resilience, you know? So for me, like just mental resilience, I mean, it, it's, it starts in the gut and, you know, our gut is our core, you know, and our core is our values. So stick to your core values. As long as you are sticking to your non-negotiables, your core values, you're going to be okay. Yeah, that is Plus, true. I like it. I believe that for sure. We got about eight minutes to go, give or take, maybe seven minutes. And I've just been, the time goes by so fast. A great conversation. Vic, um, I'll turn to you as well. Uh, what have you personally learned during this time? Can you share about anything? I don't want to get too personal. I, want to, I don't want us all to start crying or anything like that. But what have you personally learned during this time, Vic? You know, when March hit, what did you think? What, what were you going through? And then today, what can we learn from your experience on that? Well, it, it was tough. Um, Tremendously, you know, I'm here in New York City and uh, live up uh, in Harlem, and my wife is an ER physician, mm -hmm. and so um, it, it hits us uh, quite quite hard. Uh, I ran up to her parents' home, in fact, um, and, and so I, I want to give uh, thanks and appreciation to my wife uh, and her peers, as well as my in-laws for tolerating me for six weeks, and let alone my children and the dog. Um, and uh, really, what we learned tremendously, and we grew tremendously during that time as everyone ran to video. Um, so that was a very awkward, bittersweet uh, increase. And it was really kind of circling the wagons, which we still do, to really um, love on our raving fans, really. Our raving fans, our members, uh, just about all of our members are raving fans. And you know, as they tell their colleagues, their friends, uh, hey, check this thing out. Um, that's been tremendous for us. And I, I think that's a great lesson for all of us uh, where it, it, it's what if every one of our clients can bring us one more client and two becomes four becomes eight becomes 16, 32, 64, 128. And then I, I forget because, or 264. I just go, I know, I know Ram is basically computer Ram. So I'll start that. I don't know. Like um, it doubling a penny every day, all that kind of stuff. And, and, and for, for us, for me, it's very much of like, what can we do to really bring value to our members because they're going to be our greatest evangelists, our raving fans, and, and, and really help us grow this thing. And I think that could be said for almost every business in one way or another. Uh, you know, there's a, a famous quote that um, I was trying to look up that while Kella and Lauren were speaking, I couldn't find who to attribute it, where don't take criticism from anyone you wouldn't turn to for advice. And I find that really, really relevant and, and really um, – resonant with me. Yes. I don't know why when Ramon, you, you give me any criticism, it, it hurts because uh, I, I would turn to you for advice. <laughs> and I do. So, so from that aspect, uh, I think that uh, that's how, and, and then we end every one of our video socials where we ask a member something that they enjoyed about today's session or enjoy about video socials. And I can't be on all the clubs because we have uh, quite a few of them at this point. Uh, but I do watch all of the enjoys, as we call them internally, all the times that members share their closing statements and share their thoughts. Uh, that's really what really shapes my mindset. But I want to make sure our members are gaining value and doing business with one another. And, you know, that, that keeps me going because, you know, it, we all need that uplifting time. 
And um, I hope we can be there for each other to uplift each other as rising ships. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, um, uh, 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 Lauren, what, what about yourself, Lauren? Do you remember, uh, not necessarily you, you personally you can talk about, but more so who you represent, the small businesses. You have an amazing newsletter. You watch the market and the economy and the marketplace of small business. When you think about March and think of today, any theme lessons you're seeing, uh, especially thinking of back then to now, anything that we can learn from that, uh, Lauren, that you've, you know, I, I, if I'm wrong, push back, but I kind of see Lauren as like a guy in a tree watching the traffic and watching it, the world of small business that is. Uh, what, what can we learn uh, from that? You know, I think there were a lot of people back in March that wanted to believe that this was a, a two or three week thing that we were going into. And um, I think the lesson there is, you know, if we, we've got to learn it by now. We, you got to take this thing seriously. It is, it's, it's, it's a crisis. Um, th there was a lot of talk for a long time about, you know, what, what do we, what, what do we focus on, the economy or the health crisis? And, you know, I think we've learned you, you, you can't solve the economy if you don't solve the health crisis. And you have to think about what that means for your particular business. I think, you know, just like we were, I was saying before about a restaurant right now. It, it just might not be the time. You have to think about all those external factors and they're things that are not in your control. Yeah, no, that's powerful, Lauren. Thank you very much. And I'm curious, Killer, from you, for those who are, uh, like I think you are, who like to do a lot of different things, any advice to us? You know, you could say, you know what? I want to do one business and just grow it and, and do it that way. But clearly you enjoy the hustle of a few different things you're doing. Why is that? And what's your advice to those like you with how to juggle, you know, these are different things, different marketing, different customers. How do you do that and, and why? Help guide us in that. What can we learn? Okay, so I, I, I'm i being honest. I did not always have it together. Sure. But I'm one of those people, I can't just do one thing. So, yes. Um, <laughs> you know, I fortunately, I am able to, you know, diversify, um, considering that I do have multiple, you know, businesses. Like I said earlier, I've added other components to my business. Um, just to name a few, like I'm bad with time management, so I um, implemented a virtual assistant component. Yes. To the company, so that has helped the business tremendously. Um, did I answer the question? Yeah, you did. You did. Was, yeah, you did. You got it. You got it. Because I think the thing is that many of us uh, are doing one thing. Some people are doing several things. Vic is running two businesses. So I was just curious, you know, to get into the mind, some people are like, wow, how do people like a Vic or like a Kayla do so many things? In the case of Lauren's uh, people he works with, Paul has been very focused on, you know, woodworking, woodworking, woodworking. Dana's getting yeah. into maybe one or two different things. So, no, you did answer the question. Uh, Vic, just what about yourself? And then, Lauren, I'll turn it to you to close us out. Um, running two businesses. Maybe you probably, well, I, I know, Vic, you have at least 20 more businesses in your head at least. Um, tell us about that journey. What can we learn what drives you to do that and what others who kind of are doing a few different things, how they can balance it, management. I, mean, I know you have a partner, which helps a lot uh, to, to help us understand that. Yeah. Uh, first, I, I don't want anyone to like, maybe I misset it and I don't want anyone to misunderstand. I think the quote is don't take criticism from anyone that you wouldn't take advice from. Meaning that if you wouldn't take advice from that guy, eh, what, what do you care what he says? Um, so, but back to your question, I cheat, you know, Phone blogger and video socials, they're basically the same business. As sure, I get it. You know, video socials is just kind of for us internally. It's like phone blogger for 2020. You know, so the fact that it happens to be video makes sense because phone blogger was written articles when that was in vogue and that was what the priority of the algorithms. And, you know, five years from now when the algorithms change that affect word of mouth marketing, it'll be something else, maybe some virtual reality, AI, all the acronyms like that. Um, and so really going back to your question, the other kind of cheat or hack is, yeah, I have, I've got a great business partner. Uh, he's like my business wife, I guess, or maybe I'm, I'm the business wife. I don't know. But uh, he's a tremendous, <laughs> tremendous person. Um, he's a little bit older than I am, tremendously more wise than I am, uh, and, and really centers me that uh, I have tons of crazy Ramona, as you say, 20 business ideas a day. So he's my filter before it gets to our staff. Sometimes it goes directly to our staff, and I apologize to my staff for that because yeah. of like the midnight rants. I'm like, oh, well, we should do this idea, and it's like, you know, and, and they've learned at least the, the the older staff tend to realize don't don't just run with every stupid idea Vic has, um, and, and the newer people unfortunately get some brunt of it too. Right. Um, and so my staff is wonderful, and that's tremendous. And talking about VAs, we have contractors as well. Like really, this team. I, I don't know how solopreneurs who are really solo 
do it and do it all and do it all well. I, I don't I don't know. Maybe maybe they do. I mean, I'm not saying that they don't. I just know that for me to of leverage and sanity, I like having a partner. I like having a team. I like knowing that there are going to be people that will also push back on me. I don't want yes people around me. Uh, it will go anywhere. Um, you know, it, I never want to be the smartest person in the room, and 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 it's hardly ever a problem. For me. Uh, I'm able to rely on the expertise of others and, and and be able to really bring in good people. Character, I think, over competency. Of course, they have to be competent, but the mm-hmm. character, I think now more than ever speaks to leadership and speaks to getting the work done properly. So from that aspect, I'm, I'm proud uh, that I'm able to work with really a wonderful, wonderful team of people that are able to serve our clients and then our clients are wonderful. So it's, it's really kind of cool to, for me, the more I can surround myself with the people that I work with, the happier I get. Talk about mindset. So thank you yeah, for having me. Love it. Listen, Kayla Taylor, uh, Universal Salon Suites and more. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Lauren Feldman, host of 21 Hats and more. Thank you for your time, my friend. Vic Rajan, videosocials.net. You should definitely check out the video blogging club he has and his partner. So thank the three of you for being here. I'm so grateful for your time. And I know time is valuable. You could be anywhere else. Vic could have said, no, Ramon, I'm going to do this. Lauren could have said, no, Ramon, Kayla said, no. But you said, yes. And I really mean that. Thank you for sharing your insight and knowledge with us uh, to the uh, people who are on here live, to the people who will be watching it afterwards. We had over a thousand people sign up. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, joining us tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today has been an awesome, awesome day. Today has been an awesome, awesome day. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Did you learn? If you've learned and you enjoyed it, shout out and let me know. We have Michaela Ulmer up next. She is on deck. I see her in the quote unquote green room. Michaela, just give me a wave. I'm going to bring you up in a second if you're ready. Good. You can hear me. Good, 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 good. So let me hear some shout outs. Did you enjoy it? Good, good. I see some thanks. Well, definitely. Yes, yes, yes. Good, good, good. Thank you all very much. And thank you, uh, Jim. Thanks for being here, man. I really appreciate it. From uh, goatmilkstuff.com. So uh, let's do that. I'm going to bring up this slide here. Michaela Ulmer is uh, speaking on behalf of Dell Technologies, her amazing, amazing company she's going to talk about. And uh, Michaela, I'm going to bring you live right now. Don't forget, chat, 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 meet other people, talk, give your link. Thanks uh, to the Rouse household for being here. So with that, Michaela is going to be brought to the screen. Hey, Michaela, how are you? I'm doing well. How's it going? You know, it's, I'm doing great. Before I uh, um, bring you up, I just want to get something to drink. So give me a second, okay? Oh, okay. Should I grab mine too? Uh, you like that, right? <laughs> oh. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I am thirsty indeed. Been talking for three hours and four minutes. Wow. So, but Michaela, thanks for being here. How's your day been? What's going on in your world? You doing okay? Yes, the t- today's been good. There was a couple book launch, book launch uh, uh-huh. interviews, things like that. I actually, one thing that was interesting was being interviewed by Tiger Beat, which my parents were like, oh, that was like the hype. That's where I got all my news about teen celebrities and everything. But they're still around. I did a, an interview with them today and a couple other things about the book. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, I'm glad to have you here, and we're going to touch on the book. We're going to talk about Dwen. Uh, but first, Michaela, for those who don't know, can you give us a little intro into who you are? I know you're obviously a young lady. You have a company, and you have an amazing family that powers you and helps you do so much. Just unpack a bit for us okay. who you are. Clearly, you have a lemonade company. That's obvious. Uh, but share with us a little bit your story and how that began. And I'm sure you said this a million times today, 10 million times this year. But thank <laughs> you for taking the time and sharing that with us. Thank you. And thank you for inviting me. So my name is Michaela Ulmer. I'm 15 years old and from Austin, Texas. And so I'm a student, a B ambassador, the founder and CEO of Me and the Bees Lemonade and an author. And so my story about all of this started when I was four and a half years old and I got sung by two bees one week. And I also got a cookbook for my great granny, Helen. And so just it it was like this one summer that after I signed up in a business fair, And these two things happened. I was terrified of the bees. My parents encouraged me to do a little bit of research. And doing that research, I learned that bees are really important. And without them, we can't have a lot of the food that we eat every day. And so I was like, okay, let me, whatever I do for this business fair that I signed up for, I want to help save the bees. And so I ended up taking my great granny Helen's recipe 
and um, sweetening it with honey, which I just learned that bees made or honeybees made. And I decided this is going to be what I'm going to sell for the fair. And it did really well. I dressed up in a bee suit. I donated a portion of what I made to organizations in Austin that were helping the bees. Nice. And I got a lot of good feedback and decided to just keep on doing it. So it was me selling out of my stand in front of my house or in front of local restaurants and stores just a couple times a year, learning about the bees and teaching about them as well. I love it. Michaela, what's the uh, what's the importance of family to you? I know family is a big part of what you do, and I want to acknowledge them. Why are they important to you? How are they important to you, uh, family? Especially being in school, you know, yes. and all the things you're doing. Uh, let's give them some acknowledgement as well. Um, I mean, my family has been so critical in, one, supporting me. So not only when I got stung and said I want to start the Lemonade Stand in the first place, but also as I grew. So me saying I want to get my product into bottles when a local pizza store said hey if you can find a way to bottle your product we'd like to carry it in our store mm -hmm. so of course i'm starting to ask my parents and my family how can i do this none of them had beverage experience in like the beverage industry my mom was marketing dad was finance and ops but they both said okay how are we going to do this and mm -hmm. kind of, we just walked through the steps together of asking other entrepreneurs and um even store managers what makes a good bottle of product but since then, it's been like my dad helping me with Shark Tank, my mom teaching me that, like, don't be nervous when you're doing workshops about the bees, even if kids are older than you, like everyone has something to teach and everyone has something to learn. And now as I'm going back into school and um, like the business still needs to be run, I have an amazing family that helps me run that and a team or a hive. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. And, and again, uh, Michaela, when you talk about Shark Tank, you have to say that slowly. You can't gloss over it. I used to work at the UN and I would say, oh, I work at the UN and move on. And my sister was like, my brother works at the UN. You have to say that slowly. You got to just. You know, I work I, I've been on Shark Tank. I landed <laughs> with Dame and John. There we go. Um, so a few things I want to touch on, and I want to talk about uh, Gwen. I know it's a very important part of what you do, uh, the Dell Women's Entrepreneur Network. I want to touch on that and encourage people to check out Dwen as well, and also touch on your book. And Dell, before we do that, a little bit about scale, Michaela. When you think about uh, your company uh, from being a very, very small business, maybe when you first started, to what it is today, I ordered some things, my team, and I got a box in the mail of these teas. Uh, any tips, uh, recollection from your journey for those who are just starting out, Michaela, just starting out, they want to grow as well. Maybe they're not going to be on Shark Tank. They're not going to have a book. But what mm -hmm. are two or three things that you've done and it can help people know, you know what, if you want to make whatever you're making and want to grow it, what have you done? What are some lessons learned or mistakes made even? Help us understand that. Well, first, I'd like to say there were some really good pieces of advice from the previous speaker. So thank you for that. And then uh, some things that I've learned, one is like if you want to start a business, I think the most successful ones are businesses that fix problems or like solve needs. So even if you don't have a business idea yet, try to see and try different things, see life from other people's perspectives to see what problems they have and whether you can create a product or service to help solve that. Um, the next thing I learned, and if there's any like young people who are watching this, I would say take advantage of us being born into technology, like mm. whether it's marketing or graphic design, um, even like free invoice templates and things like that. We really know how to work our way around those and how to find them. So I take advantage of that too. And start a company with a cause or a mission because social entrepreneurship, I think is going to be the future. There's my generation is looking at whether there are whether the products that they're about to get does good in the world, they're looking at labels, they're looking on on websites and comparing it. So I would say if you're starting a company, make sure to include some sort of social aspect, not only because of the increase in conscious consumerism, but also because it's something really big that uh, like can motivate you and when you face adver adversities or challenges. Yeah, and I think what you said, two things I want to highlight. One is uh, a, a to have a cause to it and start a company that problems that solves a problem. It sounds obvious, maybe, Michaela, but I know I'm sure you have come across. I know of many people, or can imagine them, they start something because of their own selfish interest. It's not bad, but it's like, I just want to do it. That's not good enough. If the market doesn't want what you're offering, if the market wasn't isn't going to buy it, or if you don't have the the tenacity to educate them that they need it, I don't see how the company can go because people are going to buy. I need nourishment or a beverage. I need mm -hmm. to start a game mm -hmm. company, but there have to be some reason, some problem that they're having. 
for you to have a business. Is that about right? Yes, I agree totally. Yeah. And then the second thing, Michaela, is the aspect of cause. Why do you think that's so important? Why can't I start, you know, I don't know, a pen company that just sells pens? Why do you think it's important to start a pen company that maybe say, that that donates money or helps others, or in your case, bees? Why is that important for you? And why do you think people care about it? Um, so at least in my experience with me and the bees, I found that there's a lot more people who are eager to join the mission, who are eager to believe, like who believe in your product and who will support your company. Mm -hmm. So it's just a lot easier to gain a lot. It's a lot easier to gain um, awareness about the yeah, brand. Yeah. And to get people and attached to you. Interest. Excuse me? And to get people attached to you, I was saying, I was just helping you out there. I was saying to get people, if, if, if you're just selling something, lemonade, pens, whatever it is, that's one half. But I guess it's a lot easier. Also, people say, well, I want to be a part of that or I want to feel good. I want to join your mission, probably. Yeah. And and also it's something that you have in common. It's like, hey, I realize this is a problem too. I'm glad that that's something we 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 have in common and I'm gonna help you solve that too. It's yeah. like you get you get a great product, but you also realize and you know that you're doing something good. Yeah, no, that's for sure as well. Listen, Dell has been a great partner uh, for me, Michaela. In fact, we're giving away three Dell XPS computers to people. So uh, we gave one away already to somebody. Uh, so we're giving away a few more. Uh, oh, Michaela, what's the partnership with Dell been like to you? Many people think of Dell as just, quote unquote, they sell computers. But I know and you know Dell does so much more. Talk about that relationship, why it's so important that you've partnered with Dell uh, uh, in your business and Dell has partnered with you. It's a two-way relationship. Talk about why that's important to you uh, to partner with Dell. I mean, so one thing that's interesting is that my company started in Austin. Dell also started in Austin. That's true. And that's just something we have in common in the very beginning. But since growing, Dell has helped with distribution. So Dell is huge in Austin. My lemonade is actually sold in their cafeterias. Nice. And along with 15 other stores, but just being able to go and demo in Dell cafeterias mm -hmm. and meet and just see how excited they are about the project is pretty cool. The second thing is resources. So this was amazing. But when we first moved into our office, when we first moved into our office, it was kind of plain, a little drab. I have a chapter about like how, <laughs> how are we going to make this into a fun me and the bees themed office? But Dell actually volunteered secretly with my parents to yeah like come and supply the office with technology. And so they surprised me when I came from school wow. on lunch with like a printer and um, desktops and all in one computers. Like a makeover. The... <laughs> yes, exactly. And then also uh, awareness because Dell has always been quick to share my story and my mission. That is nice. That is awesome. And I know for sure I can say that Dell definitely is a company that cares, that promotes and supports entrepreneurship. And Michaela, your, your book, uh, Be Fearless, is out. I think it came out yesterday, I want to say, or today? Uh, the 18th. So you're really close. It was, uh, two, yeah. It's two, still seven. launching. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. What's in, why'd you write the book? What's inside of it when we buy it? And I encourage everyone to go to Amazon uh, or wherever you want them to go, Michaela. Be be fearless uh, by Michaela. Yeah. Over. What's inside of it? Unpack a little bit of that for us. What will we find when we go there? Okay, so I have it right here. Awesome. It's, oh, you have it on the screen. Perfect. So my book is called Be Fearless, Dream Like a Kid. Okay. And it's part memoir of, of starting and growing my company and lessons that I've learned along the way. And then also part business guide, especially for young adults or middle schoolers who are interested in entrepreneurship. And so one thing that I love is that with each chapter, like coming up with my business idea or wanting to upgrade from a handheld lemon squeezer into an electric one, <laughs> or pitching on Shark Tank, or like going into my first store, I talk through each activity that teaches kids how to do that as well. So here's an activity called FITS to help you come up with a business idea based on your interests or hobbies. Mm -hmm. Here's something, here's a, like the five steps to creating a budget, um, estimate your income and list your expenses and things like that. So I realized there's not, there's not a lot of books that are for youth or that youth can read about entrepreneurship that's also written by a teen entrepreneur. Right. And so that's kind of the need that this book solves. And also my story and different anecdotes from growing my company. I love it. That is powerful. I love it. I love it. So listen, everybody, is, is Amazon Thank the best you. place to go? Michaela, is there another uh, place that you recommend people go? Is that is Amazon good? So, so I, it's available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, but also at local bookstores. So if you want, I really recommend like supporting local bookstop, 
bookshops or bookstores and you can go to IndieBound and type in your zip code and it'll type in which uh, bookstores near you have the book. And also it's as an audiobook. So I actually went to the studio and recorded this book as an audiobook and it's nice. available on Audible and Libro for those who like listen to audiobooks while doing dishes or driving and things like that. My wife is an audio person for sure. She listens to the Bible and other things on audio as well. Um, mm -hmm. Joanne, I know is important, Michaela. You and I, I don't think we first met. We probably we met, I think, at Austin at, a, at a South by Southwest, I think. But we were together oh. at, at the Dell Women Entrepreneur Network, Dwen. And I encourage people to check it out, Dell Women Entrepreneur Network uh, event. Uh, Dwen is a uh, amazing community of uh, small business owners who are female founders. Uh, you're a female yeah. founder. Kayla. Tell us, unpack that a bit, Dwayne, why it's important, uh, why it's important to you, what people can find in that community. I've been there at resource and events and discussion boards and all kinds of things. But tell us about that a bit, uh, why it's important. Sure. So I've been going to Dwayne since 2016. I was first invited to their South Africa location nice. to attend Dwayne, speak at uh, Girls Track, which is a section for girls, and also just network with other people female entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs or just really amazing and inspiring people. Mm -hmm. And so it was an amazing experience because I've met connections who I still am in touch with today, even as I'm like talking about this book and growing the company. And then I learned some pretty cool lessons. Like I learned tips about pitching and public speaking that I didn't know about. I learned about uh, branding that I hadn't seen or knew before. So I think that's cool. And so it's a way, it's a whole community and network of like-minded female entrepreneurs to talk about growing their business and collaborations and projects. And then also the impact of technology in that. I love it. And Michaela, you have a growing fan base in the Smart Hustle community. Just so you know, people love Michaela and love uh, her story as well. Uh, any you. advice, Michaela, talking to young people who are young, they, they see Shark Tank, they read Forbes and Fortune, MSNBC and CNBC, and all these things are hearing your story, Michaela. Any advice to them? Things that maybe you've learned along the way. Uh, you're, you're still young, but you started your business when you were younger. So what's advice that you would say, you know what? If I could go back, maybe I'd do it different. Or maybe you wouldn't. But what's your advice to young people who have dreams? They haven't yet started, but they want to start their own business and they're a bit young. What are some things they should note? Um, well, I, I think I answered a little bit of like some sure. lessons that I learned or encouraged. But I would say if you have big dreams, if you want to become a change maker, then I wouldn't at any cost like put it off because mm -hmm. you're young. I think that's ridiculous. <laughs> like, like don't. Don't say, oh, I, I'm too young because you can still learn. You can still learn no matter how young you are. I think curiosity is something that comes naturally to us and especially to um, kids. So don't wait it to make a difference just because you're young. And then I'd also like to kind of flip that question, uh, Mr. Roman, and, and I mean, say what advice I would have to adults who are who have dreams and who want to ask. I was going to ask that next. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> And so for that, I, I would say dream like a kid. I, I think mm -hmm. that if we all like dream like a kid when it comes to business, and by that I mean thinking of like the obstacle, the opportunities and the really big goals and dreams that you have instead of just the obstacles that will get in the way, I think mm -hmm. a lot more people will put their dreams into action. And I think the world would be in a much better place. So kind of embracing that kid mentality when it comes to starting and growing your company. Yeah, no, I think that's so important. I think so many times adults, and again, adults, there's pros and cons to all this, but I think you're right. So many adults, I think we've lost the spark maybe, lost the vision, lost the innocence. I'm not sure what it is, you know, where things hold us back, right? Like, no, mm -hmm. I can't do it. I'm 30, I'm too old. I'm 40, I'm too old. And I think as a kid, uh, the, the benefit of that, it, there's the side that's, that's the immaturity part of it, of course, but the benefit of that is you don't know what you don't know. Nobody told you you couldn't go to the moon. Nobody told Michaela she couldn't make a lemonade company. So yeah. I think my point is, I think that's powerful. And I know going back to Dwen, I think that's one thing that's so important. Again, Dell Women Entrepreneur Network, people should definitely have a look at Dell Dwen, Dwen, is that there's a community of people who can inspire you. I know when I was there in Singapore, and I can't wait till we all meet again in person at some point, uh, Michaela. Yeah. But there it was inspiring. It was amazing to be your one room with rock stars. I've done this. I've done that. Created this. How can I help you? How can we work together? So that was my biggest thing of um, of uh, community. And I think that that's yes. the adults. That's, Please. that's a really good point is how eager everyone is to 
I don't know, teach what they know. Even if it's little nuggets of knowledge, they're always so eager to teach what they know, which I think is amazing. Yeah, that's for true. And I think that um, teaching is important as well. I'm curious, Michaela, um, the advice you've been given over the years, any, any pro, not pros or cons, but any thoughts like when you're thinking as you're growing, as you're building your business, I'm sure everybody wants to give you advice. Everyone, everybody wants to speak to you. Um, besides your parents, of course, any filter that you're learning that, you know what, this is advice that maybe I shouldn't receive, or this is advice that I should listen to, or, you know, this person, I think I want to listen to them and, and get a bit more. This person, though, maybe maybe I want to keep my distance a bit. Have you come across that or, or have gone through that or had to go through that journey? Um, not really. I think Good. I... I, for me, a lot of the times, even if people tell me lessons, I'm like, okay, I'm going to put that, I'm going to remember it. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I have to learn those lessons on my own. <laughs> so I'm like, thank you. And I'm going to try to implement that. Sometimes it doesn't work right away until I either learn it the hard way or have to learn it on my own. But I really, I do listen. I listen to advice because I think there, there does need to be a balance of people who like, you'd be really eager to listen to and then people who are like, eh, I don't know if I should listen to advice from them. But I don't know. I listen to it and then it depends on, I, I kind of just figure out what I want to actually put into action. Yeah, no, that's that's important. But I think listening, you're right. I think there's a lot of different. I know for me, Michaela, um, I look at the longevity and their track record because there's a lot of people who want to say this, say that. So but I think it's all good. And I think your attitude is right. I heard it from somebody. They said, let me assume that I could be wrong. Not that I am. But let me take that attitude that if somebody's telling me something like somebody says, Ramon, there's ketchup on your shirt. Ooh, there's a stain on my shirt. Well, I don't know how I got this. Maybe I got it from the box. But somebody says, hey, Ramon, there's ketchup on your shirt. Instead of me being arrogant and saying no. Let me pause. Huh, maybe they're right. And then you look down and realize mm -hmm. there's oh, ketchup you. instead of rejecting it immediately. So I think that's the biggest thing I'm learning. Any questions from Michaela? We're going to wrap up in about a minute or two or three. But any questions you have from Michaela, please let us know. And again, two things I want you to uh, keep in mind. One, Michaela's book is out. And I definitely suggest you check that out for sure. Uh, Michaela, hold that book up again for us, please, if you have it nearby. Good. Be fearless. Check out I want to show. I want to show a business lesson. Okay. Okay. So... Okay, so I have these little business lessons or business ideas throughout the book, and they're kind of like post-it notes just to, to let you know, hey, this is an important part of the book. But like this one says, you have to believe in your product, even though it might change, evolve, and improve over time. So that one's like, if you really want to sell a product, you have to believe in that product too. And there's just other parts where, where if I learned that in the book or along my story, I'm like, hey, flag this, here's a little business idea postcard and it's kind of like if you're flipping through the book or as you're growing your company and you need some advice, you know where to look for it. I think that is smart advice. And I like how you did that. I think people like people like a, a tweetable thing, Majiggy. So I think in your book is that. Mm -hmm. So definitely check out Michaela's book. And remember, number two, definitely check out Dell Technologies. You're looking for solutions for your business. My whole office, Michaela, is full of Dell stuff. Notebooks, the monitor, the works. So definitely that's point two. And I think third, really, the biggest gift we can give to people, Michaela, is to win. I think female founders, if you're a male and you want to be a champion, definitely check out the Dell Women's Entrepreneur Network. I'm a champion. Michaela's a member. And I think that's a place, I know that's a place where you'll find people who are of a like-minded attitude and spirit who can help, who you can help, which I think is important, Michaela, and who can help you. So I think both are important. Sometimes we only look for what can I get from it, but I also find, Michaela, when you have an attitude of how can I give, you benefit as well. Yeah. yeah. Michaela, and any final words? Thank you. Sorry, exactly. go ahead. No, I was going to say, any final words you wanted? There's a delay, so I know it's hard. It's not like you're talking in person. There's a slight delay. And I can't know. Hear uh, any final words um, you want to leave us with, Michaela? I've been so honored to have you here. Your lemonade is good. Your book is out. You. I'm so glad that Dell brought you here and Dwen. But any one or two words you want to leave us with uh, before we uh, move on with our amazing uh, discussion here at the Survive and Thrive Summit? Um, well, first, I'd like to say thank you for all the comments. They're really nice, and I love looking at them, and also the ones that are popping up. But thank you so much. And then my someone said, can you repeat that? It was a long name. Was that the business? The business is Me and the Bees, yep. and it's available at like Whole Foods and HEB and Natural Grocers. And then the event is Dwen Dell Woman Entrepreneur Network. That's right. And somebody's asking Michaela, they're like, when does her speaking tour start? So mm. <laughs> they're giving me kudos as well. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure. I think right now it's focusing on the virtual book signing events yeah. and things like that because of COVID. But I am just 
thinking of what workshops and events I'm going to do after the pandemic subsides and after there's no risk of that. I love it. Listen, Michaela, thank you for your time today. So grateful you're here. All the best to the Dell family. Thank you and give my greetings to your family. So, so glad you're here. And yes, we will post, Annette, about Dell's program. Michaela, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching and thank you for asking. Indeed. Hey, everybody. So this is Ramon Ray, and we've seen people ask about, please post to the website about the Dell program. We will do that. We'll put it probably in the comments there, and I'll re-put them there. But that is Dwen and here to go. Thank you, Susan, for that. Dwen.com. I think, hope that's the right link. Dwen.com. Thank you, Susan, for putting that there. Dell Women Entrepreneur Network. And definitely check out Dell Technologies for all of your small business needs. I rely on Dell. You should as well. I'm a member of Dwen. You should be too. So with that, we're going to move on for the evening. I think our next thing. Our next session starts at 7.30. That's with Fergus Connolly. Then we have Rob Price, the CEO of School of Rock, 8.10. We have Helena, Jeanette, Adrian uh, talking about serving your customers, growing your community. 8.40, we close out with Darnielle Jervy Harmon, who's a business coach, and she's going to just rock your world. And then at 9, we come to an end. So we get about two and a half more hours together. I had a great time being here as well. We're going to start our next session in about, what did I just say? Um, 7.30, so we got about uh, 15, uh, no, we got about, yeah, uh, 13 minutes, give or take, and we have another giveaway, by the way, another giveaway, and as Margo says for sure, where does time fly for sure, so I have another winner of another Dell notebook computer that I'm going to give away right now, Um, so in a few seconds, I will do that as well, so have you had a good time? Somebody asked how to submit an idea to Dell, you are the uh, welcome to submit that to me and I will facilitate that to the right person or you can just Google them or find the right person at Dell, but you can just uh, submit that to me depending on what it is and I will connect you to that right person. So thanks for asking the question, but let's have a bit of networking for about five minutes. I'm curious, can you shout out again who you are, what you do? Feel free to put your website address. And remember, less important than the name. Oh yeah, one hour and 45 minutes. Thank you so much. There we go. Yes. Oh, I feel better already. <laughs> Thanks for the person who told me that. So, Dwen Empower Hour Totally Rock. Good. Thank you, Stacy, for putting that up as well. So, let's have some networking. Put in the in the chat here uh, the name of your business, the website, but more importantly, more importantly, what problem you solve. What problem you solve for small or big businesses? Maybe you're a consumer product. Maybe you're a business B2B product. I don't know. But put that in the chat and let's get some networking going for a few seconds here before we bring on Fergus Connolly, who's a high performance coach who knows what it takes to get to the next level. So let's get some chat going. I'm Ramon Ray of Smart Hustle Media and how we can help you. We help inspire you and educate you to grow your business. We have here, I'm going to read out some of these. I'm Tammy. Uh, let's see, I'm going to put this in here. Tammy Lynn uh, Eldridge, pre-venture business advisor at the Connecticut Small Business Development Center, SBDCs. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you for that. Susan Shapiro is here. Braylon Consulting. Hey, Susan, again, long, uh, long time. Thanks for being here. Braylon Consulting for sure. Um, let's see here. Hey, from Charlotte, North Carolina, great to see in action. You're welcome. Wired PR Works. I teach people how to transform fables into fortunes with marketing and PR. Annette here, event producer, naifproductions.com. We save our clients thousands of dollars on their event for sure. EH Creative, love it, love it. I revamp your home decor with abstract artwork. EH, let me tell you where you need to go. Ronsreeths.com, ronsreeths.com. My wife makes amazing, amazing, exquisite, customized, handmade, high-end wreaths. Her wreaths partnering with your home decor will be off the chain. So EH Creative Group, check out ronsreeth.com or Ron's Reese on Instagram as well. Um, hey, Michelle Sarah King with King Consult. Amplify your impact. So many amazing people here. Oh, and thank you, Susan. I appreciate that. Thank you for your kind words here as well. Um, Jason's here. Fuzzy Logic Escape Room and Online Tea Building just outside of Chicago, Illinois. Pamela Stocks, On the Books Consulting. We help businesses manage their finances and make business decisions for intentional growth. And again, if you're just joining us, this is the Survive and Thrive Summit. We've been, we'll be here for five hours. We end at 9 p.m. We got a few more sessions to go. And then we're gonna give away a brand new Dell computer. I'll show that on the screen there, add to stream. There we go. It's gonna be amazing. Uh, so let's see, who else is there? Um, I like that. Somebody has a sense of humor. Is that a B2B business? Ha ha, I get it. Gavin's here, CEO of Tri-State Fine Homes. Um, thank you, Margo, for being here. The Margo Micro Green, people have a high nutrition in their homes. Interesting. This is interesting. The Mighty 
microgreen.com. Thomas, again, thanks for still being with us. Charlotte, triple digits group.com. Uh, love the plug. <laughs> For your wife, she will love that. Yeah, maybe, hopefully. Um, so Jim Jonas is here, Goat Milk Stuff, goatmilkstuff.com. You definitely want to check out Jim and his company. I am a happy customer. So definitely for sure, great lip balm. I'm going to put that on right now, in fact. Mm -hmm. So goatmilkstuff.com, Jim, thanks for being here. We got, wow, we got so many comments coming in. Um, Tuesday, P. Brooks, financial management, ajoymanagement.com. Love it, love it, love it. Let's move on here. Jacqueline Martinez, CB in touch, home ownership. So many amazing. Love this. Help girls and women have better monthly cycle. Great. Natural pads, shop.visionarywomantoday.com. Love it, Tia. Thanks for being here today. So important. Um, the Creative Zone STEM Center. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thanks for being here today. So many. Tatia, the strategic hub. Woo, love this. Fergus, I see you in the green room. Thanks for being here, brother. I appreciate it. We'll bring you on in about nine minutes, give or take. Thank you, man, for being here. So appreciate it. Um, Kimmy's here. Um, sustainable justice advocacy. So many things here. Awesome. Kimmy, thank you for being here and putting that there. Debbie's here. The ad agency, branding and specialized media buying. Woo. Fellow Queen City attendee, absolutely. <clears throat> Bernadette Beekman, lawyer, uh, check her out on LinkedIn. I solved the problem of women of color lawyers leaving the law by coaching women at law firms. Awesome, awesome. And all of you need to know what Fergus Collins is going to talk about. He's going to give us some insights from his years of experience in dealing with high-performing people. Obviously, I wasn't one of those people, or he would have interviewed me in his years of experience. So what can I say? Um, <laughs> holistic wellness consultant, helping women live in prosperity. Awesome. Check Wealthy on an IG, um, on and on and on. Somebody's asking to donate a Dell notebook. Well, uh, that's, a, that's a good suggestion as well. Um, oh, and somebody can't get their StreamYard profile to work. If you go to StreamYard.com slash Facebook, I think that's how you do that. Life Coach Services. Oh, by the way, Kareem Carmen. Carmen, you're here. Carmen, I believe. Oh, yes. Carmen, you want a brand new Dell computer, by the way. So congratulations, Carmen. I don't know if you were here when I said that. You want a brand new Dell computer. Um, so congratulations. Um, Antoine is here. Data jocks. We help sports organizations reduce athletes' injuries, injuries with AI and data. We got seven more minutes to go, and we're going to bring on Fergus Connolly. It's going to be amazing, amazing session. Ray, uh, Rafi uh, Salem is here, wedding service providers, planners, photographers, jewelers. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Rafi Salem, thank you for being here today. So many amazing people. Let's keep going through this. I just love it. I love it. I love it. Good. So Carmen got the idea uh, that she won the Dell Computer. LLC, bringing great people to great companies, recruitment and staffing law firm. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Listen, I hope you all are having a great time. I'm having a great time. Before we end this session, we will give away the uh, Dell Computer. It's coming up in the next Two minutes or so, Fergus Connolly's on deck. We'll have him up in about six minutes, give or take. I hope you're having a good time. I sure am. And again, those who are just joining, my name is Ramon Ray, founder of Smart Hustle Media. If you want to get all the insight from Smart Hustle, just go to smarthustle.com and sign up there. Or just go to ramonemail.com. Every Thursday at 2 p.m. Thursday at 2 p.m. I have an email that goes out, RamonEmail.com. Once in a while, we sprinkle in some other things that we're doing, like this great event. But the main thing is every Thursday, 2 p.m. So definitely check me out at RamonEmail.com. Anna Jorge, thank you so much for being here again. Anna Joe, personal coach, tech tools, and more. Thank you for being here, Anna. Always an amazing supporter. Um, Alex is here, Austin Community Family Center in Chicago. Thank you, Austin, for being here. Wow, wow, wow. And the day goes on, and I feel in a way that we're just getting started. Uh, mega props to uh, Dell for being here today. Thank you, Dell, for uh, enabling us to have this big event. Uh, mega thanks to uh, Oracle as well. Thank you all for making this happen. So I'm excited. Uh, we'll have our next session in about six minutes, uh, about five minutes now, give or take. And uh, we'll go on with the day. So I hope you're having a good time. I sure am. I was looking through the comments here. Lawrence here, uh, Small Business Growth Consulting. Easily, easily said and done.com. Easily said and done.com. Tia, thank you. This is, this is such a great platform. Really appreciate it. We are glad to be here, glad to serve you and uh, help make this a success for you. So, in a few minutes, we're going to give away that Dell computer. Um, and that's that. Uh, Thank you. This event has been great. Uh, we've been great doing it. We're a small minority-owned construction company in the Georgia area with a desire to revitalize urban communities. StoneNewton.com, StoneNewton.com. 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> Jacqueline, thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline. Very kind of you. You are so welcome. So we're going to dive into bring on Fergus Connolly in about three minutes. Fergus, I know you're ready. I see your smile already there. Thanks for being here. <laughs> we're going to bring you on. So let me take my glasses off a minute because I can't see small print so I can read and see who won the next Dell computer. Carmen Serena is the winner of the first Dell computer. Going through the list here. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So the next winner we have here as well is, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll, who's going to win the Dell computer is Michelle Sarah King. Michelle Sarah King and what got her to the top of the list, how she said she's right now donating extra funds to people and organizations that need assistance. That's what she's doing with the money she has but her own computer has gone kaput. So I believe that this computer we give her will definitely be an investment, not just in her, but in other people in her world. So congratulations, Michelle Sarah King. You've just won a brand new Dell XPS computer. We don't kid around here. This is not full of bricks. This is a real computer inside. So congratulations. And uh, Jamie or Liz, just uh, reach out to me. And can you remind me of who I said won? That's uh, Michelle... Sarah King, so we can get that to her. Indeed, Anna, it is a great, great day for sure. About one minute, Fergus, I'm going to bring you on. Thanks for your patience. Let people get up and use the bathroom, except for me. Um, indeed, LinkedIn.com. Check out uh, Jim on LinkedIn as well. Uh, got a lot of excitement going on here. Um, oh, awesome, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> James McIntyre, <laughs> Volcano, thank you for these kind words. Jacqueline's there. Woo, this is good. Well, if you think we're on fire now, in one minute when we bring on Fergus, we're going to go to a whole nother level. I had the honor to uh, work with Fergus for a, something we did uh, for uh, Verizon, and that was amazing. And I know you guys are going to learn. And what I think is going to inspire you. I think, listen, in, in what, uh, 20 minutes? You can't solve all your problems in 20 minutes. You just can't do it. But I'd like to think, though, that in some amount of time that you can. So listen, this is what we're about, Survive and Thrive Growth Summit. It's all about think bigger. Think bigger. Think different. This is what we do. This is what we're about. And we're just so glad you came. And for me, it's a pleasure to serve you, pleasure to work with you, pleasure to have people here say, Ramon, we want to learn from you. So we've got about one more minute to go. Um, and we're going to bring on Fergus. Let me look at, it depends on what, phone, what clock you're looking at. Yeah, it's 728. So we'll go one more minute. Some people who are looking at the agenda may want to come back from eating popcorn or whatever they're doing. And uh, we'll jump in. <laughs> Ramon, what fuels you? You got energy for days. Ah. You all fuel me. I just love what I do. That's all. I, I really do. But afterwards, tonight I'm probably going to have a bowl of raisin bran mixed with Cheerios together in a cup of in, in a in a in a, uh, a bowl of cold milk with two uh, cinnamon uh, English muffins, and I'm going to put my feet up and watch a good Netflix movie. That's exactly what I'm going to do, Fergus, at 9.01. I don't care if that's not high performance. It's probably low performance, but I'm going to be low performance at 9.01. Listen, it's that time, ladies and gentlemen. Let's bring on Fergus Connolly. Um, Fergus Connolly is an amazing a person who I met through a mutual friend of ours who uh, really is all about high performance. I'm sure he's about much more, but that's the short of it. He's done so much research for people, individuals, that are high performers, athletes, special forces, and others. And uh, listen, I know he has a lot to share with us, and some of you are stuck. Some of you are hurting. Some of you are like, Ramon, I don't know what to do. Some of you are feeling down, discouraged. Some of you are fearful, and et cetera. And I know that this conversation, I, I, I know this conversation is going to help give you at least one nugget, two nuggets, three nuggets, that if you're willing to open your mind and think about and learn from what Fergus has done, definitely, definitely just Google Fergus, Fergus Connolly, look him up, go and get on his list and all those kind of things for sure. So Fergus, here we go. Welcome, Fergus Connolly. Thanks for joining us today, man. How are you? I'm good. Well, actually, I was going to say I'm good, but actually I'm sneaking away from something really important to be with you today. And I'm sorry. I know you sent me an email this morning. I didn't get a chance. I'm actually in Charlotte. I'm so I'm in a hotel room. I'm in Charlotte. I'm working with the Carolina Panthers. They're in meetings, and I had to sneak back to my hotel to do this for you. I was trying to make sure I didn't miss the time and everything. So I'm actually in the middle of working with high performers who are dealing with lots of stress with COVID and everything. So this is a great time to be able to join 
you and everyone who's been with you today. But I'm sneaking away from meetings. I minute. got you. Well, listen, <laughs> I really appreciate it. No, no, no. I want to. I want to be here. I want to be here. I want to be now, here with you guys. It'll be about 19 minutes, but thank you. But that's interesting no. that we're in the middle of your day of what you do. Correct. Yes, and that's why it's great to be able to share as well because you know people look at high performers or people on T who they're going to watch on TV in a few weeks yeah. and think they don't have challenges to overcome. So at the minute, you know, all of these professional athletes are coming in. Just to give you an example, please. please. Uh, when, when I started, I had to spend four days in a hotel alone, getting tested each morning, and then spend the rest of the day in a hotel until I passed four COVID tests before I could go in and work. And then even throughout work, I have to wear a mask. The guys all have to wear masks. We have to be tested every morning. So this is disruptive to us, but we still have to deal with these challenges and overcome them. Exactly what everybody else is doing. Wow. And so, I mean, so let's dive into that. Help the business owners that are doing this. What are some of the top things that you're telling people, uh, Fergus? Well, let's maybe start with the 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 high performance people who we assume, forget the business owners now, the mm. athletes. What do they do? They lost a game. Well, they dropped the ball. They're going through times like this. What are you telling them? Well, it's the same thing. So okay. things have to think, you know, you're out of, you don't control what's happening with virus and with everything else or with rules. So the things that you don't control, you accept them. The things that you do control, you can change. Mm. Because sometimes we get caught up getting very annoyed about the things that we don't control. Well, if you don't control them, okay, let's accept them and let's deal with the things that we have control over and keep moving forward. It's really interesting. That's one of the big things I tell people is recognize the things that you control and tackle them. Don't get caught up in worrying about the things that you can't because right. if you start to get into that cycle, it's really hard to get out of it. That's one of the first, that's a mindset thing. It's one of the first things that you have to get used to if you want to keep making progress. Mm -hmm. And for example of it, now, how do you how do you start with that? For, because it sounds easily to say it. You've researched this. You've done it mm. for years and years. For the person that's not their muscle, that's not their native genius, any tips that you go through with the start? Is it something that you just have to will yourself to do, if that kind of makes sense? Well, if you think about it, and sometimes when you sit down and you talk through with people, even in business, I do the same thing. I sit down, okay, these are, what are the things that are bothering you? And we put a list. We actually make two columns. Okay. And, I, and what we do is we put those into two lists, things that you control, things that you don't. And the things that you don't control, I put at the end, when we have that list, I put acceptance. Mm. And then on the other column, the things that we control, we go change. Okay, those things, so those are the two columns. But I put those, those uh, words at the end. So when we've got the list of the things that you don't control, that we're going to accept those. The things that we do control that we can change, that's the change list. And we're going to tackle those. Because if you get caught up in the other column, it just becomes a spiral of things and you end up becoming disheartened or disillusioned. And it's a really, really clear way of looking at what do we control, what do we not? And keep moving forward. That's the key thing. Keep moving forward and have that mindset of making progress. Yeah. I mean, what, have you found that there's a difference, again, besides what you just said, mm -hmm. have you found the difference between those who are failing at this and those who are succeeding? Meaning when you look back at those who, two humans, two smart people, one finished the race, one didn't. One opened their business, one didn't. One is still crying in a closet and one didn't. I guess this is it. Uh, but have you found, are there any keys to unlock that uh, beyond that? What's another tip that you can give us for especially times like this? And even if it wasn't COVID, what are things that you're seeing? So one of the things I always tell people is you got to do something to make momentum. One of my one of my good friends has a phrase: the only way to kill time is work it to death. So you have to start making progress and generate that momentum for yourself because you figure out the things that are gonna that are gonna work for you, the things that aren't, and you have to trial. And so it's getting people to mo to start moving, move in that direction, not get caught up in those things, mm -hmm. and recognize: okay, we got to keep moving forward and making these small changes. And that's one of the things that the difference. And people think that high achievers over performers are special. Right. They're, they're actually not, they're not different. They just look at use some of these simple tools and start moving forward, making those things and concentrate on the things you've got control over. So it might be adjusting the business. It might be looking for a new customer base. It might be shifting things online. I spoke with uh, 
person who had a, a really personal interpersonal business and they did that two days after the whole shutdown that was mm. their automatic fall throughs they shifted to moving more and more business online and making that progress you could get caught up and worry about the things that you don't have control right. over, but you make those progress and then keep tweaking it and developing it and so and yeah. the great coaches that's many people will tell you they're not afraid to keep to try things that doesn't mean you try huge things, but you start making those little changes, see how they work, keep tweaking it and developing it. That constant change, that constant progress. Got it. What do you do, Fergus, if you're around people who are negative? I know oftentimes small business owners, we're the positive. We're the people who want to move. But we have our mother, our father, our niece, our kids, friends, colleagues, well-meaning people. Fergus, great idea. I know you want to do X, you know, you want to do whatever, but Fergus, you, you just, you failed before Fergus, just, just come back home. Just, <laughs> you know, what, thinking, what do you do with those people? I'm thinking of all those people who say those things and I understand. And yeah. so I, and you, you gotta, de you, you gotta deal with those people and you have to listen, you, you listen, but you understand where they're coming from and you recognize that they have a perspective, but they don't have your experience. Mm. And that's really important. So you can't, lose friends you can't obviously lose family if your mother called you you always listen to your mother that's one thing's for sure okay that that's a rule but at the same time you have to understand that you have experience and i say this to whether it's athletes or coaches you have domain experience that nobody else has so you have to take that information and move forward and that's that's really really important understand your experience understand the value of that believe in yourself and back yourself but you know, be careful as well how many people you spend time around. But the ones that you have to, you listen to them. The ones that you don't have to, you don't have to listen to them. You can choose who you listen to. Yeah, no, that's what you can choose for sure. And I think that that's a difference, I guess, if their family members close or someone yes. uh, who's away from you as well. Um, anything that I'm, you I'm sorry, I'm, one point in that room, always, always recognize that the, the family people and people close to you, they say those things out of care and love. Yes. So always recognize that's where it's coming from and accept it and don't don't fall out because sometimes we get annoyed and we get stressed and that doesn't work out well but you listen to them you understand them but then remember understand your own experience take their points on, on board and then make your best decision yeah i know the business owners Fergus, that you talk to quite a bit are very similar uh, as you've told me in our last discussion to the uh athletes and others who are doing it what similarity yes. do you see between athletes and business owners and or what differences what can we learn from each other because you know there could be a difference between catching a ball or shooting a rifle you know, versus uh, starting opening an accounting firm. Any similarities or differences? Oh, th this is one of the misconceptions. All of these people face fear. They have mm -hmm. fear. They understand that it's there. But what they do, what they concentrate or what they have worked on is the ability to focus on what they want to achieve. And so one of the things I've had to do it, I've had to change my business. I've had to change things. And one of the things I always make sure I do is I've got a little, a small list of targets of focus when i wake up in the morning that's what i look at i look at that focus and that stops me first thing in the morning from shifting into getting annoyed about all those things i told you things i don't control the things that have changed i'm not happy about and that helps me at the very beginning of the day it's just a reminder it's one of the first habits i do is just check that list this is what i'm doing this is the direction i've decided to go in this is what i'm working on and that's how i move forward and it's really about avoiding getting trapped in those things that's that's one of the best tips I give to people. When you are faced in this, you there's always going to be fear. There's uncertainty. Right. You have to. I have this phrase. We used it last time. Be comfortable being uncomfortable. Yes. Know that it's there, but then focus on focus on what it is you're trying to achieve. Don't get distracted. Yeah. For those listening to us today, Fergus, I'm curious between those um, who are more of the risk takers and those of the risk averse. Uh, yes. Is there any blend between the two? Meaning, I took, look, me and my wife, who just was in this room and stepped out. I'm the one. Let's go do this. Let's do that. Let's launch it. She's like, let's slow down. I personally think both you need to listen to because if, I, if it yes. wasn't for her, I may have been dead. You know, if it wasn't for me, though, she may have never traveled to Singapore. She'd just be like, I want to stay home all day. So uh, pre-COVID. So the point is, any thoughts to those of us who are a risk taker, we're running to go almost kill ourselves versus those who are like, their favorite word is no. Any blend on that, Fergus? That's a, that's a brilliant point because what you find are is that sometimes when stress or when anxiety gets on top of us, we shift too far away from who we normally are. And the key is just being aware of that. So if you are, you know, risk positive and a risk taker, just right. be aware when you start to shift the other way, stay true to yourself and keep that. And understand having those other people maybe who are risk averse around you, that's a good thing because it helps 
helps you keep that balance, have that awareness. But it's something that we always look for. We look for in high achievers, are they starting to shift the away from what they normally are? And so understand yourself, understand who you normally are and maintain that. And that's why that focus is critical. When you wake up in the morning, that focus is you. That's what you've decided. That is you. And on the bad days when you wake up or you're struggling, that's your focus. It's a reminder. That's who you are. And you move towards that. Got it. That is powerful. And I'm curious, then, what do you say for to the person who has a perfection issue? Um, I, I wonder, do are, are there people who are high performance people who are always perfect? It's not good enough. It's not good enough. Now, I don't know. I, you probably saw the movie, the Michael Jordan thing. Was he perfectionist? Yeah. Was he not? So you are, you know where I'm going. So talk to yes. those people, whether it's good or bad. I don't know. That you be the judge now. You answer how you think I've, the answer. I've I've been I've been that person where nothing's good enough and you're always striving. And that can lead to burnout. You can burn. I've burned out. You can make mistakes, you can stumble. And that's really, really valuable to have people around you. And that's right. what I call your sheepdogs. Like, who are your sheepdogs? And they're can they are people who you trust. And they, they trust you and there's that vulnerability. Now you can't, in business, in life, you just can't be vulnerable with everybody. You can be yes. vulnerable with people who are really close to you and know who they are. It might only be four or five people, but those are the people that you can bounce things off. And those are the people that you will ask things like, you know, do you think this is too much for me? Or, or And they will come up and tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, listen, you're actually pushing yourself too, for, too mm -hmm. hard. I'm working with two people uh, who I know very well. I'm working with them and that's my guidance to them. Listen. You're setting, you're pushing yourself just a little bit too hard. You're setting the standard a little bit too high. Let's just calm it down. Trust me. Trust, trust my advice on this. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is what you have to do. Don't try and put your arms around the world in one day and two days. Take your time. But have those good sheepdogs that you can use as reference when things get really, really busy. Everybody needs a sheepdog. No, that is true. I have a lot of questions for you, Fergus, but I definitely want to respect your time and I appreciate it. I feel great. I can say, like, I pulled Fergus Connolly away from this important meeting. But if you have I a hope question, that, I hope none of those guys are watching this. That, well, I actually do hope they're watching, but I, I go back. Fergus, and, yeah. Fergus told him, hey, I have a stomach ache. I got to run away for 20 minutes. Um, but if you have a question for Fergus Connolly, we got about one or two more minutes um, that, that you can ask it if you want to. If not, I'm going to ask some more questions, but feel free to ask Fergus Connolly a question about your business in particular. Um, Fergus, then what do you tell anything you, you're advice to the person who's always been beat up. Let's go to the other side of the equation, not the A player, not the perfectionist, not the person that's, you know, ninja, but the person who has their head down. Maybe they suffered through some abu abuse as a child, which is often the case. Maybe their father and mother told them all the time, you're fat, you're stupid, you can't go anywhere. Even as I say it, Fergus, I feel like crying because I've been that kid. Not all these things I've said, but, you know, I, I, could, I can't spell, Fergus, I can't spell very good at all. And, and I, it, I can't, I, math is bad for me. And for some reason, I always, oh, so maybe I'm asking you to talk to myself, but what is your advice for those kind of people who they're good people, Fergus, but they got this weight on them in, in some way? Any thoughts for them? So th there are two things. One is nobody's perfect. And this is one of the things with social media and everything. Everybody thinks that, you know, people who are on social media or some of them are perfect. No, everybody's got their struggles and their, I don't call them weaknesses. I call them opportunities. So I, if you have something that you're not good at, that's an opportunity to improve or develop. Doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect at it. So don't talk about strengths and weaknesses. Talk about strengths and opportunities. Those mm -hmm. are opportunities for growth and you can choose to develop them or not. But then if you've been through situations where it's been, where it's been tough and you are beautiful because you are resilient. You've gotten through those things and those have developed skills in you, the ability to tolerate, the ability to get through things. And that is something that is a very, very important thought process to go through. That makes you stronger. That is a strength of yours that sometimes people uh, neglect or don't recognize. You know, you come across even at different levels, you come across people who've gotten through really difficult situations, experiences. I have so much respect for those people when you end up working with them because they turn that strength. That's, I'll be honest with you, that's the kind of person I don't want to compete with mm. because that person is the person who is so, so good at getting over difficult situations. And that's, like I said, that is the person I don't want to compete with. I love it. One last question for you, Fergus, and I appreciate your time. Somebody asked for their, and this could be your team calling now. This could be uh, someone talking about um, older entrepreneurs. Just curious, have you come across working with, uh, you know, maybe you've worked with a lot of young people or anything. Any tip for the older entrepreneur or older person that wants to go any, any have you run into or any practice on that, the seniors? 
Yeah, so one of the things with those people have so much experience and they've mm. seen so many things and they've overcome them. And it's being able to call on that bank of experience and see that. And I'll be honest with you, I, I, I use a lot of, you know, older people. I, I, I hate using, I use the word more mature, more experienced. Yeah, I understand. Because that's what they have. And their experience, particularly in the soft skills. And we don't have time to go into it today, but one of the things that I've gone through recently with a lot of people are looking at the generational experiences. And what you've got now is you've got a lot, a lot of young people coming through with technology experiences, whatever, but one area that perhaps sometimes they're lacking in what I call the, the amplifiers, the mm -hmm. soft skills, teamwork, communication, the ability to manage lead. Experienced people have those because they've developed them not only over time, but because of their experience. And they've got so much to offer particularly now, even more so now in those people's skills. And they, and sometimes they withdraw, they don't see the value in, the, in them. Those skill sets are more important now than any other technological area right now, because that's what people need. They need to be heard, they need to be understood. And do not devalue those. And if I was a young person in business, yes. those are the kind of people I would be reaching out to to learn because they amplify the hard skill, regardless as to the area, regardless as to the domain, those soft skills, amp are, those are amplifiers that amplify those hard skills that people have today. Yeah, this is awesome. Listen, Fergus Connolly, I know you have a lot on your plate. You're a very busy man. I am humble. No, I'm thank you. no, no, thank you for having me and thank <laughs> you for allowing me being able to share. No, seriously, thank you for being able, allowing me to be able to share with everybody who's taken the time to uh, to listen to us today. It goes two ways. Anytime you need a high performance example, call me for us. I'll like, you can say, Ramon, walk across the stage or whatever you need. <laughs> I need to do. But be blessed, my friend. And I look forward to working with you more, longer, hopefully in person, give you a big hug one day. But thank you so much, Fergus, for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Go Panthers. Oh, Bye. Thank you, man. Indeed. Bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Fergus Connolly. You heard that. I can see by the chat you all definitely enjoyed yourself. And somebody said, Ramon, it was like a great uh, uh, up to my day. And all these things I'm saying. Thank you, Fergus Connolly. Thank you, Fergus. So yes, 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 yes. I know that you guys are doing this. And I like this one. It said uh, you took your day from a challenging one. We all suck. We all have low days. And you've made this a promising one. So I'm glad, glad we could do that. I've been, through, I've been with you all today for three hours and 58 minutes. But I love it. Awesome. Kimmy says, awesome, Fergus. Thank you. Thank you, Kimmy, for sharing that as well. Uh, Jason says, huge thanks. You are so welcome, Jason. So welcome, Jason. It's, it's our pleasure to serve you. This is why I exist. I could be here for the next 12 hours, but I believe that uh, uh, Facebook has an eight-hour commitment, so I'm going to have to ask Rob Price to buy Facebook for me so that I can um, uh, have it to 12 hours. So, uh, But we're having a good time. We've given away Dell computers. The Margo's saying, thank you, Fergus. You're right. I've not seen my strength to come with uh, age. So, wow, so many kudos here as well. People are really, really enjoying it. And I ask you, listen, please, please go online. Hit the share button right now. Shout out. Go to Twitter, but make sure you come back. Go to Twitter. Fergus is very act active on Twitter and social media. Definitely go there. The Rouse House. Go Panthers. Thanks, Joe. Uh, it's here. Uh, so thank you. A lot of, lot of engagement here. Emilio, thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. Great information, Fergus. Indeed. But um, you guys have been awesome. Uh, we have about an hour or so more to go. Um, <laughs> Tia says, wow, I'm exhausted from the amazing talks. <laughs> Well, I'm exhausted too, but I'm having a good time. I'm debating whether I'm going to go eat today a uh, burnt pancakes and bacon or just a bowl of cereal or a tuna fish sandwich or just go to like quick check and have something very unhealthy. We'll see. I don't quite know. But in about uh, one more minute, we're going to bring on Rob Price. Rob, I see you there. Uh, thanks for being here with us today. Appreciate it. I can see your big smile. But listen, I've had a great time. Uh, thank you to you for being here. And listen, Keep the chat going. Keep the chat going. Ask questions. Give comments. Remember, don't just um, uh, chat to me, per se, as it were, but there's a lot of people in the chat that you can meet. So you can, if you want to um, shout out who you are, ask questions of people, say what you need. Somebody says, is burnt bacon healthy? I don't know. And I didn't say burnt bacon. I said burnt pancakes. So get those facts right. But I'm going to bring on Rob in about three seconds, Rob, give or take. But I'm glad you all are here. We got one hour to go. Next up at 8, uh, 10. No. Yes. At 8, 10. 
is Helena, Jeanette, Adrian. Uh, we have our Darnielle, uh, and then we're going to close out. So we've had a great time today. Hey, Helena, welcome back. Thanks for being here. Uh, so glad uh, that you're back again. Helena's a longtime friend of mine, and she'll be speaking uh, shortly as well. So with that, let me bring on Rob Price. Here we go. You ready to go, Rob? Good. Here we go. Hey, Rob, thanks for being here, man. So appreciate your time. Appreciate you being here. I love the look. I love your T-shirt, man. It looks cool. I love it. Thank <laughs> you. Are... It's great to be with you. It sounds like it's been an amazing day so far. Rob, it has been, man. I've been live as you. I can't. I don't know who can see the clock or who cannot. Or maybe only I can see it. Four hours and one minute. But it's been good, man. It's just, uh, as you know, we've gotten to know each other a little bit. I enjoy, yeah. um, you know, everybody has something different. You're a, a CEO, a leader of companies. More than one company you've been leading an executive position. Me, interviewing all day long. I can do it. Uh, uplifting entrepreneurs. And we kind of have similar jobs. I guess in your job, you uplift uh, other people. That's the job of a leader, right? To inspire people. That's one of your yeah. biggest jobs. So, you know, you know I, I do have to say I'm a little bit upset because my people told me I, that you were interviewing me for the DNC tonight. So I, I don't know what is going on. <laughs> That's uh, going to be an uh, hour and nine minutes. <laughs> I thought I was the closing speaker at the DNC, but... Um, <laughs> Anyway, no, it is great, and and I give you an enormous amount of credit, and and your uh, your sponsors. Uh, it's really nice. I, I appreciate my friends from NetSuite and Oracle uh, introducing us and getting to know one another, and having um, you know a brother from another mother speaking uh, to lift people's spirits at this really really important and complicated time. And from the comments, it seems like. It's been very meaningful to the to the participants today. Indeed, Rob. No, thank you. It has been indeed. And I'm so glad you took the time to be here. By the way, I'm curious, what's your, I don't want to get too personal, but what's your day been like? Has it been a more relaxed day, very busy day in between, like the last 12 hours of your life? Curious. Uh, you so know. it's a great question. I was on vacation today. Okay, and, good. Uh, so which was pretty much just like every other day. Um, <laughs> but, but I can't complain. The reality is that I would find it very, very hard to go a day without being connected to the business. I know a lot of people speak about work-life balance, but for me, the, the the nature of my work and the mission is so incredibly um, motivating and gratifying. Um, I'm, I'm not a great spokesperson for work-life balance. I got you. I love that. And listen, let's start with that mission. Uh, Rob Price is with School of Rock. For those who don't know Rob, to tell us about your background personally as, as an individual, and then sure. let's talk a bit about the School of Rock. But remind me, I want to get into this aspect of mission because I think that's an important thing, I think, that can drive us to do anything, even when we're down, we remember our mission. But who's Rob Price? Right. And tell us a little about the School of Rock. I'll go really fast through my bio because it's really boring. But uh, nah, I, it. um, I started my career um, uh, right out of college doing consulting. So I learned. Um, uh, a lot of analytical skills. I learned a lot of presentation skills. I learned how to um, how to uh, navigate my way through an airport. Uh, but it was a really great experience to get exposure to lots of different industries and lots of different situations and to sit in the dust of wise men and women. And um, I really was able to uh, develop as a uh, develop as a thinker, not so much as a leader at that point. And I went back to business school and after business school, um, where I found my passion was in consumer-oriented businesses. So I went to work for uh, an amazing grocery chain in San Antonio, Texas called HEB Grocery, which is still my favorite grocery chain in the world. Uh, amazing people down there in Texas. And, uh, and then I had a really amazing opportunity to transition as a marketer from that experience. I ran the private label business for a while. I then went to work for another family-owned company called Wawa. Uh, your Northeast folks will definitely know Wawa. I see that the Wawa recognition there. Um, and I was running the marketing and the merchandising side there. So um, everything from getting product to the shelves, but also creating products uh, and helping launch products like uh, stuffed pretzels. I don't want to brag, but that came out during my tenure. Nice, nice. My apologies to everybody who gained a lot of weight from the stuffed pretzels. You're forgiven. Uh, and uh, then I had a, a really long uh, run at uh, CVS Pharmacy, which is now CVS Health, and really experienced that transition going from being a retail company to being a health care company. And uh, that was really fascinating and incredibly um, uplifting to be part of that journey. 
Um, and CVS now is associated with Aetna. So it really has continued to propel on that journey. Really good people uh, in that environment. I was running marketing and the extra care program, those long receipts. Yeah. So, so <laughs> not that, but, uh, but indeed, it was, uh, that was part of my area of accountability. Um, and then I ran, uh, I was uh, president of Edible Arrangements for three yeah. years. So the fruit bouquets. Uh, you work with all the cool brands. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing. I cool know. I know. Princess, like as an actor, he said action movies and something else. Will Smith said that's like what he wants to do, and he's done it. Seems like you, like as a little boy, your mom or dad said, "Rob, only work with cool brands." Wawa, CVS, Edible. I mean, come I on. I will tell you though. I'll I'll I'll, I'll take a quick cul-de-sac to your point because I think this might be relevant yeah. to everyone. Assuredly, in 1997 when all of my classmates from business school were going into the internet or investment banking or management consulting, um, I was surely not perceived as going to take the cool job going okay. to work in grocery chain, <laughs> honestly. And I think that one of the amazing pieces of advice that I got from one of my professors um, was, listen, it, you know, if you really have a passion for consumers and you really have a passion for retail, you got to get into the. You got to get into the muck. You really got to go to where the action is. And 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 businesses like grocery uh, is an amazing environment. So, um, I it it sounds cool now, but at the time, assuredly, you know, it was it was it was the load road less traveled at the time. Like employee um, number three at Facebook when the employee right. number three was like, what a moron, what a failure. Right. <laughs> Um, so anyway, after Edible Arrangements, I joined School of Rock, and, and School of Rock is a, um, a pr primarily a franchise business. Uh, we have uh, over 270 schools and dozens and dozens more opening. Right now, we're in nine countries, but we're, uh, we have plans to enter four more countries um, in, in the next few months, which is really exciting and incredibly invigorating. And um, we have lots of schools also in development right now in the United States. And the thing that's different about School of Rock, I know everybody's seen the movie and everybody's seen the Broadway show and listened to the soundtrack and no Jack, no Jack Black. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the, the difference between what we do, Ramon, and what other music uh, schools will generally do is we combine individual instruction, but we also put our kids into ensembles, into groups, into bands. And we have them work for 10 to 12 weeks feverishly on, uh, on, a, on a show, a Zeppelin show or a Beatles show or a Women in Rocks show or a, a Roots of Rock and Roll show or a print show, et cetera. And what we find is that it's a very, very powerful way to teach kids not just to be proficient musicians, right. to be amazing collaborators and to be amazing citizens. And so um, it's a very, very special thing that we do. And to your point, what bonds it all together is our purpose, mm. is, is the purpose of seeing the transformation of these kids, this growing passionate community, as we call it. And our mission is enriching lives. We do it through music. Uh, but our, our mission is to take mostly these young people, although even adults, our students, I'm a student at School of Rock, uh, but mostly of our, our students are young people. And um, we eat, sleep, and breathe the development of these young people as people, not just as musicians. That makes wow. sense. Is that the number one, do you think that mission, or let me ask it a different way. If I was taking Rob Price out of, the, out of his job right now, giving him 60,000 a year to go for work for a local accounting firm, go work for a local, I don't know, uh, you know, a retail store, go work for a, a small business, you know, whatever it may be. Um, what would what would you, what would you bring from your years of experience at these big companies, Rob, to this small business? You only have a team of two people. You got to you got to start from scratch. You don't have a big budget. Question. Or, yeah, and and I I can actually bring some insight to that through osmosis because I get to watch our franchisees who have much smaller enterprises. Yes. And, and I see how they do it. So if, if, if you'll indulge me, I'll, I guess I'll share advice that they would Please. probably share with you. Yeah. Um, I think the most important thing is, uh, the, listen, 
everyone on this call, there, where there are times when we're working for organizations that have a purpose that is, you know, kind of that like cool and funky and you know, you know, a high sexy purpose. And then there are times we don't. And there are times we're working on things that are incredibly motivating and sexy. And then there are times we're working on things which are, are, are you know, incredibly boring and hard to find, um, you know, the, the higher calling. But there always is a higher calling. There always is. And the reality is that I actually can't find many more um, uh, uh, inspiring stories than small enterprises. True. Because the reality is, let's let's if, if you're sitting in that smaller enterprise, you are building something because the objective is to make it go from smaller to bigger. Um, you are you are improvising. You have your hands in the business in a very very real way. So your direct actions have a higher degree of influence in many circumstances in a small environment than in a bigger environment. Mm. The other thing that I that I have observed from our franchisees that uh, speaks to this question is this idea that small business people, even if their title isn't CEO, even if they're a partner or if they're the third person in the business or if they're a functional leader in the business, everybody has to act like a CEO all the time. You have to be conscious of your environment. You have to think about your competitive situation. You have to be mindful of your uh, customer feedback. You have to um, collaborate with your team members. So the reality is that you're head of strategy, you're head of accounting. And I think that that's actually an enormous source of purpose. I, I don't know if you agree with that, but this idea, this idea of when things are small, you have much more of an opportunity um, to shape the outcomes and to be in, it's a contact business, uh, full contact sport when you're doing that. Does that, that make sense? I love it. I think you're so true. I think that is so powerful and I think inappropriate because many of us struggle. You know, we're small business owners. And, and the reason I'm so glad to have you on, Rob, I know you're not, you know, today the head of a smaller business, but there's so much we can learn. There's so many yeah. similarities and parallels. Um, when you talk about being a leader, that's one thing I'm going through now, uh, Rob. I'm trying to, I wouldn't say move away from, but meaning I've been a tactical business owner and God's blessed me a bit successful, started four small companies, sold two of them. So things are okay but I'm yeah. really trying to get into how can I be a better leader and find the right team and inspire them as we're doing tonight. You know, yeah. it goes to my team, Jamie and Liz, and, and they have their own businesses as well. But the point is, is that, can you give us a nugget? We got about, I don't know, oh wow, time goes by so fast when you're having fun. We got about six minutes left, Rob. But being a leader, what are your thoughts, tips, advice for us on that? Because I think that as Denzel said, you know, if I need an SEO, I can hire that. He actually said, if I need a PhD, I can hire them. But I think leadership is important. Uh, can you help us unpack that a bit? What does that mean to you being a leader? Yeah, and, and and I would say that at 50, I mean, I know I look like I'm 24, Ramon, but I'm, I'm <laughs> actually 50. Um, at, at 50, I'm so much better prepared to answer that question than I was mm -hmm. even at 45. Right. Um, and I think that, um, you know, what I have found are the, the, the key elements of leadership that have been rewarded and the things that have led to greater success for my businesses and for, um, for myself are, um, you know, this, this phrase, be the question, not the answer. Yes. There's presumption. And by the way, you're, you're, you're feeding into it, right? Because you're like interviewing this Rob Price. He's got all the answers. The reality is that the less that you believe that, mm. um, and uh, uh, and and maybe that's in fact the gift you're bringing is by asking all these questions. <laughs> but I think that's a very big part of it is that when you can ask a question, as opposed to try to arrive at an answer, the 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 second uh, corollary to that is a mantra that I, that we use a lot in, in my operation, which is maybe they're right is always presume the person who is most disagreeing, even most disagreeable, yes. is right about something. Yes. And Lord knows we could use that for the next, what is it, 72 days? I, I've lost track. <laughs> Um, no, Rob, you are so true. I mean, uh, my wife tells me that I'm hard-headed, and I know she's wrong. I know she's incorrect, but I'm saying, you know what, Rob? Maybe she's right. I'm, I'm willing right. to give an inch and say, 
maybe she's right. Or if you yeah. tell Ramon, you know, I'm just teasing you. But no, you're, you're so true. And I think, Rob, that that is part of being a leader because I think that sometimes my friend Vic was on here, uh, videosocials.net, similar thing he was echoing that sometimes we may think leader means being in charge. I have to be right. I have to be the smartest person. I think leadership, and I'm learning it slowly, it's about inspiring. And I, because I'm, I'm the smartest person, that's a problem. That, right. At least I think it is. So. Right. And then I, I guess the other dimensions of it too is that um, I, I think that finding the purpose in the struggle, I mean, this has been excruciating, excruciating few months for everybody. I mean, uh, and, you know, there's a great book by Viktor Frankl. I'm sure many people have read it, Man's Search for Meaning. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, um, I don't get a piece of the action, so I'm not selling books, but, uh, but it's a very, very well-regarded book that talks about his experience surviving through the Nazi Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And his principal observation is that the avoiding the struggle is often impossible. Mm -hmm. um, hoping that the struggle, hope as a strategy isn't necessarily the best approach in and of itself. But finding purpose in the struggle and saying, what am I doing this for? Am I doing it for my kids? Am I doing it for my neighbors? Am I doing it for my franchisees? Am I doing it for my customers? Am I doing it because it's going to hone me into a better person, into a better leader? And, you know, that's, that is um, a mantra that uh, and, and reinforcement that I keep focusing on is right now we are all we are all swimming against an extraordinarily complicated tide. Yes. Uh, and if we're focused on why we're doing it, and if we're focused on the developmental benefits of doing it, we'll make it a little bit more tolerable. Yeah. Rob, that is that is powerful, man. Um, uh, by the way, do you have a book? Do you have a website? Do you give TED Talks? Are you just the CEO of School of Rock? I'm just the roadie. Okay. Uh, uh, um, so, uh, the best way to reach me, you need to have like a mastermind or a group, or let me let let me build that and I'll sell it, and you can just do what I tell you. I'm I'm a LinkedIn junkie. I'll you know, uh, uh, so link in with me, Rob Price. I know, I know. Uh, there's a skinnier picture of me on LinkedIn, and then uh, and then please check us out at schoolofrock.com. Um, and I can't, I can't stress enough the power of music and the healing power of music. Uh, come join our community. It doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. We're, we're welcoming of everybody. Now, Rob, this has been so massively refreshing. And then one of the next guests, Helena, I'm going to ask her when she comes on. There's a mutual friend that me and Helena know very well. I think you sound just like this person. Uh, but We'll see. I'm going to ask her when she comes on. But Rob, thank you. It's a Seth Godin, by the way. Seth Godin, he just some of the things you echoed, like don't ask the, don't tell the answer to ask the question. It seemed very insightful. So it reminds me of him. But, uh, but Rob Price, School of Rock, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your time. Uh, I really appreciate it and uh, really appreciate it. Thank you for Ramon, me. thanks to you and thanks to all of your, your, your guests and your <laughs> listeners for being part of the positivity right now. I'm psyched to see this kind of community <laughs> brewing. Appreciate that, man. And sorry again if I thought you – sorry, Rob, that you thought you were coming to speak at the DNC. All sorry. Right. Uh, right. There's, always, there's always four years from now. So, you know. <laughs> Have a great evening, man. Let's be in touch more. Thank you so much, Rob. That. All right. Okay. Be well. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. So this is Ramon Ray back again. I feel like one of those pastors of some church in the South where they have to wipe themselves with a cloth. If you don't get that reference, it's okay. Inside joke. Um, some of you will get that reference, but I'm doing good. Wow. Four hours and 19 minutes. We've been online. I see that Helena's in the house. Adrian's in the house. Jeanette is in the house. This is awesome. I'm going to bring these amazing ladies on in about one minute and 30 seconds, give or take. Donna Morris, thanks for still being here. Shout out to Rob. Absolutely. Thank you so much. <laughs> Helena said this is better than DNC to some people, maybe. Music is important. So true. Jim Jones, thanks for being here. My brother from another mother. See you on LinkedIn. Rob, absolutely. Absolutely, Rob. Very active there. And Jim, happy to connect you. Um, <laughs> you like the inside joke. Lisa, thanks for being here. So many amazing comments. Listen, we got two more seconds. Anybody wants to shout out, give some more comments, say what you need, don't need, put your business name, website link, whatever it is. We're going to have a good time. We got two more sessions to go. They're going to go by so fast. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, we're up. Listen, I like Tia. I like to laugh and have a good time. And I do not take myself as my camera gets blurry. 
I do not take myself too seriously. Why did the camera get blurry? Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, Carmen, you're welcome. And Carmen won the Dell computer. So Carmen, uh, be in touch with uh, my team and we'll do that indeed, Helena, for sure. Awesome conversations. Thank you. Yes, Jim, indeed. So I think, listen, it's 809. We'll just bring these amazing ladies on. Helena, you ready? Good. I see you there. Adrian, you ready? Good, good, good. Jeanette, you ready to go? Awesome, awesome. I always ask that. You know, someone would be just getting ready to leave, picking their nose or something like that. I don't want to bring them up on the screen if they're not ready. So <laughs> I give a warning. <clears throat> um, so listen, I'm Ramon Gray, founder of Smart Hustle Media. Thanks for joining Survive and Thrive Growth Summit. We did our first one April uh, some months ago, and it was awesome. Over 2,000 people signed up. This one, over 1,000 people signed up. Um, it's amazing, amazing, amazing. We're having a great time, um, and I'm having a good time. And three friends of mine are here, people I've gotten to know. Adrian Miller, I've known her for a long time. If you don't know Adrian's network, you should check it out. If you don't know adrianmiller.com, check it out. Adrian will introduce herself, does a couple different things but she's an amazing sales trainer and can help you get in shape on your business. And tonight we'll talk about building communities. Helena Escalante, Entree Gurus, and more she's doing. She can talk about that. Really also a community builder and a community builder in two languages. Hola, señorita, me llamo Ramón Aurelio Rey. Yo no hablo mucho español. That's all I know in Spanish. Um, and really happy also to have Jeanette here as well, who's with Co, which is a unit, as it were, of, of the Chamber of Commerce. So Jeanette knows content like nobody's business. So with that, ladies, let's go live as we click on these things here. Hey, Helena. Are you yeah. awesome? <laughs> uh, let's see here. There we go. Well, oh, Adrian, wonderful to be here. Yay. <laughs> Hi, ladies. Hey, Ramon. Hey, Jeanette, thanks for being here. Hey, Jeanette, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. Helena, how are you? Couldn't be better. Delighted uh, to be here. Indeed. Adrian, welcome. Thanks for being here. How are you? Great. Good. Awesome. Great day, night. It is indeed. And thanks for being here. I know it's late for many of you. I think I see Adrian, I don't know, 52 times a week. Uh, most of the time during the week, we're in the similar networking groups. And hopefully she'll touch on that in a bit in the time we have. We're going to go to 840. And really, this discussion here is about community. But uh, Jeanette, why don't we start with you? Tell us a bit about yourself and a bit about Co. Uh, just introduce yourself to the Smart Hustle audience and tell us who you are. Sure. Hi. Thanks, Ramon. So I'm Jeanette Mulvey. I'm the content director from for Co, which is a publication from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, uh, specifically for small businesses. So our job is to create content that helps people start, run, and grow their businesses, and to do that in a way that brings them the information they need when they're looking for it. Um, and for us, that's all about building community. So today I can talk about how we've built a community around ourselves and then how small businesses can build a community around themselves. And I will let you all in on a secret, which is that I am on my summer vacation. So I am joining you from the closet of my beach house. These are the closet doors and my laptop is in the closet and I brought this on vacation with me. So um, here I am, so thank you. Jeanette, I love the hustle. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you for being here. And I hope you're, she's like, I would, she probably has a beach towel wrapped around her waist. <laughs> I, I had a few cocktails earlier in the day, but I cut it off at a certain time because we were doing this. So I appreciate that. Helena Escalante, welcome Entree Gurus. Thanks for being here. Tell us a little about yourself, what you do. Introduce yourself, please. Thank you so much, Ramon. I am so Happy to be here. I'm Helena Escalante, and I I do a lot of things. It depends on the hat that you see me wear. But first and foremost, I am a marketing strategist. I am a copywriter. I am also an entrepreneur. I am a blogger. I put together, I curate programs for the business community in New York. And more importantly tonight, I am a friend of Ramon. That is the hat that I'm wearing, and I'm so humbled and so excited to be here. Thank you so much. And I also want to share with the audience that when you're working out, when you're improvising an office out of a closet, that's called a cloth <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I mean, Jeanette, you may use that. It's a thing. Um, Adrian Miller, listen, I feel like introducing you, Adrian, but I know I'm going to screw it up because I've been on for like four hours and 25 minutes. But Adrian, thanks for being here. Break down who you are, what you do, Welcome. Thanks for being here. Okay, I, I kind of feel 
I mean, I'm not in a closet. This is like I have a, a regular office here, so I feel like I've I've got a leg up. Um, I have four companies. You you know that Adrian Miller <coughs> Training. I've been doing that for an extensive amount of time. I do sales consulting and training. Um, I run a um, a pretty robust networking community that had a huge amount of functionality in person. Lots of events. Lots of activities and fun things and we're all on zoom now but we're still having a lot of fun stuff and great speakers i too write content i'm um i'm a short form anecdotal kind of person those long form more research oriented white papers are not my thing and last year because i kept saying no i started an integrated marketing company so i could merge the content the strategy and brought on board somebody who did the graphics the web design etc but i think the sales consulting and training and adrian's network are the um activities that really keep me most most focused Absolutely. And Adrian, it's amazing when I look at your social media channels, you have this tranquil side to you at the beach, on the lake, in a boat. But Adrian's maybe one of the most busiest persons that I know. But now I'm looking at Helena and Jeanette, so I'm not sure really. But anyhow, uh, for sake of this, <laughs> one of the busiest person that I know. So it is absolutely amazing. Uh, Jeanette, I'm going to turn to you first. Break down for us, uh, Co. Uh, what is it? How does it work? How has that community been built, as it were? And more importantly, though, Jeanette, what can we learn from it? Today, this session here's about really community building. We could touch on content too, but really community. What are you doing and your team doing and what can we learn? Sure. So Co was created specifically because the US Chamber of Commerce wanted to do this very thing, which is they wanted to build a community of small businesses. So how were they going to do that? Because what, what they wanted to do is they didn't want to introduce themselves to small businesses and say, hey, here's who we are. What can you do for us? The Chamber of Commerce wanted to say, here's what we can do for you. So that's sort of my bigger point about making a community, no matter what your business is. Right. is the first question you need to ask is, what can I do for you that will make you want to be part of my community? It cannot be transactional for the, for the customer, for the community member. It has to be about what they can get from you. And later, you can think about what you can do for the, get from them. So for us, we said, what do small businesses need, right? So small businesses are in three phases. They're in start, run, or grow. So we built our entire website, which is purely editorial. We're totally editorially independent from the Chamber of Commerce. We are not about policy. We are not about politics. We created that site to just meet small business owners or entrepreneurs where they are and say, what can we offer you? And in our case, that is advice on how to start your business, how to run your business, how to grow your business, and inspiration from other businesses, whether they're small businesses or, or really big startups on how they're doing it. So we are cult cultivating this community around ourselves with the intention that some people will read one article and never come back. Other people will come back many times and still other people may look into what the Chamber of Commerce is and ultimately make that journey towards becoming a, a member of the Chamber of Commerce, but many won't. And that's perfectly fine with us. And that's for us what building a community is. Here's what we have to offer. And we'll talk about what you can offer us later. What do you say, Jeanette, to the people? And then Adrian, I'm going to turn it to you to answer the same question and talk a bit about your community. But Jeanette, what do you say to people who say, I need cash. I don't have, to, I don't have time to wait. I can't be that nice if you know what I'm asking, meaning I can't oh, let me offer you, let me offer you. No, I, I want them to pay me now. I, I need to sell my widget. I need to sell my pen, sell my pencil. I, I don't have time to be, you know, how can I serve you? How can I help? What do you say to people who may want to rush and just sell, just make a buck? Sure, I, there's nothing wrong with selling. If you can't sell, then you're not going to have a business. So I'm not suggesting that you don't want to sell and that you don't want to have customers. I think what we're saying is that if you want to build a business for the long term, you mm. have to make a distinction between a customer and a community. So it's fine to sell and it's fine to sell to the first customer that comes in the door. You know, we see all these businesses have that first dollar on the wall that they made. It's fine. Get your first dollar. Get as many dollars as you can. But if you're thinking longer term, at the same time that you're selling, you need to be building this community and building those relationships. And that means that beyond selling, what is next? What kind of relationship can you build with this customer so that they are there when you need them beyond just trying to have a cash transaction with them? 
Yeah, that is powerful. Adrian, tell us about, thank you, Jeanette. Tell us about Adrian's network. That's an important community I've been a part of, a paying member of for a long time. And, and the secondary question to that is that I know that's one thing you drill into all of us is about our pitches. You know, Adrian opens up the floor, everyone pitch and tell about your business. And as Jeanette's kind of saying, it's the ones that are about me, 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 that you're like trying to teach us and educate us. It's got to be different. But what is Adrian's network? And what are those tips that you share several times a week with us? Yeah. Um, so Adrian's network is a networking community with many hundreds of um, members across pretty much every business category and professional um, uh, organism, uh, profession. Sorry. It's late, man. It is late. <laughs> I've been watching it. I'm like, it's late. I'm, I hope I'll find words. Every, every type of business and profession. Um, and different from many other networking groups, and I use the word community way more than groups, we have multiples in categories. There's multiples of me because I operate from a position of inclusiveness, not exclusiveness. I don't believe just because there's one person who does one thing in your community slash group, you are necessarily going to have the right fit with them or the types of clients you can introduce them to. Because the fact is, you do business with people you bond with, you feel this, you lean in towards, and there's zillions of us. We're, you know, there's just zillions of us now that we can do business globally with a few keystrokes on our phone. So, we need to be looking at things with an inclusive headset. Um, so Adrian's network was formed on that. It was formed on um, being very high touch, low pressure. Yep. And you know that you call me mama bear, I'm all over you. Um, what did someone, someone referred to me last night as brutal compassion. It's true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the phrase they used. I thought that was like, I actually wrote it down. It was on a podcast. Um, and so I, I, I am really high touch, low pressure, but I kind of help manipulate and maneuver what people are doing. My whole thought process in starting Adrian's Network was providing an environment where people could get support, emotional, mental, informational, to grow their business or whatever else they're passionate in. And that may be in the form of information, it may be in the form of a direct lead, it may be in the form of an introduction to a referral source, your next best friend, anything like that. I'm so, we've accomplished it, actually. Yeah, no, you have. I'm curious, Adrian, what is the, the biggest peeve you have when people are giving their pitches? And I know we could talk about a thousand different things, but this is one very specific thing that many people are going through is we're all on Zoom calls or calls or team calls or we're networking online. What is that one or two things like Ramon? This is what people should stop doing and or I wish people would just do this when they're doing networking online. No, Anything it, it, I don't know. I try not to use the word pitch. I try to use the word introduction. And the best thing to say, if you're introducing yourself, if you're quote selling, our clients tell us we've been able to. Mm. You know, and our clients tell, tell us we've been able to. Love it. Help them, benefit them, etc. Instead, it's not always about, we're always going to be giving ourselves the most, you know, uh, positive testimonial. Right. And so along with that comes a little bit of skepticism. I mean, what are you going to say? I do this and I suck. You're not going to do that. You're not going to say that. Right. So my clients tell me or tell others that this is what I've been able to do and this is who I am and this is what I stand for, et cetera. So it's like third party testimonial. And also the other thing is people go on way too long. I mean, we're not stupid. We get what you do pretty darn fast. And the other stuff, which is really more meaty, really deserves in a one-on-one -on -one and not in that more community introduction phase. No, for sure, powerful. Uh, Helena, listen, your networking, from my perspective, is a bit different. Jeanette's, uh, well, your content, Entree Gurus, of course, but Jeanette's all content, full publishing house, that's the community Co is building. Uh, Adrian has a multi uh, layer of networking um, calls and video, and it, when we could meet in person, etc. Yours, I find, Helena, you're working with various communities online, you're emailing, you work with different organizations, but you are a networker. So, my question to you is, how do you do it? 
Um, what's your best advice? What are some things you've seen that go wrong? Because you're in a position as well, similar to Adrian Jeanette, where people are reaching out to you. Helena, can I work with you? Helena, can you do this? You're, if it makes sense. So how do you do? What's your advice for us as we're looking to build communities? What should we do or not do? Well, the best advice I would say is to start. And the you you obviously want to build a community because you see that there is an itch that a community needs to scratch. Yeah. So that's the best way in which you can start. But as soon as you start getting followers and uh, people within your community, start creating bonds, start getting to know them and ask them what they want. Because if you if you think you know what they want, you may hit, you know, a couple of home runs right there, but not always. It is so much better to give them what they want because that way you will consistently be able to provide value for them. And by giving them what they want is how you will build a community that is very engaged and and th that just grows because they, if you give them something they like, very likely they will know somebody else who needs that same thing or who would like it. So that way is how you start growing a community. But what about the aspect, again, as I said, Jeanette, so I'm going to push back to you, Helena, of, and uh -huh. again, if I'm pushing back the wrong question, but making sales, making sales and just getting my business. I don't have time to be nice. All three of you are saying, slow down, or in Spanish, maybe cuidad, or just chill. <laughs> but I, I mean, I know people who are like, I need to sell my chapstick, Helena. So what do you say to those people? Well, okay, so that is that is a completely different thing, and I will okay. completely agree with Jeanette in the sense that there's absolutely nothing wrong with wanting to sell, but when you're building a community, imagine that you're walking into any place, a social yeah. place. It could be uh, a new class that you're taking, it could be a church, it could be a meeting with your friends, it could be anything what are you going to do? You're not going to go up and say, oh, hello, it's nice to meet you. My name is Helena and I sell cell phones. Here you go. Let me tell you about that. Oh my God, what is that going to do? That is going to make that person run away yeah. as far away from you as they can, right? So there's, there's a place and a time for that. And if you need to make sales right away, find a channel that is appropriate for that, definitely. And probably the, if you need to do that, uh, start advertising that is probably the best thing that you can do and now there are a lot of different channels where you can advertise for very little money that will get your results i would say that but if you want to really build a relationship where the community naturally progresses from oh i'm curious let me see what's going on in here oh i really like it oh i've actually purchased something or i have been involved in this and i really really like it to where they come these rabid fans, these evangelists for your mm. community, you have to go slowly and you have to build it. It takes time. Yeah. And it seems like what I'm hearing you say, Helena, is you have to make a choice. Do you want to build a network or are you just trying to sell, sell, sell? Uh, you know, one can feed the other, but but if you're going to network, it has to be a service. It has to be giving. That's it has to be giving most of the time. There's nothing wrong with selling within your network. Right. Um, as long as you have created, again, that bond that enables you it, it, the way I see selling is it's an it's an honor. You have to have their permission to recommend that the product that you are selling will definitely solve whatever problem they're looking at solving. So it really is this honor that they're bestowing on you to be that they think that your recommendation, that your opinion is so high that they are going to go with that. So you have that responsibility when you're selling something. Awesome. to Jeanette, make sure that it that it's a good fit. No, you have a lot of fans, Jeanette. Me and you are going to have our own TV show after this. People are saying, how is Jeanette sitting so still? No, I saw her screen freeze. No, she blinked. Um, what kind <laughs> of closet is it? What size is the closet? Um, so you have a whole fan base, Jeanette. We're going to have a whole TV show, I think. We're just going to, you should just leave, Co. Let me and Adrian and Helena produce a show called Jeanette's Closet. You know, one awesome. of those- yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like an HBO show or something. I think we're just going to do that. You have a whole fan base. Um, I'm in. She I'm is. I'm Margo is very relaxed. You have a whole club. This is amazing. Um, Jeanette, I'm going to turn to you. Question about content, Jeanette, uh, which I know you do very well. You have an amazing LinkedIn post you do uh, quite a bit. I think it's weekly. I don't think it's daily. Maybe weekly. I think it is. Um, 
Yeah, and you're on mute. But um, but my point to you, Jeanette, is let's talk about content. How does that work for you? How does it work for Co? How is that helping you build community? What can we learn? And definitely, Adrian, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well. Jeanette? Sure. So, I mean, Co is all content. So for me to talk about what Co does is probably not entirely relevant to our whole audience because they have other businesses to run, right? So my business is content, right. and that's what we do. We create content to help people. So no matter what kind of business a person runs, they need content. Now that doesn't mean they need to run a publishing house, right? That just means that they need to create content in some form, whether that's actual written articles or videos or social media that is amplifying their message and bringing it to their audience, wherever their audience is. So the first thing you need, I think you need to know is you don't have to be everywhere, okay? I think that's a mistake that a lot of people make and they become overwhelmed by that because you're trying to run a business you, that is not content. So you don't need to be everywhere. Pick a couple of places where you know your customers live, either in person or online, and focus on those places. And then take the opportunity, as Helena said, to know who your audience is because you talk to them and you're asking them questions and create content that serves whatever the need is that they have. Mm -hmm. So if your business, if it's mostly on social media and most of your followers on Instagram, that's great. Just focus on Instagram. But the idea of content is, it's very simple. All you want to do is create some kind of communication that allows your relationship with the customer to last beyond the moment that they are interacting with you in that moment. Beyond that, they just you want them to remember you and then you want them to go out and evangelize your brand. And that is the purpose of content. It doesn't need to be scary. It doesn't need to be a huge operation. It just needs to be something that you can give them to take with them when they're not interacting with you directly. I love that. And I do hope you people sign up to co uh, grow with what's the full website, Jeanette? Yes. So um, so our site is grow with co. That's the easiest way to remember it. Just grow with co dot com. Um, and I my LinkedIn newsletter, you can follow me on LinkedIn is called small business straight talk. So I use that as an opportunity to point people back to co for all of the content we have. And I can also answer any closet questions. <laughs> and it's a good newsletter as well. And Elena, the best place for you, entreguru.com. I know people can sign up and get some things from you. Yes? Okay, good. Uh, Adrian. Definitely. Awesome. Definitely. Adrian, content. You do content so well. Love your headlines. I saw one of the content, uh, one of the comments that came in here. Uh, and before you answer, Adrian, just to, people are saying a, uh, comments, a wise farmer. People are saying strategic business opportunities. Thank you from that Facebook user. Um, building community, Lawrence says trust and things. People are definitely appreciating this and sending uh, comments as well. Adrian, uh, you're the, uh, you do content all the time. You're a great writer. I, your headlines are must open. How do you do it? What's your advice for others? So before I get to content, I was just listening very carefully to Helena. And I, the thing that was just going through my head when we were talking about selling, et cetera, networking and having, being part of a networking community is a long game. Mm. It is not a short-term fix for a sales disaster or a business disaster. You may be truly lucky that you walk into a room or log into a Zoom, and lo and behold, there is your next huge client or an awesome referral source. But it's a long game. And when I people call me because they say, ah, oh, I heard about Adrian's network. And I, I ask lots of questions. What do you do? And how do you do it? And why do you do it? What's, what, what's the why? And then all of a sudden, it's like, I need a new piece of business within the next 48 hours. Say. So, this, this may not be the answer for you. It really may not be the answer for you. And I don't want you to be disappointed. So I just want to make sure people know that because I know people jump into networking community, especially now with the hand we've been dealt this last five going on six months, that it's not the short term answer. Content. Writing for me is my safe space. So I have four companies, a ton of stuff going on. Adrian's network is so high touch. It's so many people. I mean, hundreds of emails a day from people yep. that I answer individually, et cetera. And I have long-term on retainer sales consulting clients. It's super busy. And when my head is fried, man, when I can't even formulate spoken words, I sit down and write. 
Hmm. And I write article after article after article, LinkedIn posts, blog posts for myself. Uh, happily, I have clients who have hired me to do that and for them too. That's my, that's my quiet spot. It really, really is. I love doing it. I'm getting very good at figuring out what's that line I have to go on in terms of personal to personal. Um, but I always, uh, and I live much more on LinkedIn than anywhere else. Facebook's lots of fun, but much more on LinkedIn for business. I always bring it back to the business moral if you will, what did I, what did I come away from that I applied in my business life? So, um, content, I think people use, I think Jeanette said it, it it's, it's important. Maybe it's, it's mandatory now for our visibility, recognition, credibility, especially if we're a small, um, entrepreneurial company and our name isn't well known in, in, uh, the marketplace or in the world. So, you know, Adrian Miller sales training, huh? Who? So what? So the blog and the, um, LinkedIn content, keep my name out there and I've gotten business and I, I take it off the, off the platform very quickly. It's, um, communication and then let's pick up a phone and have a conversation because that's where it's going to happen for me. I'm a service provider. I'm not selling a widget. You're not going to click and buy here buy my services because of my posts as good as they may be. So you're muted. <laughs> Thank you, Adrian. I appreciate that. I had to close my door. Um, somebody was doing, making noise above me. But um, uh, it, it was going to say, Adrian is so busy. She gets emails from people asking what her email address is. Yes. That's how busy <laughs> Adrian is. I mean, think about that for a while. Somebody emails you, Adrian, you know what? I lost your email, but I just want to know, could you give me your email? Th that That's the kind of, anyways, let me move on. <laughs> Um, um, listen, we got about three minutes or so to go. And by the way, Jeanette, your fan base is growing like crazy. Um, somebody says, um, Jeanette, taking a well served eye tender session often. She is also so, Jeanette, people love you. I'm glad you're here, Jeanette. I'm telling you, we should do it. We're going to produce a show together. But, Jeanette, the last few minutes we have here, uh, you use LinkedIn quite a bit. Uh, any thoughts on LinkedIn? Anything you like about it, don't like, how you're using it, tips, advice? I know for me, I love it because the email is pushed to me. You have a lot of links in it, it's juicy. The headline's good. Any other thoughts on people, uh, can, how can use LinkedIn maybe as a publishing platform? Maybe some people don't need to have a WordPress site. They can just regularly post on LinkedIn. Um, sure. So should we tell everyone my other secret, Ramon, which you already know, which is that I am super not social. I hate promoting myself, right? And Ramon knows this about me. And um, I. so if I can succeed on LinkedIn, truly anyone can because it is so not my personality to be doing these things. Um, so yeah, I think the key to LinkedIn I just learned this lesson. It took me to almost 50 years old to learn this. The key to succeeding on social media is to be yourself. I know that probably everyone else already knew that, but I really didn't get it. And then I started this LinkedIn newsletter and I was just like, look, I am just too freaking old to pretend that I am something that I'm not, right? So here's who I am. I'm just gonna write it in my own voice and be who I am and be honest. And it has been enormously successful. So my advice on LinkedIn or really anywhere in life, any social media platform or anywhere in life is be yourself, be consistent. So do it regularly. You can't be sporadic. Um, and then just don't overcomplicate things. Just if you only deliver one message every week or mm. every post, just keep it simple. People are really busy. They're overwhelmed. They are, they are being hit with, as we all know, a million messages from every direction. Just offer them one simple piece of advice every week and you will succeed. That is my advice. I love it. I love it. Helena, um, I did, you know, somebody mentioned your book and I put your uh, comment there. Thank you for that. What's one or two nuggets? I know it's so hard. There's a lot in there, uh, but what's one or two nuggets that people should know, uh, Helena, from your perspective about uh, content, especially in what's in the book. And if you wish towards building a community, however you wish to uh, answer that. Well, I'll give you one tip that I think is important when growing a community and producing content for that community. Think of every piece of content as a mini journey. You're taking your audience from point A to point B with that particular piece of content. So they're starting 
at wanting to know something and your piece of content, whether it be, you know, a blog post, a video, a podcast, something will take them to the other side. And that's how you get engagement. And as Jeanette says, it is so important to do it in your voice and in a way in which it reflects who you are, because people are looking for that. Mm. We, we don't like the, the monotony of, of something that doesn't have personality. People yeah. now follow personal brands, even if they stand for a company, even if they represent the company. But that is that is very important. That's probably one of the best pieces of advice that I have. Just go from yeah. point A to point B. Don't try to cover the whole thing. You can always break it down into uh, smaller, again, mini journeys, and each one will reinforce the no like and trust factor of your readership your, or your audience every time they come to you for content. No, absolutely. And say what building an audience. No, I appreciate that. I think authenticity is, is so important and being personality. Listen, who would have thought burnt pancakes and bacon is a selling item? But one of my biggest <laughs> clients, um, I'll just say, oh, yeah, one of my biggest clients uh, came to me from burnt pancakes and bacon. Uh, before I turn to uh, Adrian to close us and bring us home. And again, thank you all, Helena, for being here, Jeanette, Adrian, for being here. We have a journey. Uh, Bring us home. She's up next. She's in the wings in the green room waiting. And I encourage, as you guys are here, thanks for those of you who've been here for five hours. You've been here for just 10 minutes. However long it's been, we're glad you're here. Please hit the share button. Let people know we're not over yet. In fact, we're just beginning. So let people know we're here. Uh, hit share and have people hear this. But Adrian, I'll end with you. Thoughts, comments, suggestions. Again, I know you can go to sales. You can talk about networking, content. Whichever one or two tips you can leave us with tonight, uh, Adrian Miller. I think this is just in general. Um, and, and let me just stop for a second. Be yourself is like the, that, that should we should all have T-shirts on at all times is be yourself because there are too many people. There's way too much artifice out there. So be yourself is 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 the words of the evening. Um, be nice and mm. and be giving and don't expect you're getting something back for it. Okay, really don't. If you have a quid pro quo mentality going into everything, think you might be disappointed and you might be sad a lot of the time and then you might get nasty. So I think just give that up, do it because it's the right thing to do. It, if at a certain point of time that giving is starting to grate on you, then you know you can shut that door, but don't have an expectation from the very beginning that it's quid pro quo because it isn't. Networking is never like that, and it's hard because it's a long game. Yeah, you're right, and I think the slimiest ones are. I get people who say, "And what can I do for you?" But Adrian, such great point. Adrian, what's the best website you want people to go to to find out more about Adrian Miller's awesomeness? Um. Well, Adrian's both but the two websites are being redone right now. Adriansnetwork.com and adrianmiller.com are the two major networks and uh, websites and they're both at the final stages of being redone. They're both uh, in the dinosaur years of old. No problem. And I have relied on Adrian Miller's sales services. Uh, as I say, I bought her for others um, and oh, I've uh, That sounds <laughs> So bad. <laughs> and I am a member of Adrian's network as well. Uh, so definitely, I, I do that, Helena. Where's the best place to go? I think Entree Gurus is right there, but that's the best place. Well, definitely, if you want to read what I post, definitely, that's the place to go. If you want to take a look at my book, it's thequickestguide.com. Awesome. Love it. And the book is good. I read it and uh, as I was telling Helena about uh, two, three weeks ago, and I was like, oh, man, this is genius. Jeanette, thank thanks you for being here. You are such an amazing person. Thanks for soldiering on uh, as you go back to dive into your pool or whatever you're going to do. But uh, what's the best place people can go? I think you already said it, Grow With Co., I believe. Yeah, yes. growwithco.com. Yeah, great. And you can check out Jeanette on LinkedIn. Get her. Definitely sign up for her LinkedIn email newsletter. But Helena, Adrian, Jeanette, thank you so very much for spending some time with me. I Thank really you. appreciate it. Gracias. Thank, Thank, you. So Thank you so much. much. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hey, everybody. This is Ramon Ray. We're at four hours and 54 minutes. We have uh, one more speaker up who's going to bring us home with vibrancy, with amazement, with excitement, with, I would say, inspiration. I'm feeling great. 
And I hope you're feeling good. And those of you who are here, let's say our fearless leader, Adrian, keep rocking. Thanks for your time and insight, says uh, Susan. Thanks, Susan, for being here. Jim Jonah, thanks for being here and soldiering on with me. And I see the networking going on. People are cross-posting about other people. Think different, be different. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So listen, I'm having a great time. I know you all as well. Let me ask that. Are you having a good time? If you're having a good time and learning something, can you put good time in the chat? Good time in the chat? Let me see that there. Okay, good, 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 good. Yeah, we're about four minutes behind. Wow, time got the best of me. So, but hey, that's not bad for a five hour event, four hours behind. Not bad. Emilio, thank you so much. I appreciate that, brother. Good to see you here. Thanks for hanging out with us. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Uh, thank you, Joe. So, Danielle, are you ready to go? I can see you. Good. Danielle's ready, 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 ready. I'm excited to, you know what? I'm going to sit back and listen. If you have questions for Danielle, you definitely want to ask her questions about your business, about the challenge you're having, about her your needs. She consults with people, and uh, people reach out to her all the time for help. So I'm definitely excited to bring our Darnielle Jervy Harmon to the front. Darnielle, welcome, and let us go. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm so excited to be here. This has been awesome. I'm like, so every time I get to interact with you, I'm just so impressed because I, you haven't moved <laughs> for four hours and 55 minutes. You have been sitting there and you have been handling these panels and these interviews like a pro. So I'm just excited to be in your presence. That's what he enables me to do. And that's how we roll, right? That's right. So Hey, it is. But Danielle, thanks for being here today. We got about, you know, 15 more minutes together. And I'm so glad you took the time because, again, I've been on your show. We've I've seen you speak, Danielle, from stage at our mutual uh, professional community that we're in. And uh, I was just blown away. Uh, but Danielle, why don't you give us a little peek, peel back who you are, mm -hmm. what you do for people. That's question one. I'll repeat it. But really, I want to know what you've learned, what you're telling your clients during especially this crazy time. Yeah. But, even before, but first, introduce yourself, Darnielle. Tell us who you are. Yeah, so I am Darnielle Jervy Harmon. First and foremost, I would want you to know that I am a child of the Most High God, and I do not apologize for that. In my work, I have the distinct honor and privilege to work with six-figure service-based entrepreneurs, and I take them to seven figures by teaching them how to leverage spiritual principles with business growth strategy so that they leverage and scale to their next money milestone. So that's wow. what I get to do all day, every day. And I love it. I get to pray and praise God and help people to see themselves the way that God sees them and leverage that into business growth strategy that really helps them to explode in every way. I love it. That is powerful. And I'm curious, Danielle, when you consult with business owners, what is one or two? Well, let me ask it this way. Are there recurring themes that you're like, Ramon, out of the last 50 people, 100 people or 10 people I talked to, it was this thing or these three things that gets them stuck. Yeah. Is that, you find that? Absolutely. And the thing is, it doesn't matter where they are, whether they are just at the six figure mark or they are at the seven figure mark. It's mindset, mindset, mindset. Mm -hmm. I say all the time that until you work on the six inches in between your ears, you won't feel six or seven figures in between your fingers. It's mm -hmm. just not going to happen. And it's because of the, the cliched saying that is so true that at every level, there's another devil. We're always pushing our limits to see if we truly can be who we think we are and allow that to show up in the world. And so in times like this, where there's a lot of crazy and uncertainty, people are questioning whether or not they should be lowering their prices, yeah. right? Whether they should be offering that service that is a big deal right now, if they should be just playing a smaller game. And I tell them, no, mm -hmm. this is the time to really show up boldly. Everybody's raised their prices. Even Walmart raised their prices. Wow. The well, pandemic. No, everybody. no. Listen, Ramon, I go to Walmart every two weeks. I okay. buy the same things every two weeks. And the last few times I went, it cost more than when I went in wow. January or February. That Everyone means we're in bad shape. If Walmart raises prices, like that's bad. Yeah. Well, I don't know that it's bad so much as it's, it's an understanding of what's going on in the world, right? We know, Most people, if you know anything about business, you know that it is in times like this that businesses are made or broken. Mm. And the, the, the next set of millionaires and billionaires will be born in 2020 because they took advantage of how 
so much opportunity is before us. A lot of people are shrinking back, but those of us who know what we do, who know the problem we solve and are ready to go out there and shake the planet, we will rise up. And so we're spending more money on Facebook ads. We're getting more amplification and visibility because we know that people need us now more than ever. And so we're setting ourselves up to be in prime position to solve those problems that people have that they've been looking for a solution to before COVID started. Right. You know, I say all the time that COVID did not create the problems. It has merely amplified. Mm. That's all it's done. It's heightened what was already there. And now that we are in this mm. global pandemic, everybody's panicking to right. figure out how to solve the problems that they had before we went on lockdown. And so point. it's important that if you are in business, hear me. I just saw someone said even her hairdresser yes. raised their prices, right? <laughs> this is not the time to shrink back. This is the time to rise up, to be really clear about the problem you solve and to get out there and let people know you can solve that problem, period. This Money is still be an, being made. I love this. Danielle, this may be an obvious question, but it's on my <laughs> mind. Uh, why is mindset so important? And to those of you out here maybe flaming me, Ramon, how could you say that? I'm asking for half the people who may not believe this. So my point being is that why aren't you talking about Twitter or retargeting or hiring or uh, build a better website or make your business cards blue from red, tactical things like that, rather than mindset? And I know they have a place, of course, too. Right, absolutely. You talk about those things because I often hear this. Every All the smart people I know who've worked with great coaches like yourself Mindset, mindset. And mm -hmm. I believe it now, but before I would think it's more so I need to get a book about, you know, something tactical. Yeah. yeah. It's believe it or not, it is not the strategy. The strategies you already have will work. So okay. change the color on your business cards, build a new website if you want. But your ability to actually step out there and show up the way you want to show up so you can do the work you're called to do is based on how you see yourself. Mm -hmm. And Everyone's backstory is different. Whether you come from a family where both of your presents were were both of your parents were present and you were taught um, that you could do anything, or you come from a family where there was a tremendous amount of lack and chaos, like I did, and you didn't know the end from the beginning, and you heard subliminal messaging that led you to believe that maybe you didn't have what it took, mm -hmm. regardless of the background and situation. The way you see yourself is going to dictate the actions that you take and ultimately the results that you get. And so if you are not spending time washing your mind every single day, like I say, just like you wash your behind, you have got to wash your mind. And if you're not spending time every single day recalibrating these six inches, then you're going to constantly keep the limits on yourself. You only go beyond the limits if you are working past the limits. And because sometimes you don't even know, Ramon, what your limit is until you attempt to do something and fear shows up. Yes. And fear, in my opinion, is always the first sign that you are mm. on the verge of something incredible happening. If there mm. is no fear, it is not part of your next level. Wow. Think about it. Think about the things you do day in and day out without even blinking, going to LinkedIn, going live. R Ramon goes live every single day, if not multiple times a day. Doesn't even think anything about it at all. That's not his opportunity to really grow and go to his next level. Right, right. His opportunity to grow and, and go to his next level is, is in something that he's not doing. Finance. He, he says to himself, I don't know. I don't know if people will like this. I don't know if this is the right thing for me. Every single one of us has our own limits that we have created and we will not go beyond them unless we have someone helping us to see that that limit was self-imposed and yes. we have an opportunity to shift beyond that. Yes. No, you are so right, Darnia. Well, I, I just, I like want to go to church or I want to do something. I don't want to stand up. I don't know. I just, I just. Well, you can do all of it if you want. All of it works. As Tati is saying, uh, wow, gems. And I do want to give you time. And again, I'm not saying this just to promote you per se, but I am saying it so well because I know you people need you. Because uh, I, I don't want to forget it. Darnia, where's the best place people can go to find out about you? And can you just break down a bit? what you do for people, if you don't Absolutely. mind. Absolutely. So we, again, like I said before, we combine spiritual principles with business growth strategy. So I really spent a lot of time working on mindset and helping my clients believe that they really can charge high rates and that people will happily pay them. 
Okay. And so outside of the mindset work that I do, we do tactical strategy. So we look at your messaging and see where the gaps are in your message to market connection. If you're okay. not getting the traction you want to see, there's something you're saying or not saying that we need to tweak. We look at your marketing mechanisms. Which way are you trying to build traffic, right? And are mm -hmm. you doing it in a method that is consistent? What are the right marketing streams that you should be utilizing based on who your clients are? If your clients are corporations, you market differently than if they're individual consumers and different than if they are individual entrepreneurs. And right. you need to have an understanding of that and use strategies that are going to get you traction quickly. So we evaluate, audit all of that, and we tweak. We also look at the sales infrastructure and make sure that from idle client to income and everything in between, you are not leaving any money on the table. And wow. so we're looking at your infrastructure. Make sure that you've mastered the sales conversation so that if you had an elevator ride up, you would be able to effectively identify the problem, speak to the solution and offer exactly what they need in order to go to their next level in a very short ride. We drill that over and over and over and over. And mm -hmm. then we also talk about systems and automation and scaling your business, either hiring a team or developing the right technology and software to allow you to do what you do in a way of duplication. Because if you're the only one in your business, you can't scale that. Yes. Right. And so we're looking for opportunities to scale so that we can make the numbers in the bank account bigger without making the hours that you spend to get it done bigger. Yes. So we're trying to work that balance, which is um, really, really powerful. So that's the gist. I'm a business growth strategist or a spiritual business growth strategist. Mm -hmm. And while I don't usurp my personal beliefs on anyone, I do leverage how the principles that are in the Bible are the principles that govern our universe and can lead to your ability to experience abundance. Yeah. And the best place to find me is on my website, incredibleoneenterprises.com. The one is spelled out. God, I'll, our team will put that probably in there and I'll put it like uh, I'll put it here. L I want to touch on one thing, Darnell, on the time we have. Time goes by so fast and I can see. Wow. I'm just going to highlight this message again. Uh, Tanya took it right out of my mouth. And Tanya, thanks for being here. Listen, energy and, and inspiration. This is what the Survive and Thrive Summit's about. I'm just not a person, Danielle, to go very deep. I don't have the time for that. My yeah. mind can handle it. I'm like, Five, 10 minutes. That's just my style. Right. <laughs> so, I love it. Like, Tim Ferriss is Thank like a five hour interview guy with one person. I can't do that. Yeah. But um, I do want to touch on sales, Darnell, because that's something even though I'm not a quote unquote sales expert to a degree, but I've sold very successfully for many years. Mm -hmm. And I find that's one thing many people don't do well. They, they right. made the great, as uh, uh, Michaela was on with her lemonade, you know, they made the great product, but they can't sell it. One or two bits of advice, uh, Darnielle, that you're seeing that unlocks or that you have to get through people's head with how to sell their product or service in some yeah. way? I would, the first thing I would say is that it's as honorable to sell as it is to buy. Mm. That's the first thing. Most people struggle with sales because they think about the icky, greasy haired used car salesperson that follows you around the lot and harass you into making you a deal. <laughs> yes. But sales is really service. And you know, I like to use this analogy and no disrespect to anyone who has ever personally been impacted by cancer. But if you were to look up the word cancer in the dictionary, it merely says disease. Mm -hmm. Something is off. That's right. what the definition of cancer is. And I would I would I would I would bet <laughs> could uh -huh. think of the word that mm -hmm. every single person who's listening right now solves a ha, solves something that is a disease for other people. Mm -hmm. And if you had the cure to cancer, if we could just use that word for a second, would you keep it to yourself? And I know that if you could hear me and you, we were in a conversation, you would all say no. So yeah. I need you to apply that same logic and energy to the cancer that you solve and tell people you can help them. I think it is disrespectful to have a gift that can solve a problem and keep it to yourself because you're afraid of whether or not a person's going to think you're being salesy. Wow. That is disrespectful. I wish someone could solve my problem and they wouldn't tell me. And then I would learn later that they could. I don't want to wring their necks because I've been sitting in struggle all this time when I could have been strutting in significance and success. That don't do that. So just tell people you can help them. The other thing you have to do, Ramon, is you have to detach from the income, the outcome. Hmm. Don't go into the conversation with this desperate energy that you right. have to close the sale. Go into the conversation saying, 
I'm going to do my best to serve them and make sure that they understand that I can help them. And I'm going to leave the results up to them. They're going to have to say yes to themselves because anyone who is making an investment in your products or services is saying yes to themselves. They're yeah. investing in themselves through your product or service. They are not investing in you. They are not paying your mortgage. They are not allowing you to drive a nice car. And if that is the energy that you go into the sale with, that is why you're not closing. Because just like a dog can sense when you're afraid yes. and all of a sudden start paying attention to you, your prospect can, they can sense your desperation. Yes. And they know that you need this like you need air. And even if they need it, they won't buy it because no one wants a desperate energy yes. around an investment that they make. And or you don't trust them. I mean, that's for me. You know, you you feel even if it's not off the guys. Can you buy my water? Can you buy my can you buy? Can you buy it? Even if I need it, it's just like automatically. I don't right. know. Maybe it's just me, but I'm like, something's off. I just something's off. Yeah. Around, like, is he going to what's going on? <laughs> yeah. And, and it, it's just a conversation. Take yeah. the pressure off yourself. It's just a conversation, a conversation to uncover their problem, to find out what it is they want and said. And if there is a good connection and fit to offer them your solution, that's it. That's all a sales conversation is. Everybody, this is what I want you to do. I know, I know we can't hear each other, but I want you to repeat after me because this is as simple as it is. Would you like my help? Would you like my help? Everybody repeat it. Would you yeah. like my help? If you Would say you like anything, yes to the chat. Because if you understand their problem and what they want instead, and you have the solution to that problem, all you have to ask them is if they would like your help. Yes. They're going to say yes, which opens the door for you to present them with the solution that you can bring to the table to help them to solve the problem. I love it. Danielle, listen, our time is up, but there's one question here. Thank yeah. you. Data is still with us. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Data is <laughs> peeps. Listen, so Anna George asked, question, when should we present the price? Um, great question, I think, is just talk about price. Not We don't have time to talk pricing, but meaning right. when do you get and say, okay, it's $5,000? Yeah, you, so what? I present the price after I've shared the solution, the high-level benefits of the solution, and I've taken their questions about the benefits. After they have no more questions, then I tell them how much it will cost, what the investment will be in order to work with me. And then I'm quiet because the one who speaks first after you give them the price is the one who leaves with the product. If they are silent, it is not a no. They are trying to figure out how to make the investment. If their answer is no, they will say no right away. So give them the space to figure out how to afford to invest in themselves through your product or service. Darnell, this is, at, you clearly have a fan here. Somebody uh, uh, put your link in here. Thank you so much. Yes, wow, Darnell. This is hey, off the chain, powerful. I feel like I could go another five hours with just you. Awesome. Um, well, we, you, we should do something else and bring me do. back and we can spend some more time. I'd love to spend some more time with your community. Yeah. We have to do Darnell. I think this is genius, genius. And and so how many want Darnell back again? Let me see a yes or Dar let me see a Darnell. There's a slight couple seconds delay, Darnell, but this has been awesome. God bless you. And I'm so glad you spent time with us today. And I do encourage you. I'm on Darnell's uh, email list. She interviews people. Yes, bring her back. Margo says, Darnell, I'd love to. Uh, Dana, awesome, awesome, awesome. But Darnell, listen, any final words of nuggets? You gave so much already. Let me let you have the last word, one or two things you want to leave us with before we close out this session. It's been amazing. And I thank you. You're so I very thank welcome. You for your time. You're so very welcome. Last thing I just want to say is don't survive, thrive. God has already given you the power to not only create wealth, but to experience abundance at the next level. Walk into it. It's waiting for you. He's already done it. He did it before you were formed in your mother's womb. Thank you so much for allowing me to come and hang out with you, Ramon. And to all of you out there, I just say be incredible. Wow. Danielle, thank you so much. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you, Danielle. Wow. Wow. Aren't you enriched? That was off the chain. The comments are still coming in. Yes, bring Darnell back. Great conference. Wow, 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 wow. And I hope you all please go to Darnell's website. I'll be blasting and emailing all of you after this, the link to her website so you can check it out, sign up. Uh, and I know some of you really 
need need Darnell. Trust me on that. So, or Darnell, again, thank you very much. Listen, we're not done yet. We got one more thing. I'm going to give away a Dell notebook computer in a second here. But I just want to say, wow, it's been an honor to be here, an honor uh, for me to be here with you all today. I am just so deliriously excited and happy. I've been honored that you all have hung out with me for this amount of time. And uh, Liz, we can go back to that first slide real quick. I'll give the notebook away in one more minute. Actually, you know what? I'll just give it away now and then I'll talk. Yeah, it's okay. You can go back to that slide. I'll give it away now and then I'll uh, do some other comments. So let's say the second, the winner is, I'm looking here. Winner one I gave, no, did I give away winner two? Yes, Michelle was winner two. That's right. So winner three is, thank you, can I get my glasses off. Uh, oh, yes. The winner is, and I don't know if you're here. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready for the winner? Are y'all ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? It is, assuming this person's inside the U.S., it is Baba Antonio Mondesire. So congratulations, Baba. I loved your story. Love what you shared. Love why this notebook is so important to you. Congratulations. So you are the winner of the Dell XPS Notebook Computer. Uh, listen, it's been a long evening. I'm going to hang out with you all for a few more seconds here just to uh, finalize some things. And if my team has to go, no problem at all. But, yeah, Liz, you can keep up the uh, that other cool one uh, that's coming up there. Yeah, that one, that's a good one. Yeah, we can leave that one there. But I just wanted to say thank you. Just wanted to say what a great experience for being here today. We had over a 1,000 people registered for the Survive and Thrive Summit. Looks like hundreds of you stayed on and logged on with us throughout. And I've just been honored. And I'll just do some closing thoughts. And thank you for the kind of words, Dana and Anna and Helena and Joe. Thank you. And Gozi, thank you so very much. And just want to say one, remember, if you're not signed up for smartasso.com, it's the best gift we can give you. To get insights from me, ramonemail.com every Thursday at 2 p.m., I send an email. There's a survey coming. Uh, please fill out that survey. I really need to know what we did right. I want to know that. But you're welcome, Vanessa. But I also thank you, Pat. Appreciate it. Thank you, Tanya. But I also want to know what can we do better? What can I do better? What can the team do better? How can we serve you better? Did you like this platform? Those who were at the first one, those who were at the second one, what was different? What did you like? Thank you, Tia. Really appreciate it. Anna, thank you so much. So it's been a pleasure to be here this evening to serve you. Big props and big thanks to my team, uh, Jamie. Oh, that's right. We have some slides here, right? Um, that's right. <laughs> thank you, uh, Liz. So thanks to uh, our sponsors, uh, Dell Technologies and um, uh, Oracle. Let me make this a little bigger here. Big thanks to our partners. Yeah, Oracle, NetSuite, Dell Technologies. Mega thanks to our partners, Co. of U.S. Chamber, SBDC. Listen, can you do me a favor? Go on Twitter right now. Find the Twitter handle of ASBDC and just say, thank you, ASBDC, for the Survive and Thrive Summit and tag me. Something like that. If you can do that on Twitter, I'd be grateful. If you look up America's SBDC, you'll see it there and tag me, Ramon Ray. I'd be grateful, too. Can you give a big thanks to Tory Birch Foundation? Just thank Tory Birch Foundation as well. Find them and do that. Google, can you thank Google as well? Three I'm important with. Adrian, I thanked her already, and we do so much together, but especially America's Small Business Development Center, Tory Birch Foundation, and Google. Can you do that? Go on Twitter and just thank them. You hit it out of the park. Thank you so much, John. Thank you for the great graphics and design. Liz, we can move to the next one. Let's see what else was there. Yes. Mega, mega thanks to the rock star production team that I, yes, Amer thank you, Finesse, America's SBDC. Can you tweet them and say thank you? Tweet Tory Birch Foundation and tweet out to Google Small Business. Just, I'd really be grateful if you did that. Tweet on Twitter and tag me as well. So Jamie Frere, thanks for being an amazing executive assistant project manager. Thank you for helping me with so many crazy ideas I have and soldiering on and helping me keep me grounded as well. Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate you more than you know. Liz Caruso, thank you, thank you, thank you for being an amazing event producer, event manager. I hope you all check out what Liz is doing at Texi Talk and Ignite. I think I don't have the website link in front of me, but just go to look up Liz Caruso, Ignite, Texi Talk rather, and you'll see all kind of things she's doing. But Liz, thank you for being a friend and amazing event manager. J John, your graphics, man, they are deliciously amazing, brother. We've worked together for maybe a year or two. I can't remember how long we've worked now together, man. And amazing, John. I just send you stuff and you make it look good. You know exactly what I like. So thank you. Thank you.
thank you. And Liz, let's see what else we have next. We may be coming to an end, but let's see here. Definitely Smart Hustle Nation. All of you, most of you should be in our Facebook group, Smart Hustle Nation. <clears throat> I suggest you continue to be that. That's for all the good stuff, all the good videos, all the good knowledge, all the insight is going to be in Smart Hustle Nation. You can just look at facebook.com slash groups slash Smart Hustle Nation. Or I think smarthustlenation.com could still be active. So the point is, check it out. We are here to thank you, Emilio. We are here to serve you. And I think, listen, this is pretty much a wrap. This is the amazing slide that my team made, John. Uh, Survive and Thrive Summit. We're working on the third one already. Uh, we'll see what that's going to be about. We'll see when it comes up. We'll tell you about it. But the point is, we're working on a lot of amazing things. Wow, I got a book coming out. Got a special project I'm doing with somebody you all know. We got more events coming along. Um, and that's all I could say. I feel like I could talk forever. And I think I could, but I think for right now, I'm going to call it a wrap. I know there's a little time delay, but just to say thank you all for being here from the bottom of my heart. Again, from Smart Hustle Media, from behalf of Jamie, behalf of Liz, John, Josh, the whole team, thank you. And all of you who've been chatting and being here, I appreciate Susan, Emilio, and all of you, Tia, so many of you who've been chatting uh, for so many hours, uh, Jim, Jonas of uh, Goat Milk Stuff, thank you. So with that, I will say good night. I'm going to see what's on the chat for a few minutes here. Uh, yes, I'm going to go eat my cereal and watch Netflix. Mickey, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, so. <sighs> I think it's time to call it a night. I've had a great time. Nancy, thank you for being here. I know there's a delay, so I'm just giving some people time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And remember, if you could please tweet out to our, 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 our partners, I'd appreciate it. Tory Birch Foundation, please do that. America's Small Business Development Center and Google Small Business, I'd be so grateful. Helena, you're welcome. Just tweet at them and tag me. Say thank you to them and tag me. Oh, and then also, big favor. I'd really be grateful. It's nothing. You don't have to do it. I know you guys are busy. But Oracle NetSuite, just NetSuite. Can you say thank you to NetSuite? Even take this picture if you want. Take a picture of this. I'd be so grateful. I have nothing to offer you. I'm too tired. But I'd be grateful if you would just tweet out also to NetSuite and just say, Dear NetSuite, thank you for the Survive and Thrive Summit. And then tag um, uh, Ramon Ray. And I know you're off, that's, and off Twitter, somebody said. And then Dell also, Dell Technologies, just you know, hit them up, tag them, tag me, tag them to at Dell Tech, I think, or Dell Technologies, and say thank you. It'd mean a lot to me. I'd be so grateful. Ah, so I think with that, yeah, Anna, thank you, Jim. Love you, brother. Thanks for being here. Annette, thanks for being here. Yeah, I don't want to hit the end broadcast button, but I think I am. It's been five hours and 22 minutes. I've been live. I'm tired. Going to definitely go have a bowl of cereal, curl up on the couch with my wife, watch a movie or something. So have a good night, everybody. Thanks so much. Have a good day.